お前はどこまで見えてる There was little joy in Itachi's life. He grew up too quickly, forgetting his childhood carelessness among a field strewn with those killed in the war. He was looking for answers to questions that adults were afraid to ask themselves. The father reluctantly recognized his strength, although he understood that he did not want to see the child so mature at less than five years old. Itachi remembered very well the day the Kyubi attacked. He felt the hatred of the beast that was mercilessly destroying everything around him. I felt and understood, somewhere inside comparing myself to an angry fox. His hatred was justified, and the brightly burning Sharingan echoed his pain. He himself sometimes hated his eyes. It was they who forced the little genius to ruin his life, to step on the throat of his essence, to fight on an equal basis with everyone. For the sake of ephemeral hopes for a quiet life. The only outlet is the younger brother. Itachi vowed that Sasuke could live the most peaceful childhood possible, even if he learned the pain of this world not so quickly, that's all Itachi wanted. If he could, he would have banned it altogether, but Sasuke longed to be a shinobi and did not think about the real meaning of these words. He enthusiastically begged for another training session, but Itachi shamefully ran away. Postponing everything for the next time. I couldn't overcome myself, I didn't want to teach the younger one to kill. Now they throw kunai at wooden targets, but someday this child will have to throw a kunai at an enemy. Itachi just wanted to delay this moment as long as possible. Itachi saw the eyes of his younger brother, black pools, that had not yet been consumed by the red flame, their family curse. The clan members were proud of this, inflated by the mere fact that they were descendants of the Echiha. Itachi was sickened by the earthiness of some people. They were proud of the rivers of blood that in all centuries flowed like a stormy stream among the streets of the clan, some harassed ordinary people, while wearing the monk of the Kanoha police. Itachi then put even more pressure on the throat of his essence, went to his father, reporting on the impudence of some. The father nodded his head, promising to sort it out, and only then the sight of the ashamed clanmates slightly dulled the pain of the wounded soul. He is already eleven, he is in the ranks of ANBU, and, for the first time, he feels among like minded people. They are all secretive, unsociable loners who do not tolerate unnecessary words or touches. Their faces and names were erased under awkward masks, but this was precisely what gave Itachi strength. It was easier for him to kill, knowing that it was not him, not Itachi Uchiha, but just Weasel from another ANBU team. And his captain is an example of the result of a shinobi's life. He is alone, without family and friends, without a specific goal, and also marked by the cursed gift of his clan. Itachi was frightened by the fact that he would one day become like this a soulless machine whose duty would be to die somewhere on a mission. He returned home after the mission in even greater confusion, trying to wipe away the sticky and disgusting cocoon into which he had driven himself. He didn't want his family to see him like this, his last refuge, where he could at least heal his soul a little. His joy is the younger one's smile, an enthusiastic look, and small hands. His consolation is the gentle and quiet Kachan, who accepted him as anyone, never saw him as an heir or a genius, only her baby Itachi. But his pain is his silent father, who saw perfectly well to whom he was devoted. His father, who tried to reason with him, called on his duty to the clan, forced him to do the worst that his soul was capable of. He loved him like a son, passionately and strongly, but the cold mind of the head saw disobedience in him. Itachi felt the discord in his father's soul, so he tried not to be an eyesore. Itachi walked through the streets of the clan, respectfully greeting everyone. Although whispers and swearing were heard from everywhere, he saw that the clan was dissatisfied, the boat of indignation had been rocking for a long time. Now, and then trying to land on sharp rocks. Itachi already understood that he would become that rock, taking upon himself all the hatred of the Long Clan. Kachan quietly whispered that he could overcome everything, he just needed to listen to his heart. Tusan appealed for loyalty to his family. Reluctantly trying to overcome the hot flame of loyalty to the village and his eldest son. Mother. Father. 
you are fighting inside me. At one point the boat calmed down. Itachi looked with fear into the faces of his clanmates, but no longer saw indignation in their eyes. Now there is pride, not imaginary and sincere, they really looked at Itachi as a savior. He didn't understand this, his only friend, Shursue, smiled calmly, patting him on the shoulder in a brotherly manner, and then silently led him to one of the abandoned training grounds on the outskirts. Among the awkward group of Jounin, a girl clearly stood out. The familiar ANBU captain was also here, smiling, contentedly, deftly dodging his opponent's attacks. Itachi silently turned his gaze to the imperturbable Shursue, hoping that everything would be explained to him, but the Uchiha advised him to follow the fight. An experienced I involuntarily noticed the details, Kakashi Senpai did not use his Sharingan, covering the ill-fated eye of the Hitai 8, he fought with pure Tai, but most importantly, he smiled, even through the mask he saw a smile on his tired face. The Uchiha turned his gaze to his opponent a young, dark blonde, about his age of 13. She clearly struck, talking about something with her opponent, smiling, just as warmly and sincerely. Itachi managed to follow the tip of the light braid, which played with the light of gold in the sun, and was fascinated by her dance. She was flexible and thin, like a twig, flowing around her opponent, dodging blows, attacking after him. Shursue easily pushed him forward, and together, they approached the motley group of shinobi. Kakashi, looking sideways at the newcomers, stopped the girl with a gesture, bowing lightly to her. Kakashi and I, I her cheerful voice rang out, next time, no concessions, she laughed, bowing lightly in response. It's covered, he nodded, turning to the guests. Hello, Itachi, sure sway. What destinies? The rest pulled up to them, among whom Itachi was able to recognize Shiranui Gunma, one of the fourth's personal guards, Mike Guy, who was one of the best Jounin of the Leaf, and Asuma Sarutobi, but only because he was the son of the third. He greeted everyone, but when it was the turn of the unknown girl, Itachi hesitated slightly, but the blonde smiled even stronger, extending her dark palm. My name is Naruto. Itachi remembered this name well. Like her eyes, which carefully studied the strange stranger. Then he was glad that he was in ANBU form, it is possible that she did not recognize him as an Uchiha. He wouldn't want that, at least. He had enough of the name Itachi, which she pronounced so especially, dragging him to a joint snack. She printed out a couple of scrolls, handing out bento boxes to the ever-hungry Jounin, and slyly slipped his portion into Itachi's hands. Shursue was already devouring his, and Itachi was waiting for something, watching how Naruto barely flushed from the praise for the delicious food. He didn't understand what was happening, why he was sitting in the middle of the landfill with a homemade bento box and looking at an unfamiliar girl. I didn't understand why I felt pretty good about it all. After that acquaintance, Itachi found more and more time to meet with this company, sparred with the girl, and once even lost to her. Yes, he did not use the Sharingan, but in pure Thai, she was able to do it, although she relied on chance. Itachi also considered it an accident, he simply stared at the tip of the light braid behind her back. But he accepted the bento, thanked him and ate it, without even thinking that he would have to give up food at dinner, he simply wouldn't fit into it anymore. He had only been going to this training ground for a month, but he already knew everything about Naruto. Kakashi whispered something, he found out something himself. And the most important thing was told by Naruto herself. He saw QB live, he still remembered that hatred, he remembered that he had once compared himself to him. But Naruto did not fit in with the image of an embittered demon, although she held back the power of the tailed one. Kakashi Senpai whispered that she was the daughter of the fourth, this explained the presence of the copy ninja himself and Shiranui. And it was not surprising, the girl looked like the hero of the village. But Itachi was embarrassed, by his age, to which Naruto awkwardly shrugged, trusting in his tailed patron. After digging through the ANBU reports, he was even able to find a note, while the horse was on duty, an incident occurred during which the subject was injured. She was taken to the hospital, where increased cell regeneration was diagnosed. As a result of the incident, the object began to grow up quickly, the approximate growth rate is 2 inch. Twice as old as he really is. 
Ironically, Naruto was the same age as his younger brother, but at seven years old, he was inexorably reminiscent of Itachi at the same age. She thought differently, was different from her peers, even more in spirit than in appearance. Itachi saw in her eyes the echoes of his hopes and expectations from the world, next to her he could breathe calmly, knowing that someone in the world shared his views. But still, she managed to maintain warmth and joy, she exuded confidence and life itself, that the wounded soul was filled with something bright. Then for a long time he could not get the slight smile off his face, forcing Kachan to inquisitively ask his son what happened, and Sasuke was only surprised at his brother, but frowned like a child that he was once again left with his nose. Itachi was afraid to destroy this fragile something that happened between them. He trained with her, accompanied her home, and after the mission, the first thing he tried to do was drop into the tiny apartment to get a stick of homemade dango and hit the top of her head with a kitchen spatula. Naruto playfully swore that they were breaking into her so unceremoniously, but she moved the flower pot from the kitchen window so that Itachi would be more comfortable sitting on the narrow windowsill. Naruto has always been afraid of only one thing, the hateful glances, that have haunted her since birth. She ran as far away from the crowd as possible, hiding in the shadows, looking for workarounds to the apartment, where she could always find garbage, empty paint buckets and kind wishes to die quickly. She bit her lips, held back her tears, and only cried under the covers so that no one would hear how much she was in pain. The worst thing was running into drunk people, they didn't like her, although she sincerely didn't understand why. Then she was offended and made fun of her in retaliation, no, not in an angry way, because she couldn't do that. All that remained was to look for the tip of the light braid not far from the painted shop of the evil merchant, but no one could openly convict her of what she had done. And when their patients ran out, she ended up in the hospital. The body ached from the beatings, but most of all the soul hurt, which with blind naivety justified the inhabitants, they would understand, recognize, see the future Hokage in her, they just had to wait. And she waited for her fourth birthday, and most importantly, a gift, she was beaten so much that she ended up in the subconscious. A rejected child found a similar, almost kindred soul. She poured out all her pain to someone who had only received hate and fear all her life. The very embodiment of evil in this world was disarmed in front of a small child who strived for love with all his heart. The fox was angry with his unlucky parents for so carelessly leaving a thoughtless trifle to sort out all the troubles of this world, not even giving her a choice. Then he pushed her out of the subconscious, healed all the wounds, but did not calculate that his chakra would have such an effect, now she is twice as old. The second time, Naruto's subconscious was determined. She promised to change this world, the impulsive words of a child who had to grow up early. She stepped into the cage without thinking at all about the consequences, trustingly touched the red fur, quietly asking not to turn away from it. Naruto asked questions, and the fox, surprisingly, quietly spoke, he saw a lot, he still remembered the free expanses of the forest where he ran with his brothers. The old man has not yet forgotten that he promised them the appearance of a man who would be brave and open enough to love all of them. Hubi looked at the sleeping child and increasingly saw that same person in her. He well remembered the cold confidence of Mido, who kept him on a short leash, remembered the wariness of Kushina, who steadfastly ignored his presence, but did not think that he would ever be so calm watching another Uzumaki sleep on his tail. Their clan was his personal bone in his throat but this child is something else, perhaps the last chance of this world. Naruto grew up with an invisible teacher inside. She was gaining the centuries-old wisdom that the tired demon concealed within herself. He didn't know the techniques, didn't make her an incredible level shinobi, he just talked a lot about fate, duty, and honor. What is important in life and what is not worth time, why do people need strength and how to use it, is there any value to a person who is proud of strength while defending dubious ideals? He made us look from the outside at all the shinobi who, in endless wars, had forgotten about true things, about harmony. Naruto frowned funny as she accepted the science, convincing herself more and more that she wanted to become Hokage in order to change these principles. Hubi closed his eyes with understanding and carefully watched how this child grew. Still, Naruto trained, first alone, 
and then begged one of the faceless ANBU who often followed her to become her mentor. He made interesting obstacle courses with the help of Mokutan, drove her to Tai, and taught her to disperse chakra throughout the body. Then he brought another mask man, and he became an outlet for her. The ANBU nickname Dog always took off his mask, unlike Tenzo, but under it, to the delight of Uzumaki, there was another one, a fabric one. All Naruto saw was his eyes, one red, like a raging flame with three commas, and the second black and deep, full of pain and regret. He honestly trained her between missions, and Naruto understood that he was doing this to the detriment of his free time. He could hold his gaze on her for a long time, as if expecting to see someone else. But it was just Naruto, a smiling copy of his parents. Kakashi and I, I knew her parents better than anyone, although he rarely talked about them. Naruto did not insist, for her they are images, invisible ghosts, who sacrificed themselves, and the child for the good of everyone. She did not judge them, had long ago accepted their sacrifice, and was grateful. For the wisdom of the fox, for the peculiar care of the Jounin company for survivability, and the desire to make everything better. And for Kakashi, these are living people whom he loved, but lost. Then she gradually got to know everyone, easily entering the narrow circle of Jounins. She communicated freely with older people, because children understood her little, especially since at seven years old, she looked like she was thirteen. And they didn't let her into the academy, loading her with paperwork, saying they would let her take the exam, but only with everyone. Then she could hardly contain her laughter, imagining what a 17-year-old girl would look like in the line of academy graduates. Kakashi just shrugged and advised him to train, despite his status as an academy student. Naruto waved her hand carefreely, she doesn't need teachers from the academy, she has her own teacher. And then Itachi appeared. She remembered that moment well, the fox inside stirred menacingly, feeling the blood of one of the enemies. But with each meeting, she convinced both him and herself that he was completely different. Itachi shared her views, shared everything he had seen, talked about the missions and countries he had visited, took bites in her apartment, but in return he brought something, sweet apples, rare chocolate from the next mission. Or his mother's recipe, which made the young hostess happy. At the end of the second month of dating, Naruto moved with the usual shunshin to their training ground, where they agreed to meet. Kakashi and Ai was on a mission and Genma was on duty, so today he and Itachi would be alone. Naruto was about to start a standard warm-up, but she noticed a faint outbreak very close. These are not ANBU, who are watching her on the orders of the third, she knew them well, she even managed to feed them with branded bento. Come out, she said, looking at the jasmine thickets. The bushes moved menacingly, causing Naruto to reach for her weapon pouch, but she exhaled lightly when she saw just a child. A boy of about eight sullenly came out of the bushes, folding his hands and shooting black eyes at the surprised girl. How were you able to notice me? He asked, pointing his finger. You weren't hiding much, the girl smiled, looking at the child and the fox's guttural roar, confirmed the guess in front of her was a little Uchiha, clearly angry with her. And I wanted you to see me, the boy snorted, turning up his nose charmingly. I came to find out who you are, he said completely seriously. I'm Uzumaki Naruto, the girl introduced herself, coming closer. Will you tell me why you were looking for me? I'm Sasuke, he answered, slightly losing his arrogance from a sincere smile but then he got all up and exploded with accusations. Because of you, Oniai-chan won't train me. He's either on a mission or training with you, even though I'm his little brother. So you are Itachi's brother? The girl asked. Yes, the boy was clearly proud of his relative, letting Naruto understand that he had unwittingly become the most important enemy for the young Uchiha. Well, Sasuke, she breathed, sitting down opposite him. I'm sorry, I didn't know Itachi wasn't training you, the boy became sad, which made Naruto cheat slightly. But I can show you everything Itachi taught me, okay? But you're not Itachi, the boy muttered, blushing slightly. But I know how to defeat him, she said conspiratorially, watching the boy look at her enthusiastically. So be it, he tried to be condescending, but the excitement in his eyes gave him away, let's practice. 
Naruto laughed, ruffling the top of her dark-haired head, but then a raven flew up to her and sat on her shoulder, holding out a note in its black beak. It's Oni-chan's crow. Sasuke exclaimed, and Naruto took the piece of paper, gratefully stroking the black feathers. The bird flew up, and in the note the girl learned that Itachi and Shursue were urgently sent on a mission, which she told the upset child. Sasuke, she said, looking into her dark eyes, tell me, why are you training? To become stronger, he answered. Why do you need strength? Naruto asked calmly. What? Sasuke asked, looking at the girl in confusion. We are shinobi, and everyone should be strong. That's true, the blonde agreed, but, for example, I want to become strong in order to change the world. Why do you want to become strong? Probably for the sake of his family, the boy said hesitantly. So that Oniai-chan and Tusen will praise me. Well, it's worthy, but is praise really all it is? She asked smiling. And I want to protect Kachan, he added after thinking a little. And I want to become strong so that Oni-chan can work less and rest more, Sasuke finished, completely blushing. You see, Naruto patted him on the shoulder, everyone who wants to have power must understand what it is for. But how you will use it depends only on you, the boy no longer turned up his nose, but listened carefully to the girl. You're a good brother, Sasuke, the child smiled slightly from the praise, I'm sure Itachi thinks so too. But he trains with me so rarely, and yet he is offended, which haunted Naruto. Itachi is doing everything so that you have the childhood that he didn't get, she tried to gently lead Sasuke to the right thought, still, I didn't want to see such a disagreement between the two brothers. He graduated from the academy early, becoming a shinobi, and now serves in ANBU. And all this, to distance you from the moment when you have to become a shinobi. But I want it. He exclaimed, causing the girl to exhale heavily. I know, but. Don't rush to grow up, okay? She smiled, lightly touching his thin shoulder. When you have a younger brother or a child, you will do everything to protect him from the shinobi world. Okay, he muttered, calming down. Naruto saw that he did not fully accept his brother's sacrifice, because he simply did not understand what could await him. The girl exhaled, rising from her usual place, announcing the start of training. It soon became the norm for them to meet here and practice Tai, throwing shuriken and kunai at randomly placed targets, then she taught him control and guided him into Nin. Unfortunately, she could not help with his clan element of fire, since she only owned air but she prompted and helped as much as possible. Sasuke got used to the smiling mentor, less often remembering the desire to defeat his brother, but only to stand next to him. Until at the next training session, they were met by a confused Itachi. Oniai-chan! The boy exclaimed, running up to his brother, who stared questioningly at the clearly pleased Naruto. Naruto agreed to train me, and my father showed me one of the katona jutsu. You must help me so that I can master it. The child said, for which he received a slight poke in the forehead. Okay, Sasuke, the ANBU agreed, looking at Naruto, who nodded in understanding. Their meeting was interrupted by Tenzo, who came to the training ground to take Naruto to the Hokage. The girl waved her hand farewell, giving a final warm smile to such different echihas. The fox rumbled with displeasure inside, but Naruto believed that these two were completely different. It was always quiet in the Hokage's office. It was behind the door that one could hear punctuation, conversations, or hurried steps, but when an ordinary shinobi entered the head's office, he involuntarily fell silent, in awe of the third Hokage. For Naruto, this was an old grandfather, who could be called Aji-san in his own way, because he really was dear to everyone in this village. He also exuded wisdom, which was concentrated in his stories, quiet words, and a tired smile on his wrinkled face. He always looked at her kindly, saw Naruto in her, and not the demon fox, which could not but rejoice. So she respected the old Hokage. However, now, walking into the office, she did not understand the reason. It seems that this week she didn't have time to do anything to be called to the old man, Sasuke took all her strength and Gai-sensei squeezed out what was left. Come in, a quiet voice said, and Naruto entered the office. 
old man? Asked Uzumaki. Something happened? Yes, Naruto, he answered heavily. Listen to me, carefully, the girl nodded, showing that she was ready to listen. As you know, your parents are Minato and Kushina. Before their death, they entered into an agreement with one of the clans. It clearly states that you must marry the heir of this clan. Nanny? Naruto was surprised, staring at the old Hokage. I'm just going to be eight. But according to the documents, your psychological age is 13, and this is the age of a good genin, which means an adult shinobi. Why did you suddenly remember about this contract? Uzumaki asked, trying to reach the fox in her subconscious. The head of the clan insisted on this, he answered honestly, and then added, this is an Uchiha, Naruto's breath caught, and his insides were pulled into a tight knot, twisting counterclockwise. The old man paused, giving her time to come to her senses, but the fox remained stubbornly silent, purring menacingly. Naruto, Hiruzen's quiet voice trembled as soon as the frightened girl looked at her grandfather, I can help, just tell me. We can stall for time, come up with something, but sooner or later it will come. Agree to marriage. Naruto raised her head, stunned by the fox's words, after all, he was giving himself into the hands of the clan, in the person of the young bride, but all doubts were swept away by the wave of warmth that suddenly ran through his entire body. Uzumaki calmed down, feeling that the fox would protect her. However, like Itachi and baby Sasuke. And also Kakashi and Ai and Genma. She is not alone, so there is no need to delay what is irreversible. I agree, the voice became confident, and the face changed to calm. Don't worry, the old man muttered, they won't do anything bad to you, the girl just nodded, accepting her fate. Tomorrow, the head's wife will come to you, be prepared, the Hokage warned her, lightly waving his palm. Naruto bowed and left the office. And only there did she allow herself to exhale heavily. Naruto looked at the women of the Echiha clan who had surrounded her for the third day and thought hard. First, Makoto came to her so calm and measured that the young bride's raging heart obediently calmed down. Her gaze wandered around the modest but clean apartment, for a moment it was caught on a stack of books and a couple of scrolls that occupied the windowsill Naruto was still carrying out assignments from the academy. The woman gratefully accepted the offered tea and a simple treat in the form of a pie. Mikoto smiled lightly, recognizing her signature recipe, her dark eyes flashing slyly. Then she told about the wedding, which was in three days, and asked for this time to move to one of the houses on the clan's territory, where she would be prepared for the wedding. She agreed, realizing that she would not be able to see any of her loved ones during these days. For three days, she is surrounded by women of the Echiha clan. And these are the ones who should be called Hokage, they are nothing more than shadows of fire. Everyone is so submissive, quiet and calm, there is humble acceptance in their eyes. While their husbands face the whole world, blazing and burning, burning everything in their path, they are silent shadows, faithfully awaiting their return. In the hands of men there are weapons, but in women it is different, their hands are on the tops of children's heads, their palms cover the tired eyes of exhausted men. If anyone thought that the Uchiha were not capable of love, then he was mistaken, because he simply did not see them in the home circle. And these shadows looked at her so knowingly that Naruto wanted to hide from them so that no one could easily read her soul. And Makoto, the future mother-in-law, among them, did not leave a single step, talking in a measured voice about the ritual, about the family, about the children. Naruto awkwardly looked away when it came to Itachi, she knew him but could not at all imagine him nearby as a husband and life partner. A husband and wife should be like a hand and eyes, when the hand hurts, the eyes cry, and when the eyes cry, the hands wipe away the tears, said the mother-in-law, combing her blonde hair. Naruto smiled nervously, involuntarily wondering who was the hand and who was the eyes in their pair. The ceremony took place in the clan temple at sunset, but the women worked hard on it from the very morning, preparing for the holiday. Mikoto did not place a wataboshi headdress on her already heavy head, but only secured her thick hair with snow-white kenzashi. Naruto kept silent about the fact that she was also not given a peculiar headdress in the form of two horns apparently, 
they could not show her jealousy. Wedding kimono, shiromuku, multi-layered outfit, Mikoto said, carefully putting a long white shirt on the girl. First, nag a juban, so that the kimono does not touch the skin, and we will tie a kashi himo around the waist, then two other women opened a large kimono, also white. This is shiromuku, said the mother-in-law, wrapping the kimono on the right side, it symbolizes purity and innocence. Another reason for the pure white color of the shiromuku is that the bride is leaving her family and at marriage will take on the colors of the groom's family she joins. Naruto hoped that her groom's family wouldn't paint her red. Now we will tie you with a white obi, two women deftly tied her waist with an uncomfortable belt with an obiita inside a board that helped the obi keep its shape. And we'll attach a fan to your belt it will bring you happiness, a small wooden fan was placed near the heart and next to it was a short sword and a sheath. The women finished getting ready and sat down near the exit, giving Naruto a chance to look in the mirror. She looked at her reflection in disbelief, the usual wheat braid was cunningly woven into an extraordinary flower, and thin threads with pearls hung from the kenzashi, the usual training kimono was replaced by a majestic white one, embroidered with barely visible threads of gold. And at the hem of the kimono, cranes flew in a single wedge, bringing fidelity and happiness on their wings. It pressed mercilessly on my shoulders, and the tight obi kept my back straight. It seemed as if someone had simply grabbed her, and she simply could not escape. Show them what you can do. Naruto looked at herself one last time, saying goodbye to the past. Her fear remained in the mirror, the exciting arch of her light eyebrows, but turning to the women, she straightened her shoulders, raised her chin, hiding all her emotions deep inside, where the fox could reliably protect them. Mikoto smiled knowingly, leading her to the temple, where the entire clan had already gathered. I once stood in your place and thought that this kimono was pulling me to the ground with an unknown force, Mikoto said quietly, stopping at the entrance to the temple. I didn't know at all what awaited me, whether I could love my man as much as I wanted, she barely smiled, looking into her blue eyes. Why should we do this? Naruto asked, making Makoto's heart clench in front of her was another victim of circumstances. This is our fate, she lightly squeezed her dark palm, trying to cheer up the bride, but she herself no longer believed in happiness. I can do it, the girl answered, touching her mother-in-law's cold fingers. I will become his hand, I will wipe away tears, but I will not become his eyes, I will not cry when my hand hurts. I will fight for our happiness, she smiled lightly, feeling the necessary calm. Otherwise, it all makes no sense. She took a deep breath, pushing the doors of the temple, in which all the voices died down and the eyes turned to the snow-white bride. Naruto walked calmly and confidently, feeling the metaphorical nine tails developing behind her, the fox inside was growling dully, teasing its bearer to straighten his shoulders even wider. There is a difference in how you enter the arena, as a timid hare, expecting a quick death, or as a majestic tiger, ready to gnaw more than one throat even on your deathbed. And Itachi was waiting for her at the altar, calm and proud, but as soon as she looked into his eyes, regret. He was worried, afraid that he would consider their acquaintance not a coincidence, and would turn away, nursing the remnants of pride that had offended his clan so much. Naruto just smiled, obediently sitting down next to him, easily bowing his head in front of the priest. In a snow-white outfit, he could barely recognize her an unusual vision. Itachi understood what the color white meant soon she should turn into the color of her husband, dissolve in his colors, and become an invisible shadow. He doubted that he would be able to do this, rather he would replenish himself with the sun, and the world around him would become a little brighter. It couldn't be any other way, this is Naruto. But the cranes on her kimono, don't suit them. Instead of them there is a flock of ravens. Suddenly, her fragile palm rested, confidently on her pale palm, and, looking sideways, he noticed a slight smile on her face. Itachi felt relieved. As soon as you saw the usual smile, the world around you was erased, plunging into illusion, you can hear her cheerful laughter, and the tip of her blonde braid touches her cheek. Naruto quietly rose from the bed, pulling on her homemade yukata. Itachi moved involuntarily on the bed, squeezing the nearby pillow, forcing Naruto to hold back a chuckle. She pulled her hair into a low ponytail, quickly washed her face, 
and began moving dishes around the kitchen. It's only been a week since the wedding. A week as the wife of the heir to the Echiha clan. But she liked the simple and understandable more Itachi's wife. She was afraid that married life would be like taking an exam. Every touch and glance will be recorded, the dish will be tasted, housework will become a challenge, and the slightest disobedience will result in a reprimand. But behind the door of the house their own world awaited them. Naruto remained her own mistress, became inspired and moved some things from the old apartment. The empty and gray house began to sparkle with colors, drawings appeared on the walls, which the girl sometimes indulged in, rare photographs among friends, children's, and, of course, a new wedding. The house was filled with aromas, fragrant flowers and clay pots, hot peppers, and baked sweet apples in the small kitchen that Naruto loved so much, but most importantly, the subtle smell of the girl herself. On the first night, Itachi could not close his eyes, afraid of frightening off the fragile something on the other side of the bed, but he could not stop breathing, the aroma of wildflowers and herbs that his wife collected from time to time followed, and thin strands of gold tickled his nose, evoking memories of pine grove on the border of the country. Their house was full of happiness, standing out against the background of the quiet and gray houses of their clan members. Colorful curtains cheekily winked at passers-by and the traditional Maneki Niko funnily twitched its paw on the windowsill, a gift from Kakashi. Naruto then giggled, advising him not to tell Pakan about such a betrayal. In such a house guests were always welcome, Sure Sway, who was quietly happy for his close friend, Sasuke, who quickly learned to call the girl Wenchan, a noisy group of Jounans and ANBU, they rarely came, but always stayed for dinner. And the couple were happy, but the blissful week was over, which means it was time for Itachi to join the service. Naruto was just putting a portion of Omuris on her plate when a slightly disheveled guy appeared in the kitchen, yawning funny. The girl smiled, holding out the plate, which he gratefully accepted. You shouldn't have woken up so early to cook breakfast, he scolded his smiling wife. It's not hard for me, she shrugged, yet Itachi at home brought only joy. Moreover, I promised Sasuke to train before the academy. Will he wake up so early? Itachi doubted, but Naruto waved a spatula threateningly at his very nose. There's no point in doubting your younger brother, she threatened playfully, and then smiled slyly. Besides, I sent a clone after him, to which the husband nodded his head understandingly. Thank you for the food, he thanked, putting the plate down. Itachi stood up, moving closer to the girl. She blushed slightly, looking away, and her husband only chastely kissed her dark forehead, brushing back her light bangs with his palm. See you this evening, he exhaled, moving away from his embarrassed wife, who hastened to turn to the sink to hide her red face. The guy smiled one last time and went to change his clothes. An ANBU captain named Weasel left the house, while the real Itachi remained at home. Do well at the academy, Naruto admonished the child, holding out a bento box. Hi, Wenichan, Sasuke waved his hand, grabbing lunch, and at the door he almost knocked down Shursue, who looked displeasedly after the hurrying boy. Good morning, Naruto, he nodded, remaining at the entrance. Good, she answered. Why are you stuck in the door? Come in. Actually, I wanted to invite you to spar but I see that little Sasuke is already taking full advantage of you, the guy laughed, forcing the blonde to smile as well. What can I do, Naruto nodded sadly, I can't refuse. However, you too, Shursui Kuen, the girl pulled on her sandals, and then locked the house. Only without concessions, otherwise Itachi suddenly forgot how to attack seriously, Uzumaki playfully indignant, while they slowly walked to the clan's training grounds. You should get used to it, Shursui shrugged knowingly. Still, you are his wife. You know, the girl began hesitantly, I haven't fully realized this yet, she turned her gaze to the Hokage rock, fixing her gaze on her father. I don't think Tusan signed this marriage contract thinking that I would get married at less than eight years old. The psyche of a shinobi is a very flexible thing, the guy explained. Since we carry out complex missions, we have to grow up early and age becomes just a number. I think you don't see yourself as eight years old either, do you? Shursui smiled a little sadly, but Naruto could understand him. 
he and Itachi know best how, in a series of trainings and tasks, you forget that just yesterday you were a child. The training ground was empty, which was to their advantage, Shursui warmed up slightly, preparing himself for the duel. What was always surprising to Naruto was watching how her friends changed during sparring sessions like this. Kakashi and Ai is always deliberately calm, with a certain paternal indulgence in every movement and word. Itachi, on the contrary, opened up during the battle, his gaze became more expressive, and his movements were sharper. His cousin, usually cheerful and smiling, during the battle assumed terrible key, which caused the enemy to become lost. But this notorious key had no effect on Naruto, even in the first fight with Shursui, the fox offered to show what real key was, shaking his tails contentedly. At such moments, Naruto thought that her tailed friend was still such a braggart, but did not say anything, she still has the right to show off at least in front of her. We just fight honestly, Shursui warned, without your barriers. And you're without Mangekyo, Naruto appealed, kindly sticking out her tongue, to which Shursui nodded in agreement. The Uzumaki took a deep breath, snatching a kunai from her pouch and ran towards the guy. He easily parried the test blow with a short tanto, and then tried to make a sweep, to which the girl easily jumped back, making seals. From the haze, two shadow copies attacked, surrounding the brunette on both sides, and the original formed another bunch of seals, releasing air bullets. Shursui covered himself with one of the blonde's clones and threw the other away with a lunge. Then a large fireball fell on the girl, but there was a clone on the field. The technique dissipated, leaving Shursui alone at the training ground. He clutched the tanto tighter, looking around carefully. Suddenly, a stream of shuriken, fueled by wind chakra, fell on him from the left side, but Shursui disappeared into a shunshin, hiding in the foliage of a nearby tree. Naruto skillfully hid her own chakra, so it was always difficult to detect it, so all that remained was to lure her into close combat. He threw several kunai at the area where the shurikens were flying from, jumped up, and launched phoenix flowers after them. The girl soared up, dodging the technique, taking out a fuma shuriken from the seal on her wrist. Shursui barely managed to dodge him, but did not notice Naruto below, who was tightly grasping his leg. She pulled him towards her, raising her fist with a faint blue glow. He blocked the blow, but a fist fueled by chakra cannot be blocked painlessly. They sank to the ground, converging in pure tie, crossing kunai and sharp tanto. Shursui dodged the clone from behind, managing to hit the original's forearm, but suddenly Naruto clone pressed on a pressure point on his wrist, which forced him to release the tanto. The girl quickly made the necessary seals, grabbing the guy's slightly numb hand. She jumped away, watching contentedly as her cousin tried to move his right hand. I put a block seal, the blonde explained. Weak, only on a certain part of the body, but it's enough to immobilize you. We agreed without Fuin. Shursui exclaimed belligerently. No, Shursui Kuen, she drawled, the agreement was not to use barriers. The brunette wanted to argue something else, but gave up, laughing, arguing with Uzumaki is more expensive for himself. What a cunning fox, he pretended to be angry, but his dark eyes sparkled rather, to which Naruto burst out laughing, feeling how the fox inside smiled with pride. The only thing that was passed on to her from her mother was Uzumaki blood. These two words explained everything vitality, genome flexibility, and talent for Fuen. One day Kakashi and I, I handed her a seedy book, to which the girl at first made a funny face, but read it. Then another, and another, and then, bribing Tenzo, with personally prepared katsudon. She snuck into the archives, where she found even more clan scrolls. Naruto really felt a craving for Fuen, carefully read each scroll she obtained and carefully wrote it down in her own notebook. The new seal was necessarily subject to careful analysis, how many ligaments are in the frame, how many blocks are in the center and from which kanji the main chain. Only making such seals brought her peace, maybe that's why Fuenjutsu was invented? To calm the hot blood of the Uzumaki? Her own seal was also studied, the 8 trigram seal, was her father's work and deserved admiration. The technique consisted of two four elephant seals, a double lock and an eight symbol seal, 
all designed to allow the fox's chakra to seep between the elephants and mix with Naruto's own chakra. Unfortunately, the fate of the key to the seal was unknown to her, the fox did not remember well where Minato had taken it. Naruto nodded understandingly, again without insisting, you never know, and didn't want to remember. The old Hokage, after all, remembering his conscience, handed over all the available scrolls of the lost clan for her use after all, the village needs a good few and master. Naruto understood the value of each such scroll, all this was proof of the power of her clan. And it doesn't matter that she is now an Uchiha. No one can be deceived by blood, and by blood she is an Uzumaki. She was working on another food scroll, which she did for the sake of training. The whole difficulty of composing the scroll lay in the specific connection at the corners each block had to be evenly fed with chakra, otherwise it would not have worked. Such work required a large supply of chakra so that the master would not fall from exhaustion after the first scroll. Therefore, some sealing scrolls were worth very good money. But through a lot of clout, Naruto gave a couple of such food scrolls to Itachi, Shursue, and some clanmates, as well as to her Jounin too, because even ANBU are more pleasant to eat a homemade bento on a mission. And her husband needs to be fed well, she learned this from Makoto. Naruto stretched contentedly, looking up from the scroll, and yawned deliciously, feeling pleasantly tired. Tadaima came from the corridor, making the girl's heart beat faster in her tight chest. She sent the clone to the kitchen, and she walked down the corridor to meet Itachi. Naruto smiled slightly, looking at her husband, who carefully folded his shoes at the entrance and put the mask on the nightstand. He looked at his wife, nodding easily, and walked deeper into the house to quickly hide in the bathroom. Before he could move away from the mission, he had to quickly eliminate the renegade who had gone on a rampage nearby and managed to hit him in the side with a kunai. Itachi didn't want Naruto to see him like this, dirty, alien, and distant, he took off his vest and t-shirt, turning on the taps in the bathroom. First, he needs to treat the wound so as not to get a stupid infection, but he simply didn't have time because there was a persistent knock on the door. I'm coming in, Naruto announced, opening the door slightly. She was frowning, just like Sasuke, who was denied training, and in her hands were strange jars and ordinary cotton wool. I could have said that I was wounded, the girl muttered, putting the medicine on the floor and seating her husband in front of her on a low chair. I didn't want to bother you, Itachi answered quietly, watching the girl, sitting on her knees, carefully dab cotton wool into one of the solutions. I'm your wife, she threw her head up, looking seriously at her confused husband. You don't have to bother yourself, Naruto, he insisted, making the girl seethe. I understand. I will accept you as anyone, Naruto added more softly, looking into the black pools. Now we are together, which means your wounds are my wounds, your pain is my pain. Let me help, the girl asked, closing her eyes. Aren't you disgusted by touching me? Itachi smiled, sadly, touching his fragrant hair. It's you, Itachi, she smiled without opening her eyes. You can't be nasty, it's impossible to be angry with you, Naruto opened her eyes. Plunging them into deep blue. Nothing in the world will make me turn away from you, do you hear? I hear you, the guy gave in, squeezing the girl in his arms. His salvation is the radiant sun that illuminates even the darkest corners of his wounded soul, with a soft light. The second heir to the great Uchiha clan is the shameful label that Sasuke bore on himself. A burning desire for recognition ate away at his insides, and irrational anger appeared inside. His brother developed rapidly, forcing the entire clan to be proud of his strong heir, while Sasuke remained in the shadows. He tried to catch up, but Itachi just smiled, poked the younger one in the forehead and asked him to wait. And Sasuke was even angrier but he loved his brother. He loved both Kachan and Tasan, but Itachi was everything to him, the center of his life, an invisible goal, to surpass, overtake and become stronger. He trained, pushed himself to the point of exhaustion, trying to see approval in the eyes of his father and brother. And if the brother smiled sadly and ruffled his dark mop of hair, then the father silently turned away, pursing his lips. Sasuke didn't understand what was expected of him, why couldn't he earn approval? 
and she hugged Kachan, carefully, quietly whispering that he could do anything. That a father loves and values each child in his own way. Itachi is Itachi, and you are you. Everything was so simple, but not for baby Sasuke. Sasuke was used to living in the shadows, desperately trying to escape, but his father's gloom and his brother's silence drove him even deeper. And then Naruto appeared. Sunny smiling, she took all the attention of her brother, laughed loudly, making Itachi smile so sincerely that Sasuke had never seen such a smile. Its soft light illuminated even the dark corner into which he had driven himself. She grabbed his hand, pulling him into the light, training him, just like that, without setting up imaginary bars that he needed to jump over. She shared everything with him, talked about a lot of things, and finally opened her eyes. Itachi no longer seemed like an unattainable ideal, but a tired shinobi who dearly loved the younger and wanted to protect him from the cruel reality. The formidable Tusan suddenly became not only a father, but also the head of a clan, for which every Uchiha is a part of the family. It's no wonder that he expected the best from them, caring for everyone in his own way. Naruto made it clear to him that strength should not be vainly proud, and knowledge of many techniques would not help find answers to questions. You need to have a goal, a justification for the power you are looking for. And he found it, he wanted to protect everyone he loved, he wanted to become a support and support for everyone. With Naruto, life was filled with light, even in the darkest corners of the soul. And even though Sasuke was a child, he saw a lot. I noticed that clanmates whispered gloomily and glanced sideways at their older brother, even after the wedding with Naruto. Father became even more distant, and even Kachan could not break through the cold. Gradually, he ceased to be a father, he became just the head, for whom Sasuke had sincere respect, but not love. He only loved a sad mother, a tired Onichan, and an understanding Naruto. But still, something was wrong. At one point, there was too much whispering in the clan, a lot of sidelong glances, it seemed that even the sun stopped looking into the clan's territory, and only in Naruto's house, there was a lot of light and warmth. Sasuke saw that something was bothering them, sneaking a peek at how carefully his brother squeezed his wife in his arms, how she whispered something barely touching her pale face. At such moments, he saw that love existed, and it was not weakness, but strength that was hidden deep inside. Then Shursui disappeared. He stopped coming to visit, his laughter and smile disappeared, and pain appeared on Itachi's face. Sasuke never admitted to either his mother or father that he saw Itachi crying in Naruto's arms. I couldn't forget this, I didn't understand and was afraid that one day my brother would disappear too as if taking on the invisible pain of others. Sasuke again closed himself off, which Naruto could not help but notice. I found him at one of the training grounds, tired and shabby, and silently took him to my place. She bandaged his wounds, gave him some fragrant tea that he had helped collect in the forest, and sat him down in front of her, looking into his dark eyes. What's happened? She asked, allowing the boy to rest his head in her lap. Everyone has become different, the child squeezed out, hiding his face in the folds of her homemade yukata. Which ones? Naruto asked, easily fingering the soft strands. It's like they're waiting for something bad, the boy bit his lip, unwinding the ball of emotions inside. Kachan cries every evening, he admitted, and Tusan doesn't even have dinner with us. And you, Sasuke hesitated, not knowing whether to speak but the warm palm that touched his cheek prompted him to finish. Oniai-chan is also upset, and Shursui doesn't come anymore. I'm afraid that you two will disappear one day. Sasuke fell silent, waiting for Naruto to answer. But the girl was silent and stroked the dark top of her head, but suddenly he felt moisture on his cheek. His eyes widened, it wasn't he who was crying, it was Ainchan's tears. The Uchiha was afraid to move, just so as not to scare the girl away, to give her the opportunity to cry and not say anything, just grab the fabric of the yukata tighter and not look up. Do you remember, Naruto began in an even voice, as if she wasn't crying, at our first meeting, I asked why you need power? The boy just nodded, and she continued, strength must be justified, and aspirations, noble. 
But what if force becomes a tool for imposing your ideas and beliefs? Then two opposites collide, the boy suggested. Someone will resist, they won't want to change their beliefs, by force. That's right, the girl, praised him. Then we have a conflict. Tell me what is most important in a conflict. It's difficult, Sasuke breathed. Probably, to solve everything without losses, so that everyone remains safe. What if losses cannot be avoided? Naruto asked in a firm voice. If this is a military conflict, what is more important? Retreat with minimal losses, or advance with the chance of losing everyone? Minimal losses, Sasuke answered clearly, because he read this in textbooks and heard it more than once from experienced Shursue and Kakashi. Naruto, the child's voice trembled, where does this conflict come from? Why is the clan so unhappy? The boy did not raise his head and lay quietly on her lap, catching the girl's quiet voice. Any conflict does not arise out of nothing, because it is a clash of two judgments. So the same thing happened with the Uchiha and Senja clans, she remembered the first time she heard this story from the fox, she walked away for a long time, comprehending the value of such a flimsy world. They had one goal, peace, but they went towards it in different ways. If the Senju found a solution in love and forgiveness, then the Uchiha followed the path of strength. At some point, the power blinded them, and the first blood was shed. The girl stopped to take a breath, but Sasuke continued instead. If someone killed my family, I would want to take revenge, he said, beginning to understand everything. That's what happened, right? Yes, Sasuke, she confirmed sadly. The Uchiha know how to love, they do it so much that the loss of a loved one awakens madness in the heart, and they take revenge. One death leads to an endless series of other deaths, and in the end everyone burns out, forgetting about the root cause. And what will happen next? The boy raised his head to see tears on his sister's face. You will live, Sasuke, the girl smiled. And you'll never repeat other people's mistakes again, do you promise? I promise, the boy agreed, falling into a warm embrace. It was already past midnight, but the lights were dimly burning in their house. Itachi wearily pulled off his sandals and vest, threw the unfortunate mask nearby, and walked deeper into the house. Naruto sat in a soft chair, immersed in the world of another scroll, frowning funny as she read the lines. Creating a warm aura around herself. The dim light of the lamp sparkled in her wheaten hair, braided in a loose braid, and the gaze of her blue eyes was instantly reflected in the dark pool. A smile touched the dark face, seeing her husband, and her hand stretched out to the newcomer. Itachi settled down at her feet, resting his head on her lap, making Naruto laugh quietly, he and Sasuke were so similar. They gave the order, he said dully, adjusting himself to the gentle palms. You and Sasuke will survive. What will happen to you? The girl asked quietly, sliding down to her husband. They want to introduce me into one organization as a renegade, the guy answered, touching the thin stripes on his cheeks. It's official, are you on a mission? Uzumaki clarified, weightlessly kissing the rough palm, receiving an affirmative nod. Sasuke can bring you into the clan when this is all over, she suggested, leaning her forehead against his cheek. Take care of him, okay? Itachi asked, gently touching her lips. Of course, the girl agreed, breaking away from the kiss. Send me news as best you can, she breathed, feeling warm breath on her neck. We can meet in Soraku, Itachi whispered. At least once, but I want to see you. I'll be there, Naruto promised, running her fingers through her resinous hair. You will be my son, said the husband, looking into bright blue eyes. The wife just smiled, hugging him tightly to convey warmth to the wounded soul, exhausting her flowery ripe aroma, lovingly stroking her strong shoulders, weightlessly touching every feature of her pale face with her lips. She said goodbye, hoping to see you soon. You didn't raise the clan? He asked his parent behind him. I don't want to fight to the death with my son, the father responded quietly, without turning around. Mikoto sat next to her husband, also staring at the empty wall. For the first time that night, the sword trembled in Itachi's hands. I respect your choice, Fugaku replied calmly. 
You went your own way, different from the one I chose. But I'm still proud of you, he breathed, squeezing his wife's hand. The parents didn't turn around, but Itachi didn't want to. He could barely hold the weapon, feeling tears running down his pale face. Tusan. Kachan, he croaked, convulsively squeezing the handle. You are still a very kind child, Fugaku whispered. Too kind for this world. Itachi, the mother sobbed, lowering her head, take care of Sasuke and Naruto. They are all you have left. Yes, Ka-chan, Itachi promised, pressing the tip of his sword into his father's back. Don't doubt it, son, Fugaku said finally. Our pain will disappear as soon as the sword pierces the body, and your pain will only intensify, the son raised the weapon above himself, covering his blood-red eyes. Don't feel sorry for the dead, Itachi. They can't be saved, the word sounded before the two bodies sank to the wooden floor, with a thud. Swaying from fatigue, the son left his father's house, where his accomplice was already waiting for him. Itachi winced at the sight of this person, but remained silent. As soon as he was given the mission to clear the clan, a masked man came out to him and introduced himself as Madara Uchiha. Are you finished? He asked, hiding the kunai in his pouch. Yes, the guy responded coldly, jumping onto the roof. We have to go, Madara said. You'll make a great member of the Akatsuki. Itachi remained silent, glancing at the curtained windows. He called one of the ravens, making sure it disappeared somewhere in the backyard. And inside the house, Naruto couldn't sleep. The instinct caught how the chakra centers were extinguished one after another, and then the familiar burning chakra of the husband was carried away further and further. Nearby, Sasuke was fast asleep, clutching the hem of her t-shirt, his dark eyebrows furrowed in worry. The girl barely smiled, touching the crease between her eyebrows, and the child's face brightened. Lying in a warm bed, she didn't want to get up and she decided to check on Fox and his subconscious. The inner world has not changed. All the same high walls, red columns on the sides and iron bars of the eternal cage. She walked inside, trustingly falling on her soft tails, hiding her tear-stained face. This Uchiha amazed me, a voice whispered in my ear. I told you he's different. Naruto replied, rolling over onto her back to look at the animal's profile. You turned out to be right, agreed the fox. Now you are the head of the Echiha clan. I didn't think that this would ever happen, the Echihas are controlled by Uzumaki. The whole clan is one child, the girl chuckled. Sasuke will be the head, I just need to make sure he grows up, to be a good shinobi. You can do it, he said after a short pause. I believe in you. Thank you, the girl smiled warmly. You gave me so much more than anyone. Karama, the fox said quietly. My name is Karama. Naruto stared at the beast in shock as she rose to her feet. She wiped away the remaining tears with her palm, smiled even wider and bowed politely, accepting his gift. The morning began with a persistent knock on the door, causing Naruto to jump up sharply from the soft bed. Sasuke was not nearby, which greatly frightened the girl, and she, casually pulling on her yukata, hurried to open the door. The guest turned out to be Kakashi, not hidden by the ANBU mask, so Uzumaki saw regret on his face. The girl became gloomy, remembering the restless night, and looked away. ANBU are already clearing the area, and the Hokage asked you to come to him, Kakashi said, skipping unnecessary words for which Naruto was grateful to him. Have you seen Sasuke? The girl suddenly asked, letting Kakashi into the house. I found him unconscious at his parents' house, Hataki answered. He most likely snuck in while you were sleeping. Kami, I fell asleep so soundly that I didn't notice, the blonde frowned tiredly, putting the kettle on the stove. Is he in the hospital? Yes, the man confirmed, gently taking the box of tea from his shaking hands. The Iryanans say that everything is fine with him, it's from the Sharingan. Did he awaken the Sharingan? Naruto squeezed the tabletop tightly, trying to calm down her emotions. Two Tomo at once, said the ANBU, pouring boiling water over dried mint and rosehip leaves. Listen, Naruto, he began timidly, I don't want to see you like this. 
I promised Sensei to take care of you, so I won't leave you now. I can help him with the Sharingan, but it's important that you be strong around Sasuke. I will, Kakashi and I, I the girl smiled, brushing away the last tears, she started crying often, it's time to finish. Wait, I'll change my clothes. Hataki nodded, following the thin figure with his eyes. This child is the only thing he has. A bright memory of the sensei who was able to replace his father, a smiling reminder of Kushina, who took care of him like a mother. Her words preserved the wisdom of her parents, and her aspirations preserved their dreams. Kakashi saw how much this wedding had changed her and Itachi, and was silently glad that peace and tranquility reigned in their home. But, apparently, fate could not give them happiness so easily and separated them. And Hitaki knew what it meant to be an Uzumaki. Uzumaki means loyalty. Indestructible and united, now Naruto is devoted to only one thing for the rest of her life, and it doesn't matter what she is now called the wife of the heir to the Echiha clan or the wife of the most dangerous nuke mean. The man put the empty mug in the sink, noticing that Naruto was already ready. She was dressed in simple black breeches and a dark blue blouse, and her blonde hair was obediently braided into a tight braid. His face brightened and his gaze changed to a determined one, which made Hitaki smile slightly. Let's go, the blonde said, letting him go ahead. Tenzo asked me to tell you that someone from the top was interested in what happened to the Echiha's eyes, Kakashi glanced sideways at the clearly pleased Naruto. Nothing special, she smiled slyly. Only few in blocks, so the transplanted Sharingan will not work. Reinsurers, the man chuckled knowingly. He already has Shursui's right eye, the blonde frowned. Itachi was able to give me his left eye by transplanting it into one of the ravens. We couldn't let him collect even more Sharingan. What will you do with the clan? He asked, glancing at the ANBU, who were working on the next street. I'll take it upon myself until Sasuke turns 12, Uzumaki shrugged, not even turning her head to the other mansions, fortunately their house was located on the outskirts of the clan territory and was the only residential one on the entire street. Will he be ready this early? I won't leave him alone, of course, Naruto objected, jumping from roof to roof towards the residence. Officially, he will be the head from the moment he comes of age. And I wanted to ask you to also join the clan, she looked anxiously at her friend, slightly clenching her fists. Your Sharingan is a powerful argument for this. If you need it, then there's no point in refusing. Kakashi assured her, nodding his head slightly. Thank you, the girl breathed, feeling relieved. As for the affairs of the clan, Itachi and I came up with something that could be done. Are you going to ask the Hokage to transfer matters to you now? He has to do it, Naruto snorted, landing at the entrance to the building. No one can argue that I have the rights and authority to do this. I see, Kakashi nodded, you and Itachi decided everything a long time ago. It was inevitable, the girl frowned. If the presence of a Jinchuriki in the ranks of the clan did not calm them down, then this outcome was the only possible one. Hataki remained silent, holding back a caustic comment inside that Itachi had simply dumped a huge pile of problems on his wife's head, leaving her to rake it out. She glanced at the man, stopping at the door of the Hokage's office, piercing him with an angry gaze. I know what you're thinking, Naruto said. I agreed to this myself, so don't even dare feel sorry for me, and if you can, then help me. Okay, Kakashi nodded, once again amazed at the Uzumaki's loyalty. The usual silence reigned in the office, and in addition to the old man Haruzen, there were two elders and a gaunt man who introduced himself as Danzo. Naruto, the Hokage began, accept my condolences. Thank you, the girl bowed politely, smiling to herself at Fox's caustic comment. I think everyone here understands perfectly well that Itachi did a great favor to the village by putting his fate and reputation on the line. Of course, agreed one of the elders. We are grateful to him for the successful completion of the mission, but now the existence of the Echiha clan is impossible. I don't think so, Naruto objected, casting a confident glance at the quiet woman. Until Sasuke grows up, I will assume the responsibilities of the head of the clan. 
As long as the last Uchiha are alive, the clan will exist, she spoke confidently and calmly, releasing Karama's very weak key, which had the desired effect, everyone in the office did not dare to interrupt. Just as the head, I take upon myself the management of all the affairs of the clan, and this is the management of the territories, the work of the police, and several weapons shops in the shopping district. The police cannot work without people, Danzo said, looking carefully at the blonde. I know, Naruto agreed. That's why we are reorienting the work of the police. I propose moving the entire encryption department and administrative department to the police building in a different situation. The girl would have been amused by the sight of surprised faces, but she pulled herself together and continued. As far as I know, the encryption department is huddled in the basements of the archive, and there is no separate administrative structure in the village. So why not give the upper floors of an empty building to the cryptographers, and create something similar to the police and lower-ranking administration on the first floors? And what is the work of such a department? Asked the Hokage. Receiving complaints from citizens about minor violations and thefts, collecting applications for D-rank missions, and that's just the small stuff. The same structure can deal with problems of the public utility sector and the service sector, Naruto explained. This will significantly free up the work of the residents, because all problems are solved only here. And so everything that does not require your personal attention can fall under the work of this department. And, of course, the Echiha clan is ready to give up several large buildings on the territory for the operation of these structures. This is a sound idea, Hiruzen approved of her proposal, puffing thoughtfully on his pipe. But, Hiruzen, Danzo, interrupted indignantly, who will oversee this department? It is impossible for power in the village to be divided. D-rank missions and divorce papers do not require the Hokage's special attention, Danzo-sama, Naruto couldn't hold back from the hairpin, raising her chin. I will raise this issue at tomorrow's council meeting, where you should be present as an Uchiha, Hiruzen concluded. Your idea is worthy of attention. With such a structure in place, the staff of the residents will be able to devote more time to more important issues, Sarutobi smiled lightly, looking warmly at the young girl. Thank you, Hokage-sama, Naruto bowed respectfully, glad that the old man was on her side. Also, I want to inform you that Kakashi Hitaki will be accepted into the clan, as so far, the only bearer of the clan dojitsu. It's within your rights, Hiruzen spread his hands, which confirmed the silence of the dissatisfied Danzo and the calm elders. What about the gun shops? I'll figure it out on my own after the council of clans, the girl answered. The Hokage nodded and waved his palm dismissing the newly minted head of the Echiha and the newly accepted member of the clan. Once in the hallway, Naruto exhaled deeply, feeling a warm hand on her shoulder. You behaved with dignity, Kakashi praised her. Sorry for doubting, the man smiled guiltily. It's okay, Kakashi and I I, she chuckled. I didn't fully believe that they would agree. Let's go to the hospital, we need to take Sasuke home. And yet, why do you need to move departments to the police building? Hataki asked her as she left the building. Well, it's quite simple, the girl admitted. First of all, I just feel sorry for the cryptographers that they have to work in a seedy basement, although they do a lot of work, Naruto curled her dark finger as they slowly walked towards the hospital. Then, the creation of an administrative department is not even my idea. Once Genma complained that it was completely inconvenient to work when people with questions of varying degrees of importance were waiting in the same line, so they had to constantly come and switch from one thing to another, the girl bent her second finger. I don't even understand why they didn't do this earlier? Uzumaki was sincerely surprised. As for me, the work of the residents needs to be reformatted from scratch, but the first step is to separate the important and urgent from the easy and not so serious. Yes, that's logical, Kakashi agreed, looking at the student, who had clearly been thinking about this idea for a long time. Did you come up with it yourself? Genma gave the impetus, Itachi gave the idea, and I polished it, the blonde shrugged, smiling lightly. And the most important thing is to place all this on the clan's territory. So that as many residents as possible can walk around the territory, Hataki understood the message. 
Are you also planning to distribute the remaining territories for general use? It's cheaper to rent than in shopping arcades, and something similar to hotels, because public onsens are very close, Naruto nodded contentedly. I want people not to become afraid of our territories, so that all this is quickly forgotten, and over time it begins to generate profit. I need to support a growing shinobi, the girl giggled, remembering how much baby Sasuke eats. I see, Kakashi breathed. You've already decided everything a long time ago, Hataki concluded, increasingly surprised by the blonde. Itachi didn't abandon me amidst a lot of problems, she smiled warmly and sincerely. We discussed a lot about how best to proceed, and all I had to do was make it a reality. They reached the hospital, asking the friendly girl at the front desk for Sasuke's whereabouts. I'll wait here, Hataki stopped knowingly at the hospital room, receiving a grateful look. Naruto entered the boarding house, noticing Sasuke that he was no longer asleep, but was sitting on the windowsill. I think, the girl began, you shouldn't get out of bed yet. Wanichan, the boy flew at her, tightly grasping his sister's waist. I'm sorry I disobeyed, he muttered, I couldn't help myself. It's okay, Sasuke, Naruto lovingly stroked the boy's black crown. This is your family. Now you are my family, he said seriously, looking confidently at the girl. I promise to protect you. You can do anything, Uzumaki smiled, kneeling in front of the boy. You will become the head of the clan as soon as you are ready, but for now, I will help you with everything, she lightly kissed the boy on his pale forehead. Thank you, Wanichan, Sasuke was embarrassed, touching his forehead with his palm. Thanks to everyone who reads and leaves comments, and also corrects errors in the PB. I blush at the comments, but I'm getting better, because this is my path as a fic writer. Four years later. The dawn sun was just rising from the horizon, illuminating the empty streets of Kanoha with light, welcoming those who had just woken up. Naruto was already standing in the kitchen, carefully grinding hot black peppercorns in a mortar, a tribute to excess emotions. The powder migrated to a small bowl, and to it were dried rosemary stems, as an eternal memory, leaves of fragrant lemon balm, as a guarantee of mutual understanding, pine needles, and flowers of the sacred sakaki. The girl felt peace spreading throughout her body from such a simple task, she poured the mixture into a cotton bag and hid it in her pouch. After cleaning up after herself in the kitchen, Naruto quietly crept towards the exit, listening to the sounds in the house. Sasuke slept soundly in his room, never hearing his sister leave the house. The day was just beginning, the blonde took a deep breath of fresh morning air full of oxygen, the night rain would help her confuse her tracks a little, but first she needed to carry out the usual ritual. As a child, Naruto found the Uzumaki Temple. A small wooden building in the forest on the outskirts of the village, very close to the ANBU training grounds, where the girl loved to train. Slightly unkempt and wild weeds occupied the platforms, and tenacious hops were already crawling up the wall with might and main. But inside, everything was preserved intact, and most importantly, the thin threads of protective barriers gleamed encouragingly in the dim sunlight, like, well done, I found it after all. The last Uzumaki in this village. So it happened that once a month she began to visit the shrine, putting it in order, bringing simple donations in the form of a dango stick and a bowl of sake. And she made sure to burn her own mixture of different plants, where each element meant something, and sat quietly, watching the fragrant smoke fly high up to the ancestors who were carefully watching over her. Then she prayed and asked only for the health of her loved ones, forgiveness and faith, asked to keep an eye on her, to guide and help her at the right moment. Leaving the temple, my soul felt light, and life no longer seemed so difficult. I'm glad that you don't forget your ancestors, a quiet voice sounded when Uzumaki was already leaving the walls of the temple. Good morning, Hokage-sama, the girl nodded lightly, greeting the old man. As always, I asked for strength and health. Let it be so, Grandpa smiled. I heard that you are organizing a test for graduates. He asked, slowly walking next to the exit from the forest. What are you talking about? Naruto laughed, just a little game to celebrate graduating from the academy. Sasuke turned out to have a lot of comrades, and I volunteered to entertain them a little before everyday life as a ninja. 
That's good, the old man agreed, looking at the sun through the thick crown of trees. And what kind of game? He asked. I'll divide them into teams and give them the task of taking the bell from me before sunset, said the girl, brazenly using Kakashi's signature task. Four teams? Sarutobi became interested. And how did you divide? Do you want to compare? Naruto smiled. I don't think I've gone far from the lists that will be announced tomorrow. The first team is the trio of Ino Shikacho, but their teamwork is still weak. Then, if you put in Izuka next to Hyuga and attach Aburame, you will get a good reconnaissance team. And Sasuke? Grandpa asked, examining the calm face of Uzumaki. Sasuke is a pure fighter, so he needs reinforcements for his team in the form of the same fighter, only at close range. And the third, at best, is either ironing, or in support from a long distance. Who's on his team today? Haruzan clarified. Two clownless ones, Haruno and Takahashi. Haruno has good control, she could become an ironin, and Takahashi is already a genin on Guy's team, the girl said when they had already reached the street. Well, Naruto, Hiruzen said, smiling warmly at the blonde, I wish you a lot of fun. Tomorrow before the academy, you'll come by to tell us about the results, okay? Hi, Hokage-sama, Uzumaki nodded. You once called me Aji-sama, he noted, looking at the 17-year-old girl, who was slightly embarrassed by his words. Once upon a time I was not the head of an entire clan, she muttered, grabbing the tip of her usual braid. It happened, the man said intelligently, turning towards the residence. What a random accident, Karama drawled displeasedly, earning a playfully reproachful look from the bearer. Naruto stood for a while, waiting for the old man's figure to disappear around the bend, and then disappeared into the Shunshin. Concealing her chakra, she found herself at the edge of the clan territory, listening to the silence. Having created several clones, Uzumaki waved her palm at them, winking encouragingly at her copies. The clones rushed off in different directions, and the girl herself made her way to an inconspicuous building in the wild rose thickets. The houses here were demolished in the first year after the massacre, and a small vegetable garden was planted to support nearby guest houses that housed frequent guests of the village. But Naruto did not allow the dilapidated shed to be demolished, because it was the only hidden passage to Soraku. In troubled times, the Uchiha received weapons, bypassing the village registry, from their secret warehouses in Niniko territory. Ironically, the Uchihas knew how to negotiate with cats, but not with people. Making her way through the dark and narrow passage, Uzumaki thought that everything had turned out just fine. Three days ago she received news from her husband. The summoned raven found her in the backyard of the house, where she was practicing ken movements with Sasuke, he was seriously interested in the way of the sword, armed with a good quality katana from the clan's weapons shop. A note from Itachi said that a man would be waiting for her in three days in Soraku, and then moved to a carved box in her room. There she carefully kept all the notes that she received from her husband, smiling, sadly from the memories of the distant past. But then the question arose, how to sneak out of the village unnoticed so as not to arouse suspicion. Of course, she could have left simply by hiding her chakra, but at the first need she could have been called to the Hokage, or any other head of the clan would have needed her presence. It was necessary to come up with a good alibi, but Naruto did not expect the answer to come with Sasuke. The younger Uchiha simply offered to perform a small performance in front of everyone with the participation of fellow graduates from the academy. The heirs of almost all Kanoha clan studied in the class with Sasuke, and Uchiha, being a fairly smart child, maintained good relations with them. One day, Naruto asked why Sasuke often gathers such a company around him, to which the young scoundrel proudly announced that he wanted to have strong comrades and be on friendly terms with most clans. The girl received her sight that day, steadfastly ignoring Karama's caustic comments about the wayward boy, who once again seriously declared that he would do anything for his sister. So rumors spread through the village about the teen test of graduates by the head of the Echiha herself, who, as everyone knows, skillfully hid her chakra, becoming almost invisible. The children accepted the task with enthusiasm, well, probably, except for the youngest, Nara, who, like his father, 
was too lazy to express emotions. The alibi was ready, even the Hokage conveniently turned up at the temple, making sure that Naruto would simply disappear before the end of the day. Over four years, she completely learned to keep her face in front of any difficulty, came out of every verbal duel with a smile and a small victory, which gave her confidence in the future, calm and cloudless. But as she made her way to meet Itachi, the girl felt her heartbeat intensify, her hands tremble, and tears involuntarily appeared in her eyes. Pushing the hatch out, Naruto carefully climbed out of the secret entrance, looking around the deserted alley was slightly illuminated by the light of a dim street lamp and the rays of the early sun. My breathing stopped as soon as I smelled the familiar burning chakra of my husband. She turned around, noticing a tall figure in the darkness of the alley, and extended a dark palm forward. A pale hand burst out of the darkness, tightly grabbing the girl, and at the same moment leaned the fragile body of his wife against him. Itachi, a hoarse voice, cut through the silence, disappearing somewhere in the folds of a black cloak. Let's go, she didn't even recognize his voice, it had changed, lost its soft tones, becoming truly adult. She silently followed him, not letting go of his cold hand, and found herself in a gray room with a single futon on the floor. This is one of the old houses, he explained. I tried to find something more or less dilapidated, the smile barely touched her face, and her dark eyes examined the girl with all her might. So many years have passed, Naruto breathed, burying her nose somewhere in her neck, it barely reached her chin, but I still remember how warm it is in your arms. I already forgot how brightly you can smile, Itachi whispered, touching the golden strands that the tight braid could not capture. I'll only smile until the evening, the girl promised, rising on her tiptoes, to reach her much-desired lips. At first, the kiss was gentle. Trembling and cautious, as if in a waking dream, they recalled those feelings that they had deep inside, hiding from prying eyes. Itachi was filled with the flowery, ripe aroma that he saw in his most pleasant dreams, silent journeys past fragrant fields, settled somewhere near his heart, reminding him that he was still human. Naruto melted in strong hands, pulling out all her tenderness and weakness that she could only show around her husband. She pacified her violent temper, gently flowing around her soul, to heal every wound. Both were short of breath, and, looking away from the kiss, they looked at each other with crazy eyes, dripping straight onto the thin futon. The second kiss turned out to be passionate, old feelings awakened, bringing with them natural animal desire. Calloused palms made their way under the loose blouse, touching the burning skin, counting the thin ribs with their fingers, tracing the edge of the bra with their fingers. Naruto arched in the strong arms, afraid to open her eyes, so as not to wake up for anything if this was all just a vivid dream. But reality amazed me with the range of feelings that mixed inside, exploding with stray sparks, before my eyes. Lips were already kissing the dark neck with all their might, hands supported the thin body, pressing it closer to themselves. The moment was worth the wait, fully replenished in just one timid touch of her fingers to his cheek. My soul hurt even more, treacherously reminding me that this would end. You will have to let go of the sun, plunge yourself into darkness again, living day after day in a pathetic illusion. They were burning. They were exhausted by the heat. Lying in a gray room on a thin futon, completely naked. He is on his back, staring at the ceiling, and she is on her side, resting her head on a strong shoulder. Her hand was extended upward, and her eyes watched how pale fingers intertwined with dark ones, covering their faces from the sunlight that made its way through the holes in the roof. Then the hand dropped to the tip of the straight nose, the finger outlined thin pale lips, catching a convulsive breath. Then it slid along the neck, touching the pronounced Adam's apple dived into the hollow of the collarbone and stopped on the shoulder. Itachi lightly touched the hollow in the bend of her elbow with his lips, turning his face towards her. She smiled, as she promised, flickering with a ghostly light, collecting sunbeams on her skin. I want to remember you like this forever, he whispered. You'll see me again, the girl objected softly, peering into her anthracite eyes. I will wait for it. What's bothering you? She asked after several minutes of silence. They plan to collect tailed creatures, which means they will come for you, he admitted, rising to a sitting position. 
I'll be ready, the girl chuckled, hugging her husband from behind. Especially if they send you, Naruto giggled, kissing the vertebrae of her neck. When everything goes too far, I will eliminate as many people as possible, the man promised dully, squeezing her hands on his chest. I don't care, she breathed. The main thing is that you return to us, otherwise I will force the Shinigami to return your soul to me. He won't listen to you, Itachi objected, smiling slightly. He'll obey, the girl objected, I'm an Uzumaki, she explained condescendingly, touching the brunette's ear with her lips. It's a shame, he exhaled, examining the dark palms. Itachi, Naruto said in a serious tone, you don't need to fight everything alone. You have me, you have Sasuke, and a new generation is growing up in the village, they are completely different, they will no longer make the same old mistakes. I know, the Uchiha whispered, kissing his fingertips. But I must do everything possible to keep you safe. I know, she repeated, sadly, weaving thin strands of black resin and liquid sun into a braid. Let this be your talisman, Naruto said, grabbing a kunai from a pouch lying nearby. She cut away the braided strands, admiring the contrast of the colors. Ours, he answered, taking them in his hands. Itachi stood up to his full height, looking around the room. The Uchiha took the kunai, throwing it at the wall, and then tied their talisman to the hilt. The light wind that penetrated the abandoned building swayed a simple braid, which remained the only proof that everything that was happening was not someone's dream. Throwing on a stray cat's henge, Naruto made her way through the clan's territory, passing the shopping arcades that were gradually closing at the end of the trading day. Old man Yamada, noticing the gray cat, was at first surprised, and then winked knowingly, shaking his now gray head. The Uzumaki meowed protractedly, proudly shaking her fluffy tail, causing the man to laugh quietly, and then disappeared around the nearest bend. Hiding in an inconspicuous alley, she turned back and, putting together seals, scattered the clones. Almost the entire day came back to my memory, during which two clones confused the children, chasing them throughout the village. Naruto smiled contentedly, the guys turned out to be pretty good, the Hyuga Abure Minazuka team, due to their sensory abilities, was constantly sitting on the tail of one of the clones, which from time to time released portions of chakra, the Inoshikacho team was even able to drive one of the copies into a simple trap, but then they themselves fell into one of the makeshift barriers. Shikamaru flashed his intelligence, Managing to find the loophole that Uzumaki had left, he even made a mental note to praise the younger one to his father when he had the opportunity to get into the encryption department. The younger brother's team, unfortunately, lost, since the rather well-coordinated twosome, Takahashi Echiha, was constantly distracted by the frightened Haruno. Which led to the loss of track of the restless blonde. The sun was gradually going down, there was no more than half an hour left until the end of the game, so Naruto decided to open up, releasing a good portion of chakra at a time. She rushed at full speed towards the clan's distant training ground, feeling several pockets of children's chakra rushing after her. Carefree childishness overwhelmed her completely, reminding her that she had not had time to be a child, so she could afford to relax a little in the company of future genin. Stopping in the middle of the training ground, Naruto waited until tired guys surrounded her on all sides. You have half an hour left, Uzumaki reminded, looking at the concentrated teenagers who were clearly up to something. Ten Ten was the first to attack, bombarding her with a stream of shuriken and kunai. Having dodged, Naruto created several clones, one met in pure tie with the younger Hyuga, and the other two tried to capture Inoshikacho in another barrier. The original dodged Kiba's Gatsuga and the fireball of a satisfied Achiha but did not notice the swarm of beetles that was trying to pick up the bell on his belt. Having performed a kawarimi, Naruto hid in the foliage of a tree, watching as Hugo was able to dispel the clone, knocking out a couple of tenketsu, and Cheiji slammed her copy, sandwiched by the Nara technique. The children lined up in a tight circle, carefully watching every bush from which Uzumaki could jump out. The girl smiled, contentedly well done, they were able to track him down, survived until the end of the day, worked together in teams, but, alas, they missed the main thing. The blonde led them to this particular clearing for a reason, so having activated a previously prepared barrier, she boldly entered the clearing, 
looking at the dissatisfied faces of the children. It's so unfair, Kiba was indignant, and his indignation was echoed by Akamaru's bark. The Uzumaki barrier cannot be broken. Thank you, of course, for the praise, Naruto responded jokingly, but no one stipulated any prohibitions on the techniques. So guys, we lost. Uzumaki announced, looking at the drooping children. There are still five minutes until the end, Shikamaru informed her, rubbing his tired neck. Sit there, Naruto shrugged condescendingly, but suddenly felt the impossible. Sakura stood behind her, clutching the bell in her hand in disbelief, staring at the blonde with huge eyes. These are the boys, she breathed, lifting the barrier. Some pounced on Sakura, happily clapping her on the shoulder, carefully passing the treasured bell from hand to hand. Naruto turned around, finding herself in front of a satisfied Sasuke and Shikamaru, who were slyly looking at the surprised girl. And who came up with it? Uzumaki asked, placing her hands on her hips. Together, Shikamaru shrugged, smiling slightly. Sakura is the only one who could do this, the brother began to explain. Excellent control gave an advantage, you didn't notice it from behind. And our job is just to distract you and get you into a trap so that you relax. Did you see the barrier? Naruto was surprised. I know you too well, Sasuke snorted, smiling, contentedly. Uzumaki laughed, ruffling the heads of the smart children who were able to amaze her today. Having gathered this horde of children who vied with each other to talk about their impressions and emotions, she placed them in the garden of the side at a wide table in order to properly feed their tired comrades. Sakura volunteered to help, spooning rice into small plates in the cramped kitchen. You did a good job today, Naruto said, looking at the drooping girl. I turned out to be useless, she admitted, looking at the blonde in frustration. Why? Uzumaki was sincerely surprised. Your superior control led you to victory. But that's all I can do, the girl sobbed, clutching the empty bowl in her hands. I don't have clan techniques, I can't handle weapons, I can't even come up with a good plan to help everyone. Naruto exhaled, carefully taking the dishes from Haruno's hands, to take her hands in hers. Sakura, she said. Squatting down right in front of the tearful child, now is not the time to think about what you don't have. Think about how you can make do with what you have. Can I do it? Sakura asked uncertainly, wiping away her tears. It depends only on you, Uzumaki smiled. Find your path, be patient, study hard, and you can become a great team player, she said, stroking the cheerful girl's pink hair. Moreover, Sasuke will clearly notice your progress, the blonde added casually, looking at the flushed girl who instantly grabbed the bowls of rice, taking them to the backyard. Naruto laughed quietly as she stirred the sweet and sour curry in the pan. Sakura's embarrassed face reminded her of her own feelings, and she touched her chest, where a black summoning raven feather lay in a secret pocket of her blouse. Wanichan. Came from the first floor. Breakfast is ready. The girl smiled, putting the almost finished scroll aside, stretching sweetly. Sasuke kindly agreed to prepare breakfast, giving his sister the opportunity to meditate a little on working with the Fuen. Pots and pans were rattling loudly in the kitchen, dirty dishes were lined up menacingly in the sink, and Sasuke, stained with something vaguely reminiscent of tomato paste, contentedly handed her a plate of brownish-brown liquid. This is a stew, the Uchiha explained the origin of the dish, though I went too far with the pepper, he admitted displeasedly. Thank you, Naruto thanked, sitting down at the table opposite the excited guy. What's happened? She asked. We didn't talk yesterday, said the brother, deftly wielding a spoon, and I want to know how the meeting went. Naruto instantly flushed red, looking away to the side, which greatly amused the teen. Well, I see, Sasuke drawled, enjoying the rare picture of an embarrassed sister. It's possible without details. Everything is fine, the girl answered, pouting funny. I asked you to convey my congratulations on your graduation, as well as a small gift. The younger's eyes instantly flashed with interest when Naruto handed him a small scroll. I told you that you were carried away by the path of the sword, and about your second element, the blonde smiled, 
watching her brother take out a sealed sword from the scroll. This is a rare Reiju blade, Itachi was able to get it in the Land of Lightning, Sasuke admired the thin blade, clutching the handle in disbelief. He's beautiful, the Echiha marveled. You won't be able to handle a sword seriously yet, the girl warned him. You need to master the element of lightning well, and then try to channel chakra into metal. I understand, the guy agreed. If you ask Ano-san about the blade, he'll definitely tell you something. I'm just going to visit his shop on the way to the Hokage, Naruto said. Come with me, there are still two hours before your assignment, the blonde suggested, putting down the empty plate. Hi, replied the Echiha. Go get ready, and I'll wash the dishes, he pushed his sister out of the kitchen. Naruto looked condescendingly at her brother as he carefully sealed the gift back into the scroll and took up the sink. The girl went and changed into a dark orange sleeveless blouse with a stand-up collar, tying her waist with a wide black fabric belt in the manner of an obi. Seals with expanded space were perfectly hidden in the folds of the belt as soon as you put a little chakra inside with your hand, the kunai ended up in your palm. Under her blouse she wore simple black breeches with an attached pouch where she kept several small empty scrolls and ink, and her hair was braided into a familiar spikelet, allowing casual bangs to fall over her dark forehead. The dishes below became suspiciously quiet, and Uzumaki went down to the exit, where Sasuke was already waiting for her. The path to Yamada's shop was close it was located on the clan's shopping street, along with a string of other shops and guest houses. Life on the streets was in full swing, everyone respectfully greeted the head and heir, kindly inquiring about their health and success. Still, Naruto did the right thing. In the first month after the massacre, things suddenly became overwhelming. And while it turned out to be easy to agree on the transfer of the encryption department to the police building at the suggestion of the clearly satisfied Shikaku Nara, the creation of the administrative center stalled at first. The idea proposed in general terms was received with a bang, but the moment of implementation caused confusion. Everyone understood something different about this, trying to express their ideas. Then Naruto sat at the clan council feeling like she was in an academy class, where stupid children were trying to prove they were right. Fortunately, the old Hokage quickly calmed the raging men, transferring authority, to one of the Jounin of the Nara clan. Under the leadership of Watabi Nara, surprisingly devoid of laziness, the idea quickly became a reality. On the ground floor, there was a citizen reception point, applications for low-rank missions were accepted here, and Genins received them here so as not to get in the way in the residence. At another table, complaints about interruptions in public services were received, repairs to drains, sewers, central heating and other things were lost on the floors of the residence, so people often had to solve these issues on their own. And so, a team of workers created in parallel immediately responded to the call and this meant additional jobs for civilian men and gratitude from the residents. Petty thefts and domestic conflicts were resolved on the floor above by a special detachment of Chunin, which from fond memory was called the police, although the village patrol was still given over to the care of the residents. Nearby, always littered with piles of papers, were extras and those responsible for documentation, here they conducted the population census, here they submitted documents about marriage, the birth of a child, moving, and issued a temporary residence permit if someone decided to move to Kanoha. In general, the creation of such an administrative center solved many issues, and most importantly, it gave a chance for a good job to those who did not feel the desire to become ninjas, but wanted to be useful. Here those who suffered on the mission found themselves, became unsuitable as shinobi, finding themselves in the back rows along with their trauma and the memory of unfulfilled dreams. Naruto then ran around, looking for each such ninja, respectfully asking him to enlist as ordinary shinobi. Their faces brightened, they were pleased to be needed among people, who sincerely thanked them for the slightest work. So in Kanoha, they began to value not only active shinobi, which Naruto was sincerely happy about. The next problem was the two weapons shops that the Echihas ran, almost taking over this entire niche. She kindly rented out the shops, for use, to the Yamada family, but took their word to place a second one on the clan's territory. Old man Ano Yamada was a simple shinobi who, in his old age, 
decided to start a small business with the support of his only daughter. The small shop huddled on the main street of Kanoha, crushed by two giants of the Echiha clan, which the Yamadas happily took over, giving away at least 70% of the total income every month. Naruto was ready to reduce the price even to half, but the principled old man could not afford to blatantly take advantage of the kindness of the clan head. Moreover, the assortment of the shop expanded with the help of Naruto, the girl was able to consistently produce several simple ceiling scrolls and more complex grocery scrolls, which sold like hot cakes. The old man even began to accept pre-orders, but warned that the master could not issue them so quickly. The head of the Echiha clan received a good scolding from Kurama overnight when she was able to issue twenty such scrolls, having spent almost the entire main reserve. The fox grumbled about the cosmic stubbornness of some restless Uzumaki, but he shared his chakra, for which Naruto was grateful. By the end of the third month of such intense work, Uzumaki had completely driven herself, to which Kakashi reacted in a very atypical way, he brought two ANBU to bow to her, who were about to leave the service. Wanting a quiet life Fortunately for Naruto, both had an average chakra reserve and excellent control, so Boku and Mina became ordinary shop workers, adopting the ingenious science of compiling such scrolls, which significantly freed up the time of the Uzumaki herself. The last stage of Perestroika was permission from the Hokage to build several guest houses and hotels with reasonable prices on the clan's territory. And near the hotels of the village, shopping stalls with various tinsel and mini grocery rows and assorted eateries quickly grew up. So, for four years, the streets of the Echiha clan forgot about troubled times, washing away the smell of blood and thirst along with the rain, the menacing whispers subsided and suspicious looks disappeared. All that remained were red and white mons on the once grey walls and a bright memory. Good morning, Echiha-san, Sasuke Kuen, Shikaku greeted when he saw them. Good, Nara-san, Naruto answered, breaking out of her memories. Really, how many times have I asked you to call me Naruto, the girl smiled, I didn't like being reminded that she was an Achiha, because by blood she was an Uzumaki, and in life she was just Itachi's wife. To work? The blonde asked politely. Of course, the man confirmed. I wanted to say that I was pleasantly surprised by the outcome of yesterday's game, a smile touched his face. Shikamaru was very pleased. I'm glad to hear, the girl laughed, involuntarily ruffling the top of her brother's head. Today they will officially become genin, so everything is in their hands. You're right. May I invite you to attend the tea ceremony tomorrow? Inoichi will be there with his wife and daughter, and Shikamaru has long wanted to play shogi with Sasuke, Shikaku suggested, winking at Sasuke. Thank you very much, we will be happy to visit your home. Naruto bowed respectfully, followed by the Echiha. Then, see you later, the man said and headed further down the street. I don't like playing with Shikamaru, the guy admitted, looking at the cheerful Uzumaki. I can't win, he pouted childishly. Know how to lose, brother, the girl laughed, pushing the door of the shop. Good morning, Ano-san. If Sasuke had been told that someone could replace his brother, he would not have listened to this crazy person. Itachi was for him the center of a small universe, a goal that always ran ahead. The brother was able to outshine his father and mother, filling life with imaginary meaning, which seemed right to him. He trained to become the best, to surpass everyone, but then Naruto appeared and asked a simple question, why? Why force if there is no use for it? And Sasuke set out to protect those who are dear to him, for now, childishly, slightly naively. I already involuntarily looked up to my sister, because she was simple and understandable. Do you want a workout? Fine. Have a question? Ask. Do you doubt anything? Sit down, I'll listen and help. He didn't hear, next time from her. And Itachi could only smile sadly and look with the same black eyes. Perhaps he simply did not know how to communicate with children because with the same Naruto he perfectly found a common language, but the fact remained a fact, Naruto was able to replace his family. Sometimes Sasuke was angry with his brother, could not understand his action, he abandoned his loved one, limited himself to short notes, left his sister alone in the middle of the blood-red clan. 
The bodies of his parents still appeared in his dreams, but they did not evoke fear, only a stingy pity that everything could have been different. Naruto, at such moments, smiled condescendingly and repeated what happened is irreversible. Sasuke obediently nodded his head and moved on with his life, trying not to look back. And Naruto lived on, but life was hard for her. The Uchiha was surprised, where does she have so much strength? The girl kept up with everything, she prepared breakfast, accompanied him to the academy, then rushed to the weapons shop to make several scrolls. The tip of the blonde braid could also be seen on the floors of the administrative center, which was simply called the center by the people. Rushing around there with complaints from residents, smiling at everyone and feeding employees home-cooked food. And after lunch, she returned to the clan, where she did not hesitate to work in the guesthouse gardens and helped with any problem. And despite everything, she found time to train with him, with Kakashi and Ai, or herself, reading her favorite Uzumaki scrolls. Naruto's amazing older sister. The class was noisy and Irika sensei was absent so Sasuke sat down next to the dozing Shikamaru. Come tomorrow? He asked, without even opening his eyes. Yeah, Sasuke confirmed, watching Ino bicker with Sakura. I hope Ino won't behave as usual in front of her parents. What can you do? Nara chuckled, smiling sarcastically, if you have that effect on girls. It hurts, the Uchiha snorted, dodging the glances of the notorious girls. Irika sensei entered the classroom, thereby calming the hubbub of the excited genin. He smiled welcomingly and began to read out the list of commands. Those who worried Sasuke had not yet formed teams, although Naruto secretly whispered that the lineups would be the same as yesterday. There was just one thing that confused him, he was on a team with Ten Ten, who had been a genin for a year already. Team number 7, Irika's voice sounded, Achiha Sasuke and Haruno Sakura. Team 8. Irika Sensei. Sasuke and Sakura interrupted him at the same time. There are three people on the team, the Uchiha finished for two. Your third will come with your sensei, the teacher explained patiently, returning to the lists. Hyuga Hinata, Aburame Shino, Inazuka Kiba, Irika announced the composition of the eighth team. Sasuke fell silent, turning to Shikamaru, who was also confused. I thought that Hugo would be sent to your team, the boy said, nodding at the pale guy at the next desk, but fell silent when he heard the composition of his tenth team. Well, everything is expected here, he yawned, winking at the pleased Akimichi. Who can be on our team, but not study at the academy? Asked the Echiha, but the distribution had already ended, and Irika released everyone for lunch, after which the mentors would come. Sasuke Kuen, a thin voice said behind him as the two teams left for lunch, leaving the Echiha alone with Sakura. Maybe we can have lunch together? The girl timidly suggested. The brunette reluctantly agreed, following the pleased girl to the roof of the academy. In general, Sakura was a good girl when they were in a big company, but alone with Sasuke, she did not give up trying to please the boy. If friendship with the others was at first considered for the Echiha as beneficial connections in the future, then over time he recognized them as friends, valuing each in his own way. But Haruno and their company stood out only for her good control and marks, but in herself she was an ordinary clanless girl. Ino brought her into their narrow circle, promising everyone that Sakura would still prove herself, although Sasuke did not see much progress, perhaps she studied excellently, but in practice she lagged behind. And today she was even calmer, asked about his impressions of the distribution, and treated him to a homemade bento, but Naruto's cooking still tasted better. What is Naruto-san's rank? Sakura asked him after finishing lunch, they sat on the steps on the roof, enjoying the fresh air. Sasuke tensed, trying to remember if he had ever asked his sister for this information. He remembered well that Kakashi and Ai was a jounin, like his brother once, but Naruto could not remember his official rank. I don't know, the Echiha drawled. When we met, she didn't go on missions, and after the wedding, too. Is she a genin? The girl asked, staring at the guy in surprise. She's already 16, right? Probably, Sasuke was completely confused, realizing that he didn't even know her exact age. 
Of course, they celebrated her birthday on the 10th of October, with her family and Itachi, with Kakashi and a noisy crowd of her jonin friends. However, there were never candles on the birthday cake, no one talked about age, and my mother, which I remember well, warned that asking a girl about her age was indecent. Do not you know? Haruno asked again, but fell silent, noticing the guy's angry look. The awkward silence was broken by the voice of a man who landed right in front of them. Here is my team, Kakashi said cheerfully, leaning on the iron fence. We have to wait for the third, but maybe you can introduce yourself in the meantime, hmm. He suggested, looking slyly at the cheerful Uchiha. Maybe you are the first? Sakura timidly suggested the man was unfamiliar to her. Hi, he agreed, folding his arms over his chest. My name is Kakashi Hitaki. I like a lot and don't like a lot, the mentor said in an even voice, watching Sasuke hide his smile behind his folded hands. My dream. You don't need to know about it, but I have even more hobbies, Kakashi finished, giving the floor to Sakura. Um, the girl was taken aback, moving away from the peculiar acquaintance, I'm Sakura Haruno. I love, Sakura began, flushed, um. It doesn't matter, but my dream, she became completely embarrassed, glancing at the imperturbable Sasuke. What don't you like? Asked the sensei, mentally wishing the younger, Uchiha, great luck, with the obsessive fan. I don't know, the kunoichi, shrugged. Probably feeling useless, she said quietly, making Kakashi nod understandingly, this could be a good motivation for development. Okay, the man concluded, good-naturedly, turning his gaze to the guy. And you? I am Sasuke Echiha, he began. I love training and learning something new, I don't like arrogance, weakness, and cowardice, the experienced Jounin noticed how Sakura's fists clenched. My dream is simple, to help restore my clan and hit one person, Kakashi chuckled at such a peculiar dream yet Sasuke was angry with his brother. Well, everything is clear to me, said the man, seeing an old acquaintance on a tree branch. And here is the third member of your team, Hataki announced, enjoying the sight of the children's surprised faces as a satisfied Naruto sat down between them. Hello everyone, her voice reeked of fun and laughter, but she steadfastly ignored her brother's disgruntled pug, my name is Naruto Uchiha Uzumaki. I love one person, she began, smiling warmly but I don't love arrogance, weakness, and cowardice," the girl repeated after her brother. And the dream. To raise Sasuke to be a good person, Naruto giggled. Sister. The brunette could not stand the indignation, rising to his feet. So far it's not going well, the blonde added, sadly shaking her bright head. Everything is clear, Kakashi waved his palm, urging the guys to calm down. Since someone yesterday already revealed the essence of my test, which I am conducting with new teams, Naruto smiled guiltily, winking slyly at Sasuke, tomorrow we will just have training. We can see how you work together as a team, the man said very seriously, looking at the cheerful Uchihas and the slightly confused Sakura. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning at the training ground, no delay. He cast one last glance at Uzumaki and disappeared into the Shunshin. You'll tell me everything, Sasuke warned, looking at his pleased sister as she touched the black hitai 8 tied on the top of her head. Hi, Sasuke, the girl nodded, following him up. Let's go, there are no groceries at home, and guests will come in the evening, the Uchiha nodded, but suddenly remembered the quiet Sakura. Try hard tomorrow, Sakura, he said, watching his teammates' instantly red face. See you tomorrow, Sakura-chan, Naruto waved her hand, jumping down from the roof. Haruno barely nodded, but as soon as Sasuke disappeared after his sister, she collapsed, feeling tears welling up in her throat. Kakashi wasn't late. I tried it once, but the dissatisfied Uzumaki quickly eradicated the bad habit by firing a couple of air bullets at her beloved Naya at the most inopportune moment. And now, at exactly eight in the morning, he stood in front of the newly formed team of Genin, looking from the collected Sasuke and the smiling Naruto to the confused Sakura. Well, let's get started, said Hitaki. Diving his hand into his pouch. Sakura and Sasuke tensed, instantly grabbing the kunai, 
and Naruto chuckled understandably, Kakashi and Ai took out his favorite book. Uh, no, he drawled. I decided that sparring with me will not bring you much benefit, the Uchiha family nodded understandingly, saying, we know, we know all your cunning techniques, Kakashi and Ai. That's why I called my colleague, who has a very developed competitive spirit. Naruto mentally groaned, knowing full well what kind of colleague she was called the Jounin. When did you manage to come to an agreement? The guys turned around, seeing another team appear at the training ground, a tall, dark-haired man in a bright green jumpsuit, a similar boy in an identical outfit, a calm guy from the Huga clan, and next to him a smiling brown-haired woman who easily waved her hand at her good friends. Guy, who would have thought that we would arrive earlier? Kakashi said, without looking up from his book. Kakashi, my eternal rival, an unprepared child like Sakura flinched at the loud voice full of enthusiasm, I'm sorry, but we were delayed on our way. But we are burning with youth, to begin our duel. Yes. His student responded energetically, looking at his idol with delight. Kakashi did not react in any way, and Naruto, to all this, only laughed, knowing full well how Gai-sensei loves to compete. Oh heyo, Gai-sensei, Naruto greeted, causing Sasuke to chuckle, he was familiar with the resilient enthusiasm of Kakashi and Ai's eternal rival, because Gai-sensei appeared at their house from time to time along with the rest of the group of Jounin who communicated well with his sister. Am I really going to see your team live? She asked jokingly, winking at 1010. It will be an honor for me to see our team's fight. He said, grabbing the disgruntled Hyuga, by the shoulder. You, Naruto-chan, should see Nijikuen in battle, he is a real genius, the guy did not share such aspiration, rolling his pale lavender eyes. Well, Kakashi stopped the flow of ranting, introduce yourself to each other, and let's begin. Naruto, the blonde said first, bowing lightly. This is Sasuke, and this is Sakura, the team bowed respectfully after them. I'm Niji, the long-haired brown-haired man said, clearly dissatisfied with everything that was happening. 1010, he pointed his hand at the girl, who also bowed, and Rock Lee, the boy copy of Guy sensei smiled widely, raising his voice. I hope that the training will bring us a lot of useful things. He blurted out. They only became genin yesterday, Hyuga noted, looking at his mentor with displeasure. Is it worth wasting energy? We'll see, Sasuke spat, already planning his opponent. So, sir, Kakashi looked away from the book, your task for today, each team will have three flags, he pulled out several pieces of red and blue fabric from his vest pocket, handing them to the guys. Naruto grabbed the red ones, giving the blue ones, dissatisfied Hyuga. We need to hide these flags around the perimeter of the training ground red ones on the right side, blue ones on the left. Within an hour, you need to find all the enemy flags, and most importantly, not lose yours. Restrictions in battle? Sasuke clarified, watching the arrogant Niji. Nothing, Hataki shrugged, glancing at Naruto, who nodded understandingly, no fuen, no fuen. Five minutes to hide the flags, then back here. Guy announced, but noticing the guy's obviously pleased faces, he added, Hyuga and Achiha will stay here and won't peep. The two geniuses of their clans pouted, causing the girls to laugh quietly, but obeyed, glaring at each other. Naruto waved her hand at Sakura as she ran off towards the dense forest. Why did Sasuke and Niji stay? She asked, jumping from branch to branch. Well, Sasuke Kuen has Sharingan, Haruno answered, thoughtful. And Niji has a Byakugan like Hinata-chan. That's right, the blonde praised her. So, there is no particular point in this hide-and-seek. We'll quickly find the flags, Sakura brightened, understanding the meaning of the task. Yeah, Uzumaki chimed in. There are only three options here, the blonde began, stopping at a fallen oak tree. The first one is that we go into a defensive position, allowing them to find our masonry and protect the flags here. She hid all three flags in the roots of the tree. Second, we do the opposite and attack first. And the third? Asked the pink-haired one. We fight somewhere in the middle, distracting them, and one of us, who is difficult to notice, Naruto looked meaningfully at Sakura, making her embarrassed, quickly captures the flags. I. 
Sakura, Uzumaki interrupted her gently, now we work as a team, which means you can no longer think about yourself, but think about us. We can't cope without you, the girl winked, running out into the clearing where Guy and Sasuke's team was already waiting. Begin. Dai waved his hand and disappeared into the Shunshin along with Kakashi. The Gen and team stood opposite each other, choosing the same strategies to fight right here. Sasuke did not wait, attacking Hyuga first, drawing his favorite katana from the seal by the wrist. Hyuga dodged, pushing back towards his territory, trying to knock the weapon out of the Echiha's hands. Naruto and Lee came together in Tai nearby, having a similar style, yet they studied with the same sensei. Takahashi also did not hesitate, showering Sakura with a heap of weapons from one scroll, half of which Haruno was able to fight off with a kunai, but missed several, receiving a couple of shallow cuts. Naruto created two clones, distracting Ten Ten, thereby giving Sakura a chance to retreat. Sasuke, the blonde called her brother, taking on one of the clones of a disgruntled Hyuga who was dodging air bullets. Team 7 gained a few minutes of time with the help of the Uzumaki clones, managing to discuss a short plan. Then, Sasuke launched a fireball into the crowd of spears and the other team, fueled by a stream of air from Naruto. The clones disappeared, and Guy's team was able to dodge, retreating even further into their territory. Niji folded his hands into several figures, giving an unknown signal to his teammates and then Ten Ten launched two scrolls at the opponents, paper dragons surrounded the trio, releasing kunai right at the target. But to the surprise of the genin, these were clones that instantly dispersed. Niji, do you see them? Rock Lee shouted, looking around. Hyuga activated the Byakugan, noticing several pockets of chakra on the other side, Naruto distributed it evenly between the clones so that even the vaunted Byakugan could not find out where the original was. Nearby, he could see a very weak focus of that clanless girl, and also on their territory, he was able to sense the presence of an Achiha, which aroused in him the anticipation of victory. They are on their territory, he announced to the team. Most likely, they are preparing traps to drive us in. Lee, you go to our flags, just in case, and Ten Ten and I go to them. Hi, the guy agreed, instantly rushing off to the stream where they hid the flags. Niji focused on the road ahead in order to be the first to notice the prepared trap, a swarm of kunai rushed towards them from the right side, which Ten Ten easily repulsed with a counter stream. The Echiha's chakra was approaching, forcing Niji to push harder from the branch in order to strike the brunette with the first blow, knocking out a couple of tenketsu in the shoulder. Sasuke leaned back, but Naruto caught him, preventing him from falling. Something is weak for an Echiha heir. Hyuga chuckled, looking at the angry guy who suddenly changed his grin to a satisfied smile. I'm sorry, he answered condescendingly as the clone behind him disappeared. Take a closer look at your flags, advised the Echiha, also dispelling. What is it, Niji? Ten Ten asked, looking at her angry teammate. Hyuga looked back towards the center, seeing that the entire seventh team and Lee had gathered there. He remained silent to Takahashi's question, rushing back to the wide clearing. The opposing team looked at him, contentedly waving their blue flags, and he was especially angry at the sight of the proud Achiha. Niji Kuen, Naruto said, Unfortunately, you were too distracted by me and Sasuke, not noticing that Sakura ran in your direction immediately after the fireball. TCH, Hyuga responded, turning away from the girl's instructive gaze, but the sensei came into the clearing. Well done, Kakashi, praised his friends, good job, guys. Kakashi, Guy said in a serious tone, which caused a grin on Hitaki's face, your team turned out to be stronger. But we will not give up and will take revenge. A serious flame lit up in his eyes, which was passed on to his student. They are always like this, Ten Ten whispered sadly, waving her palm towards Guy and Lee, who seemed to have already begun to prepare for revenge. Hi hi, Hataki nodded, without looking away from his book. It's time for you, he said. Ten Ten said goodbye to the familiar company, and Hyuga only gave them an arrogant look. Well, we'll continue training, Kakashi breathed, putting the book in his pouch. Sakura, the sensei turned to the pink-haired girl, try walking up the tree, and then, through the water. 
Sasuke, I need to tighten the zipper and I'll show you the new Ken with the sword, the Uchiha nodded obediently, taking out the katana from the seal. And we, Naruto, will probably test your weakness to Jinjutsu? The man chuckled, creating three clones for each. Ready? Hi, Kakashi Sensei, came the voice of the satisfied Genin. Itachi looked around the area where they decided to spend the night on their way to Hidden Stone. Kisame had just thrown a few dry branches into the fire, sending a shower of sparks into the night sky, and then sat down in front of the fire. Itachi Senpai, in this wilderness, there is not even an animal, let alone a person, he drawled, watching the Echiha sit down opposite. Caution is never too much, the brunette answered calmly, staring into the smoldering coals. You are always so calm, which surprises me, Kisame chuckled, throwing him an apple from his bag even Nikonins are hungry. There is no peace in our lives, Hashigake noted philosophically, taking a large bite, and then, grimaced. Sweet. Calmness is nothing more than proper order and thoughts, Itachi quoted the ancient wisdom, examining the red ripe apple that flickered in the light of the fire. And I have no more thoughts, the man snorted, throwing the bitten fruit into the bushes, only about work and that's all. Pain wants to collect the tailed ones, the Echiha began, looking up at his colleague, why? I told you, Kisame waved his hand, he needs chakra for the technique. What is this technique that requires the chakra of all the tailed beasts? The brunette chuckled, inhaling the smell of a sweet apple, the same ones he brought to Naruto, even before the wedding. I don't know, the swordsman shrugged. Why do you care, senpai? Their goals are very vague, they're clearly hiding something, Itachi breathed. The top? Kisame nodded understandingly. So it's clear that pain won't tell everything, we are just a tool to achieve a goal. Did you want such a life? The brunette asked, looking into his partner's non-human eyes. Which of us wanted to? The man answered the question with a question. Are they fanatics, like Haydn or Kakuzu, and so, I also thought that I would become a good shinobi for my village, but lies and deceptions have so consumed this world that it has become too dangerous to trust. Who am I telling, Itachi-senpai, don't you know what betrayal is, huh? Kisame chuckled, pushing the memories away. I went my own way, different from my family, out of personal convictions, the brunette said, turning his gaze to the starry sky. The villages used us as weapons, Hashigake spat, he was one of the Akatsuki who knew the truth about the massacre of the Echiha clan. If I didn't want this, I would have found a way, the Echiha objected softly. I had other priorities. And which ones? Kisame became interested. Kisame, the brunette began seriously, if I tell you the whole truth, will you help me achieve my goal? The red light of the Sharingan flashed menacingly in the darkness of the forest. If I say no, then a disastrous outcome will await us, the swordsman grinned. Well, tell me about your vision of the world. These are all memories. They are bright, full of life and happiness. Forever in his memory under seven seals. But also in his memory is the last mission, the enemy ambush and the dull, aching pain in his leg, which forever deprived him of the chance to preserve his father's good name. The mother smiled, complained that she had lost weight and became haggard, and then cried quietly in the kitchen, thinking that the sensitive hearing of a shinobi would not be able to catch how she was blaming Kami for what shinobi life had done to her family. They forgot about him, respectfully avoided him and left him alone with a dull ache in his leg. A meager allowance and their mother's pension kept them afloat. Yungo honestly tried to find additional income, but everyone turned their nose up, yes, they are grateful for the service and sacrifice, but, alas, there is no work. The mother's stupid desire also cut in a painful way, what kind of grandchildren are there if not a single woman looks at the cripple? His father's grave beckoned to him every day, he spent a long time looking at the stone tombstones, trying to understand the value of life. The meaning slipped away, like time, events rushed past him, perceived barely on the periphery in the deliberately cheerful voice of his mother who was telling the latest gossip and rumors. He didn't even raise an eyebrow when he heard that the heir of the Echiha clan had killed his entire family. I couldn't stand it, I broke down, that's the price of the notorious genius, 
when too much power ends up in the wrong hands. The mother wailed something that only the killer's wife and brother were left alive, but that he didn't care about the children. Maybe it's for the better, now they'll understand how much crap there is in adult life, they'll come to their senses and stop playing shinobi. This is definitely not a place for children. Yungo closed himself in his world, lazily observing the village through a small crack, brushing aside his persistent teammates, who had already become Jounin in their twenties. He smiled tightly, nodding sparingly to his friends, who tactfully did not notice the lame steps, deliberately slowing down so that it would not be obvious how slowly he was crawling. In the end, they laughed louder to drown out Yungi's heavy breathing, and then they talked about the wife of that same Uchiha. Like, the girl gives, wiped her nose at the council of clans with all the men, and is up to something with Nara in the police building. Yunga waved it off, what did he care, they wouldn't accept him into the police, and he wasn't interested in the affairs of some other people's wives, or already widows. She will go out yet, just let her get to know all the crap of adult life better. And he began to hear something about her too often. The Blood Red Clan suddenly opened its doors, inviting everyone to rent plots on their territories, building hotels and additional onsens even the mother found work there, albeit in the kitchen, but in a good team. She came home from work happy, full of incomprehensible joy. Ah, Naruto-san mom sighed, commemorating the notorious mistress of the Echiha clan with a kind word. Yunga was angry until the culprit of the latest rumors and gossip came to visit them. The guy nodded dryly, hoping to go to his room, to hide from the radiant blue eyes. But she came precisely to him, so the mother had to hide, leaving her angry son alone with the head of the entire clan. She asked a completely simple question, does he want to work? Yungo felt his fists clenching from the wave of indignation that boiled up in him like a stormy stream. Without having time to throw a couple of caustic words at the girl, he fell silent from her speech. He looks barely fourteen or fifteen, but in his eyes, there is the understanding and wisdom of an old man. Yungo felt like her words were opening a purulent wound on his soul with a sharp blade, a completely sincere smile cleanses out all the dirt, and an understanding look stitches up the soul. Yungo feels the desired peace that the girl placed in him by an unknown force. He is silent, without saying anything, she just looked into his eyes and found out everything herself. Maybe she learned terrible genjutsu from her rebellious husband? Placed him in an illusion? How else can one explain that the unsociable Yungo is sitting at the first meeting of the newly created administrative center, cautiously looking around? Half of them are the same beaten wolves that crawled into the light. And the tip of the light braid kept up everywhere. She came almost every day, helped with the slightest problem and behind her was a black-haired tail that shot eyes at anyone who once again lingered on the thin figure of her sister. I brought them lunches, small boxes of homemade bento, which sold out with a bang. Whoever was bolder asked for his hand in marriage, to which the blonde laughed it off, saying, you need my hands. And in the eyes, there is melancholy. He never said, thank you. He didn't thank him for the work that gave him more than earnings. He no longer forced a smile in the company of his teammates, no longer suppressed the desire to tell a story, but happily shared the everyday life of an ordinary employee of the center. And even though the work was not the feat of his whole life, the faces of the grateful citizens who greeted him on the street, recognizing Yungo San, gave him the desired peace. His father's grave became not a place of self-flagellation, but a tribute to the other paths that a shinobi can take. Now his path is a modest job at the center, and it's unlikely that anything can replace the loud laughter of Deo at the next table, the funny stories of Keiko on the floor below, and even more so the rare bento from the amazing Naruto. She came to their floor to take on missions with the team. Then he was very surprised to learn that the girl was still a genin, but he nodded understandingly, maybe she was in no hurry, but now, for sure, it was her time. And yet, she grew up and became even more beautiful, forcing the entire first floor to turn their necks after the tip of her braid, but no one dared to just ask for her hand in marriage. It's no longer a joke, the mourning for her husband passed, although there was no officially confirmed death. Everyone just forgot whose wife she was. Mom encouraged him to court him, building castles in the air, 
but Youngo pulled himself back, where did he belong, not a mate and all that. But he bought the bouquet, steadfastly enduring the chirping of the young Yamanaka, who helped to collect the bouquet, a white gerbera, like a desire to make a compliment, a delicate bell, a kind of gratitude, and a bright spot red freesias, which loudly declared the man's bright feelings. Yamanaka swore that any kunoichi could easily read such a hidden message. And I wasn't mistaken, thought Yungo, watching Naruto run his dark finger over the fragile petals of the freesias. Yungo san, she smiled, after a short silence, I'm sorry, but the freesias that my husband gave me have not faded yet, the blonde braid swayed guiltily, and a light exhalation escaped from his chest and they will never wither, I hope you understand me? The girl looked away embarrassed. I'm sorry if I offended you, the man bowed respectfully, heading towards the exit from the restroom. I just ask you to keep the flowers for yourself, without looking for unnecessary meaning in them. He wasn't upset. It's impossible next to her. Ten Ten sighed, sadly, wiping the counter of the shop where she worked part-time in her spare time. Yamada-san was writing something down on a long scroll, checking the numbers on the paper, but he noticed the dissatisfied pug of the young assistant. What's happened? The man asked directly, looking at the slightly confused Kunoichi, who was trying to find words. Yamada-san, do you know how old Naruto-san is? The brown-haired woman blurted out, staring at the old man. The man laughed briefly, returning to the scroll, but answered. Of course I do, he said, filling out this month's sales form. Nanny? Ten Ten squeaked, clutching a rag in her hands. And they didn't say? Did you ask? Ano-san retorted, without looking up from his papers. So what if she's actually twelve? How? The girl was surprised. It turns out that I'm a whole year older than her. But she has more skills, doesn't she? Yamada noted, casting a reproachful glance at the drooping Takahashi. Yes, said the Kunoichi, turning to the stand with the scrolls. Still, she has no equal in Fuen, Ten Ten pouted funny. She's an Uzumaki, the man explained condescendingly. It's in their blood, but you can master Fuen too, just be patient. Boku and Mina are not Uzumaki, but they work with seals and scrolls. I know, she nodded sadly, returning to the counter. Naruto-san agreed to show me the basics for grocery shopping, although she said it was too early to do it, admitted Ten Ten. And you're right, said the old man. Still, this is a complex scroll that requires a lot of control, but if she agreed to show you the basics, then, Yamada scolded with his finger, looking at the perked-up girl, who herself understood the meaning. I understand, Takahashi nodded, her gaze catching on her watch. Oh, I'm already late. The kunoichi caught herself, putting the rag in the back room, and ran out of the store, waving her hand to the old man. She ran to the residence, where the team was waiting for her to take on the mission, but on the way, Tenten -ten noticed Boku and Mina. She wanted to say hello, but stopped short, noticing that they were holding hands. The girl was taken aback, looking away from the walking couple, and then smiled widely. These shop workers seemed too serious to her and almost devoid of emotions, but it turned out that even former ANBU were able to smile so easily, look at each other so tenderly, in the end, they had a chance to be happy. Sakura rushed nearby, waving at her friend in greeting. The pink-haired girl was heading to the center, at the hospital she was given a certificate that she was an ordinary student of the ironing courses, and such information should have been entered into the genin's personal file. She was just in time for an afternoon training session with Sasuke and Team 10, who were looking for test subjects to practice a couple of team moves. Sakura quickly wanted to tell Naruto and Sasuke that she had signed up for the ironing course, Kakashi-sensei kindly whispered to her about this opportunity without looking up from his favorite book. Only three people attended them, since the requirements for students were high, proper control and excellent memory to remember huge amounts of information only a small fraction. But Sakura was ready to stay up at night, just to become useful on her team. The center, as always, was noisy. She bowed respectfully to the sensei of the eighth team and waved her hand to the genin who were just taking on a mission. Having given the certificate to the smiling Deo-san, 
She was about to leave, but the man asked worriedly. Are you feeling well? He looked at the red face of the girl, who involuntarily reached out with her hand to her forehead it was hot. Drink some water and go home, the man advised, pointing to the restroom. We need healthy Jenin, especially since you are a future medic, Deo smiled widely, easily pushing her towards the room, and he went off to the next visitor. Sakura sighed, deciding, nevertheless, to drink water, and decide, during training, whether to go home. She timidly opened the door, hoping that she would not disturb anyone, but froze when she saw the familiar tip of a blonde braid inside. A man stood in front of Naruto, handing her a bouquet of bright red freesias, the girl flushed even more, rushing out of the center building. Burning shame grew in my chest from seeing something I shouldn't have. Her feet led her to the training ground, where the guys were already waiting. Lobastic, Eno drawled, looking at her friend with concern, why is it so red, like a poppy flower? She touched her large forehead, screaming indignantly. Kamisama, Sakura, you're on fire. Go home and go to bed immediately. Mabuki-san will give you a drink if you get even sicker. Let's go, I'll take you there. Stay, Eno. Sasuke's voice rang out as he approached Haruno. This is your team training. So I will lead Sakura. Ino fell silent, pouting her lips like a king, to give her rival such a chance. But Shikamaru quickly calmed her guts, by tugging on her snow-white tail, which made the girl wave her hand towards the genin of Team 7. The Uchiha nodded to the phlegmatic Nara, who had been listening to the blonde's lamentations, and turned towards the village. Sasuke Kuen, the girl said timidly, mincing next to her, it's not worth it, I can walk there myself. We are a team, so I can't let you faint somewhere, the guy chuckled, not feeling the usual irritation from the company of his teammate. They were silent, each thinking about his own, but the Uchiha caught several timid glances, clearly Haruno was very interested in something, but she was afraid to ask. Are you worried about something? He asked, unable to stand the impending silence. Um, Sakura said timidly, blushing even more. Don't think about it, I didn't do it on purpose, she muttered, causing Sasuke to smile slightly. So, I was in the center and accidentally saw how one man gave Naruto San Frigia, Haruno squeezed out, looking at the calm brunette. They often give flowers to their sister, the guy shrugged. Do you know what Frigias mean? I know, the Uchiha nodded, turning his head somewhere to the side, which made Sakura fall silent. My brother always gave her freesias, he added after a short silence. Haruna was embarrassed, smiling knowingly. Sasuke continued to remain silent, but she did not dare to break the silence. They reached her house, and Sakura bowed gratefully, to which the Uchiha lazily waved his hand. One day they will give you freesia too, Sasuke suddenly said casting a last glance at his teammate. The girl widened her green eyes, following the guy who had already managed to jump onto the neighboring roof. The big forehead was burning, I don't know what caused it more either the temperature, or the red freesias had this effect. Hi, guys, Kakashi greeted, approaching the waiting team. Kakashi and I, I Naruto said displeasedly, I thought I had taught you not to be late. I was detained, the man justified, ruffling his silver hair. But I have good news, Hataki closed his eye, we were entrusted with a rank C mission, so let's go to the residence. Finally, Sasuke couldn't contain his satisfied smile, quite tired from weeding the gardens and walking the livestock. Interesting, Naruto said, glancing at her sensei. Sasuke and Sakura walked slightly ahead, which gave the Uzumaki a chance to whisper with Kakashi. Details? We'll find out from the Hokage, Hataki chuckled, walking next to him. Are you worried? As far as I know, we were the first to receive a promotion, the blonde said thoughtfully. Have you decided to give us a test? Denma whispered that the mission was outside the village, the man admitted as he approached the building. Even more interesting, the fox inside expressed his opinion about the situation in a very unflattering way causing the bearer to quietly laugh. Well, it's time for me to go outside of Kanoha, Uzumaki smiled. Kakashi nodded understandingly, letting the girl go ahead. The cramped corridors of the residence twisted, leading the seventh team to the Hokage's office, 
where Sarutobi was waiting for them. Hokage-sama, Team 7 has arrived, Kakashi reported, bowing respectfully. I'm glad to see you, the old man, smiled affably, and continued without hesitation. I thought you were already ready for a searing mission, which is why the village trusts you to guard one person. And who is it? Sasuke perked up, but outwardly remained unperturbed. Tazuna-san is a builder from the Land of Waves. Your task is to ensure the safety of the client on the way and during the construction of the bridge in his village, Haruzan explained. He will be waiting for you in half an hour at the main gate. Questions? Asked the Hokage, looking at the serious, Naruto against the background of the cheerful Sasuke and Sakura. No, Hataki bowed, and the team left the office. Did you all hear? He asked. Gather everything you need and we'll meet at the gate, the genin nodded. Heading towards the exit of the residence, but Naruto hesitated, casting a worried glance at the sensei. Tell me that everything will be fine, the girl smiled timidly, feeling how intuition was screaming in the guise of the red beast. You seem completely relaxed, Kakashi chuckled mockingly, but there was concern in his eyes. Don't worry, Sasuke is no longer a child, Sakura has grown noticeably in her skills, and you and I are not muslin young ladies, the mentor said, causing the blonde to laugh. Hi, Kakashi and I, I she agreed. Maybe everything will work out? Maybe everything would have worked out well, but two new kneem from the village of the Hidden Mist, tightly tied to a tree, clearly increased the ranks of the mission. Their employer, Tazuna-san, turned out to be an unkempt-looking man who had the audacity to call Naruto an overgrown genin. This, of course, caused a wave of indignation in Sasuke, but Kakashi asked the student to hold back his anger, reproaching the man for insulting the head of one of the founding clans. Naruto herself only smiled thinly at all this, amused by Kurama's comments inside and by the sight of her angry brother. Then the road was brightened by the quiet conversation of Naruto and Sakura, who were discussing the foundations and orders of the shinobi world, Haruno cheered up when she heard that there should be no shinobi opponents on a mission of such a rank. But Kurama caught a slight wave of fear from his employer, and the confused expression on his face added doubts to his treasury. Nodding to Hitaki at the puddle in the middle of the dusty road, Uzumaki said in a nonchalant tone. Oh, it's so hot today, she stretched deliciously, winking at Sasuke. It hasn't rained for so long. The puddle was left behind, but the next moment, sharp chains surrounded Kakashi, tearing the jounin into several pieces. Sakura gave a strangled cry, backing away to cover her employer, but Naruto appeared in front of her and Tazuna, drawing a kunai. The two shinobi with the hidden mist protector grinned, contentedly at the orphan genin, their hands bound by a long chain of shuriken that was attached to metal devices on their wrists. Sasuke launched the kunai directly into the chain, nailing it to the nearest tree, and secured it with a shuriken, and he lowered himself onto the outstretched hands of the shinobi, which were immobilized. Resting his hands on the strange metal gloves, he kicked both opponents, thereby tearing the chain from its attachment point. They quickly came to their senses, choosing Naruto as their target, who stood in front of Tazuna. One of them launched several kunai, which the Uzumaki easily repulsed and quickly made seals, releasing a powerful stream of air. The attackers were thrown back, where the Uchiha managed to tie them up, releasing the fishing line from the seal. Well done, said the satisfied voice of Kakashi, who suddenly appeared nearby. Kakashi-sensei, you are alive. Sakura squeaked, staring at her mentor. Show off, Sasuke snorted, not holding back his smile. I wanted to check your reaction, the man shrugged. Well, Sasuke and Naruto did a great job, they neutralized the enemy perfectly, the blonde smiled, winking at her brother. Sakura, you too, she covered the client and stayed behind, like a medic, the pink-haired girl nodded timidly, but remained silent. They are clearly chunin level, Naruto nodded towards the tied-up men. Their goal is not profit, and not us, which means, the blonde fell silent, turning her gaze to the confused Tazuna. I think we should find out the truth, Hataki said, putting his hands in his pockets. Tell me everything, otherwise we'll just go back to the village. Okay, the builder squeezed out, looking down. 
I'm being hunted by one of the richest people in the world, the shipowner Gato, Kakashi knew this name, and Tazuna continued, Gato is involved in drugs and smuggling, capturing more and more markets. A year ago, he seized control of all transport companies in the country of waves, and the one who rules the ships rules everything else, the treasury, the government everything. His voice reeked of indignation, which found a response somewhere inside Naruto. Only one thing can stop his power, a bridge. If it is completed, it will connect the island with the mainland, and his reign will come to a complete collapse, the man finished, looking at his guards. Naruto looked meaningfully at Kakashi, which made the man once again believe in the power of her intuition. He sighed heavily, but asked. If you knew what you were getting into, why didn't you tell us about it right away? The land of waves is a poor state, even our nobility is penniless, the reason turned out to be as simple as the world. And the poor people who are building the bridge cannot pay for specialists of the first or second level, it is too expensive for them. Therefore, I had to lie that this was a C rank mission, the architect, trying to press their pity, added, What do you care? So, what if my grandson bursts into tears? He will scream, Grandfather, where is my grandfather? And also a daughter who will curse the shinobi of the hidden leaf, because they left me and found her an eternal longing, Tazuna finished his heartfelt speech. Kakashi didn't even raise an eyebrow after listening to the builder's story, unlike Sakura, who was very embarrassed, feeling an obligation. Tazuna-san, Naruto said, you also shouldn't forget that we also have families who are waiting for us to return home, Uzumaki, of course, was lying, but the old man really wanted to repay the same coin. But, fortunately for you, we are responsible shinobi, and we see things through to the end, right? The blonde smiled. Hi, Sasuke responded, not wanting to lose this chance. Hi, Haruno answered a little timidly, but her teammate's confident look encouraged her. Naruto, seal these two, the sensei nodded towards the chunin who had not yet come to their senses. Get down. Naruto screamed heart-trendingly dragging Tazuna down with her at the moment a huge sword flew over their heads. The weapon stuck into a tree trunk, and a man landed on the hilt. His skin was a sickly gray, his face was hidden in bandages so that only his eyes were visible, dark, full of contempt for a bunch of short-lit genin, but their mentor was an old acquaintance from the Book of Bingo. Kakashi Sharingan, he said in a rough voice, jumping off the weapon and taking it out of the tree in one fell swoop. So this is the meeting, he drawled, glancing over the others. I need this old man, and the rest, alas, will end their shinobi careers today. Momochi Zabuza, Hataki recognized the enemy, raising his Hatai 8, which hit his Sharingan. Guard Tazuna, and he is mine. Kakashi, Naruto said menacingly, not wanting to be left behind, I won't leave you. Got a wife? Nukneen said mockingly, throwing his sword over his shoulder. Student, Kakashi chuckled, and then motioned to Naruto. Zabuza did not answer, creating a thick fog around the team, and released a powerful key that pinned Sakura, Sasuke, and Tazuna to the ground. Naruto reacted quickly, she formed a seal and released a stream of air, dispelling the fog. It turned out that it was just in time, since Zabuza had already swung a huge beheader at the sensei, but he managed to dodge. Didn't it work on you? Momochi narrowed his eyes, looking at the collected blonde. Your key is nothing, Uzumaki chuckled in tune with her beast. Nukmin grinned, literally flowing to the ground a water clone. Naruto shouted to her brother and Sakura to close the client, but Zabuza was already between them. However, Kakashi saw Momochi's jutsu and prevented the attack by plunging a kunai between his opponent's ribs. Sakura took a choked breath, Glad that her mentor was able to do it, but it turned out to be a water double again. The real killer was already behind the jounin, raising a healthy sword over Hataki's head. He dodged the blow, but was kicked in the chest and flew up. Hataki decided to hide in the lake, but the water turned out to be too dense, Zabuza used the water prison technique. Well, what, Sharingan Kakashi, will you do now? The killer bared his teeth, turning to the teenagers and Tazuna. Another water clone appeared in front of them. Impatiently clutching its weapon. Who should I kill first? Your favorite student? 
he asked, looking at Naruto. Sasuke, the blonde called quietly, try. The Uchiha was confused at first, but the meaning of his sister's words dawned on him, to which Hitaki shouted at them not to be heroes, but to leave. Naruto ignored the order, realizing that the sensei himself would never do that. Her clone replaced his brother in formation next to Sakura, and Sasuke himself ended up next to the blonde. She took out a Fuma shuriken from the seal on her wrist, throwing it to the Echiha, who, taking good aim, launched it at the enemy. The clone didn't even move when a large shuriken rushed past, but the original understood everything, he was the target. Clever, but not enough, Zabuza easily caught the weapon with one hand, while holding Kakashi in the water prison with the other. However, after one Fuma shuriken, another flew towards Momochi, hidden in the shadow of the first. Nukmin crouched down, about to jump, but the weapon instantly turned into a blonde, who, quickly making seals, hit him in the shoulder. The grip weakened, which Kakashi took advantage of to free himself from captivity, and a dull pain spread in his shoulder. Seal block, Uzumaki explained condescendingly. It temporarily blocks the flow of chakra in a certain area of the body, so you won't be able to make seals. Zabuza growled, grabbing his sword and swung at the leaf shinobi, but they managed to dodge, giving the Nukmin a chance to make his way to the other genin and Tazuna. Sasuke released a fireball that barely missed Momochi, but the swarm of kunai that Kakashi sent hit the renegade. He wheezed heavily, but stayed on his feet, and then collapsed to the ground. Naruto didn't realize why at first, until Hitaki nodded towards a nearby tree on a branch stood a short man wearing a mask of the oinen of the mist. Kakashi landed next to the body, feeling Zabuza's pulse. He's dead, Hitaki concluded, without taking his eyes off the unfamiliar shinobi. Thank you, he bowed respectfully. I have been hunting him for a long time, and now I will take his body to the hidden mist. Kakashi remained silent watching as the shinobi of the mist disappeared along with the Nukunin's body. Hataki turned to Naruto, who barely smiled, and then sank, feeling weak. Uzumaki picked up her mentor, gently lowering her to the ground. Sakura hurried to help, as the squad medic carried out a diagnosis and fed her a portion of restorative pills, but Shosen did not yet dare to use it. He's exhausted, Haruno said, looking at the blonde who patted her shoulder encouragingly. Well done, Sakura, the blonde praised, creating several clones. Tazuna-san, how long does it take to get to your house? Kakashi-sensei needs a rest, she asked, grabbing his arms. No, the man nodded, moving away, from the shinobi's fight, it's very close. Lead the way, Naruto ordered, turning her gaze, to her brother. Sasuke, cover from the front, Sakura, and Tazuna-san, I'm helping Kakashi. Still, we better send a message to Kanoha, the girl turned to Kakashi. This oinen haunts me. Hataki nodded, made the seals, and called a small dog to him, the Ninken Pakan. What do you want, Kakashi? He drawled displeasedly, looking at everyone with a condescending look. Will you deliver to Kanoha? It's urgent, the Jounin asked, while Naruto composed a short message on one of the scrolls. Hi, the Nin Ken agreed, allowing the blonde to tie a message to her paw. As soon as possible, Pakan added, jumping out the window. The guys are worried, Naruto grinned. You barely woke up, two days later. The Sharingan began to exhaust me even more, Hataki breathed, rubbing his tired eye. Thank you for the food, he thanked, watching the girl collect the empty dishes. Thank the lady of the house, the blonde laughed. Tsunami-san turned out to be a very kind woman, agreeing to feed a horde of genin and an adult jounin, said Uzumaki, while Kakashi pulled his favorite mask over his face. We need to buy groceries or catch something, the sensei scratched the top of his head thoughtfully. Sasuke has already caught fish, and Sakura went to the market, Naruto reported. It's time for Tazuna to go to construction, so stop lying around and let's get to work. Hi, the man agreed, rising from the futon. Let Sasuke go to the bridge with your clone, so that if something happens, we will know about the problems. Ano? What about Sakura and me? Uzumaki was surprised, opening the door of the room, behind which were the guilty pugs Haruno and Echiha. 
We're eavesdropping, then? Kakashi-sensei, the pink-haired girl squeaked and deftly made her way into the room, passing the surprised blonde, how are you? The girl was sincerely worried. Everything is fine, Sakura, the jounin smiled, thank you. I've almost recovered, so we'll train today. But how? She said indignantly, causing Naruto and Sasuke to laugh quietly. You shouldn't strain yourself. Everything is fine, Hataki repeated patiently, placing his palm on the pink crown of his head. It's time for us to work. Sasuke and clone Naruto, to the bridge, the original and Sakura with me, the mentor gave instructions. Hi, the genins agreed. The next day Naruto woke up before dawn. The house was filled with silence, everyone was still sleeping peacefully, and the girl quickly got ready and grabbed the basket that she had begged from Tsunami-san the day before. It may not be possible to visit the Land of Waves again, but I didn't want to pay cosmic sums for a bag of dried arnica in Kanoha, so picking a few supplies and sealing them in a scroll turned out to be a must. The owner of the house kindly told me where you can find the capricious plant, which is perfect for simple ointments and decoctions. Arnica is good for muscle pain, minor wounds, and cuts. Uzumaki is not a medic or an ironine, but every kunoichi should know simple compounds like this, especially with an active child in the house. Sasuke spent half of his childhood smeared in her homemade ointments, but he smelled like a fragrant meadow in the middle of summer. The clearing turned out to be small, but densely dotted with yellow flowers, which Naruto was carefully collecting in a basket, but suddenly she caught a slight surge of chakra. It wasn't the best sensor, but due to the Uzumaki genes and the presence of Kurama, someone else's chakra could be felt inside. Faint and blurry, but well-known people, like her brother, Kakashi, and the horde of genes that radiated chakra in all directions she could easily smell from a short distance. In a neighboring clearing, a stranger was also collecting plants, bending graciously over medicinal herbs. Hello, the blonde said, looking at the stranger, a beautiful face with delicate girlish features, only the barely noticeable Adam's apple on the swan's neck gave away her gender. Good morning for getting ready. Yes, the guy agreed, putting the prickly branches of milk thistle into the basket. Milk thistle oil has a wound healing and anti-burn effect. I didn't know, Uzumaki admitted, picking the flowers she needed. Previously, I only made decoctions for poisoning, and then I completely switched to mint and plantain. I see, he nodded, looking up at the blonde. Are you a shinobi? The guy asked, glancing at the pouch with the weapon. Yes, Naruto nodded. And you like being a shinobi? He looked straight into the eyes, not even trying to play around. I don't know, the girl answered honestly, smiling at the tips of her lips. I didn't have much of a choice whether to become or not, and as a shinobi, it's easier for me to achieve my goal. Do you have a goal? The stranger asked, interestedly. Every shinobi should have a goal that justifies his strength, Uzumaki answered evasively. Otherwise, the force will be meaningless, the guy smiled, nodding his head lightly. And my goal is to become the head of my village in order to change this world for the better. You have a very bright dream, her interlocutor praised her. I just want to protect the person I care about, you know? He smiled a sad smile, which made her heart tremble, reminding her of one such dear person. I understand, Naruto nodded. Mentally accepting the inevitable. The stranger rose to his feet, holding an almost full basket in his hands, and bowed respectfully. A slight smile played on his lips, and the morning sun played in his long dark hair. The next time we see each other, please don't hesitate, he said before leaving the clearing. Naruto smiled, lamenting how beautiful the faces were hidden under the oinen masks. Haku considered himself a silent weapon in the hands of a master. A thin and sharp blade that pierces the bodies of enemies. His soul went against his deeds, striving for peace, but his hands obediently plunged into the blood. The ice he created became his prison, where he slid between the mirrors, reflecting himself as a terrible monster to his enemies. And in the reflection of the ice I saw my father's tears as he killed his mother. Zabuza-san was always silent, gloomily looking at the stranded orphan, but did not drive him away. 
He grew and taught his wisdom, not book wisdom, but life wisdom. Haku smiled, feeling needed, even for a demon like Zabuza. And yet he was too soft, kind-hearted, which was not at all suitable for one of the mercenaries. He did not like to kill his enemies, he tried to inflict as little damage as possible, often knocking them out with a precise blow from a sharp sanban. Arriving at the ill-fated bridge with Sabuza, he did not expect to see children who, in all seriousness, were going to protect the builder. The mentor longed for revenge with the Jounin from Kanoha, leaving him with a capable guy who tightly clutched a katana. The boy was even able to hurt him by kicking him, but still, he was a child. Haku made a seal with one hand, creating a dome of ice mirrors around his opponent. If there is an opportunity, I will not kill you, he said, launching a swarm of sunban at the brunette the Sharingan in his eyes helped him dodge, but some of the needles still hit the target. But if you try to kill me, I will overcome myself. Here on this bridge, we fight for our dreams. Please don't be mad at me, a measured voice surrounded the confused Sasuke, which he could barely catch with his Sharingan, each Sanban. Zabuza sounds life is my goal, and I am willing to kill for it. A small bird landed on the guy's shoulder and chirped protractedly, disappearing in a cloud of smoke. The Echiha stood up, groaning, looking at one of the reflections, and made the seals. I'm also ready to kill for my goal, Sasuke answered confidently, releasing a fireball into one of the ice walls, and on the other side, air bullets fired by the blonde shot into the wall. You asked me not to doubt, Naruto said, looking at Haku, but now you doubt it yourself. We, like you, are ready to die to protect our loved ones. Then everything will be decided here. Oinan took off his mask, revealing his face, and instantly attacked the girl. Naruto managed to dodge the kunai, parrying the next attack, but Haku grabbed her by the elbow, throwing her inside the ice dome. Your desire is great, but you don't have the courage to kill me, a voice rustled among the reflections. Out of pity, people make this mistake, they leave their enemies alive. And if I become weak, I will no longer be needed. Murder is not the only way out. Naruto shouted, clenching her fists. And if you are needed only as a weapon, then you are loyal to the wrong person, Uzumaki spat, feeling Kurama's burning chakra spreading through the channels. I'm considered a weapon, a bargaining chip in a big game, bright orange whirlwinds rose along her body, and the wounds instantly healed, but I found people for whom I'm just a person, just Naruto. And I'm not sorry to give my life for them. The girl shouted, launching an attack, covered in demonic chakra. Haku's eyes widened and his body went numb from the monstrous key that was draining the kunoichi. He tried to move from one mirror to another, but the blonde managed to notice him, slamming her fist right into his face. Oinan fell outside the ice prison, breaking several mirrors. The chakra around the girl calmed down, flowing back into the bearer's body, and the guy with the sharingan barely rose to his feet. Holding onto his shoulder covered with sunban. Haku coughed, spitting out a clot of blood on the ground, and looked at his opponent, who had become calm again. You must understand me, he breathed. You are the same, a beast in human form. Kill me, please, Haku begged, smiling lightly. Is this what you want now? The girl asked after a pause, taking out a kunai. So just leave? I couldn't defeat you and Zabuza-san doesn't need a weak weapon. Sister, Sasuke breathed out worriedly, wincing in pain. It's his wish, Sasuke, Naruto interrupted her brother and ran forward towards the smiling Haku, who was looking dreamily into the sky. The kunai was already very close, but the oinan suddenly grabbed her hand, stopping the attack. Sorry, his head turned somewhere in the direction where the voices of Kakashi and Zabuza could be heard, but I will not die by your hand, he disappeared, and the fog suddenly disappeared with him. Uzumaki turned her head and froze, Kakashi and Ai was standing nearby, and Haku was literally hanging on his arm, imbued through and through with the jonin technique. The blonde came to her senses, and created a clone that took over Sasuke, and she ran to the others. Is death waiting for me? Zabuza croaked mockingly, who was covered by Haku. Heh. You were wrong again, the swordsman raised his weapon above himself to cut both of them at once, but Kakashi jumped back, carefully laying the oinan's body on the ground. 
Idiot, Naruto screamed, disgusted by the nuke mean. He gave his life for you, but you don't even care. He himself decided to become a weapon, Sabuza said, attacking the girl, but Hitaki repelled this blow as well. Sakura, go to Sasuke, he needs help, Uzumaki said, nodding her head towards her brother, the girl grabbed the old man Tazuna's hand and ran. We need to finish this fight, she nodded to Kakashi, clutching the kunai in her hand. The leaf shinobi ran forward towards the enemy, who could only move one arm, but was frantically swinging a huge weapon. Naruto pushed off the ground, jumping over Zabuza, while Kakashi sank down, straightening his leg. The blow landed squarely in the chest, and Momochi was thrown back, where the girl grabbed him, plunging a kunai into the tendon of his elbow. Both of your hands don't obey you anymore, she said, walking away to her mentor. Oh, oh, oh. So you lost again, a low voice rang out, a whole crowd of ninjas without Hitai 8 appeared on the bridge, and at the head was a short man who looked mockingly at the renegade. Gato, Zabuza barely croaked. What are you doing here? I've come to finish what I started, he laughed, pointing his palm at the bandits behind. You're already a dead man, and my people will take you in numbers, the crowd roared approvingly, wanting the blood of the nuke mean. It's profitable to hire people like you, you don't have to pay, but simply remove them. Besides, he said, looking at Haku lying in front of him, some of you managed to cause a lot of problems. That idiot broke my arm, he roughly kicked the dead guy in the face, which completely infuriated Naruto. What are you doing? She shouted. And you, the girl turned to Zabuza, who froze in the middle of the bridge, will you calmly watch how this idiot mocks his body? The boy died for you. Exactly, Momochi replied calmly. He died. Gato used me like I was Haku. All shinobi, strong or weak, does not matter, they are all just weapons. You really don't feel anything? She tried to reach Naruto's heart, despite Kakashi's hand on his shoulder. He loved you. I made your existence the meaning of my life. Are there really no feelings left in you? She fell silent, feeling her hands trembling. People like me don't feel anything anymore, Zabuza answered without even turning to the girl. Lies, Naruto spat. My husband killed, getting his hands up to his elbows in blood, but he returned home and became himself. No matter how many people you kill, you will not stop being human. Especially you, Zabuza. You are not a weapon, otherwise you would have abandoned it as a child, Uzumaki with words tore the last human feelings from the Nukunin's soul. Making him cry silently. Okay, blonde, he croaked, turning slightly towards her, you're right. Lend me your kunai. Here, Naruto threw the weapon, and Zabuza caught it with his teeth. I'll help, I still have a little chakra, the Nukunin nodded, rushing forward to Gato. Kakashi and I, I, take the guys away, the girl asked. The Jounin nodded, walking back to the team as Naruto set off after Zabuza. The fugitive shinobi hired by Gato tried to protect their employer, but the two demons that rushed straight at the criminal did not give a single chance. Zabuza calmed down and fell to the ground only when the kunai in his teeth cut the baka throat. Naruto was breathing heavily next to her, firing several air bullets in a row and controlling a dozen clones, but the number of renegades did not decrease. She prepared to release Karama's chakra for the second time, which threatened her with exhaustion, but the figures of three ANBU and Pakan suddenly appeared in front of her, who caustically commented on what was happening. Rest, Naruto, said one of them wearing a cat mask, she recognized him as Tenzo. The girl nodded gratefully, and the ANBU began to fight, and the Uzumaki approached the barely alive Zabuza, who was staring at the foggy sky. Your hubby is lucky, Zabuza croaked, I want to live with such a wife. Live like that, the blonde grinned, falling to her knees next to her. Live, find yourself a wife, have children. Don't make me laugh, blonde, it hurts to laugh, Nuke Mean barely smiled. Will you fulfill your last wish? He asked. Certainly. I want to look at him one last time. Naruto nodded, creating several clones, and carefully carried Zabuza to the peaceful Haku. Pure white flakes of snow smoothly fell to the ground, framing the boy's pale face. 
He was from a snowy village, the man whispered, peering into his tonic features, clean as the first snow. Haku, the voice trembled and was barely audible against the background of the battle behind, I hope snow falls in your paradise. I hope I'll be there too. Is this the way of the shinobi? Sasuke asked, looking at the graves of the two nuke mean. Die young in a fight? It doesn't matter when you die, it's important what you fought for, the girl smiled, looking at her confused brother. Haku died for the sake of his loved one, and Zabuza gave his life for his dream. This is their way, yours is different. But if I ever lose you or my brother, I'll become like Zabuza, I'll want revenge, the Echiha frowned. I'll kill the enemy, and his family will be angry with me, and they will take revenge. Whose side is the truth on then? Naruto sighed heavily, peering into the smooth waters of the wide river. Sasuke grew up very quickly, asking difficult questions. The truth doesn't stand on anyone's side, it's different for everyone, depending on the angle from which you look, the girl answered after a pause. The main thing is not to let hatred consume you. Otherwise you won't be able to soberly assess the situation. Sometimes it is better to forgive the enemy. Forgive? The brunette raised his head, looking at his sister. The weak do not know how to forgive, this is the prerogative of the strongest, Naruto smiled, looking at his brother. Someday you will be convinced of this for yourself. Naruto stirred the pie dough, enjoying the aroma of baked apples that were cooling on the windowsill. Sasuke was practicing in the backyard, mastering the use of the donated blade, which he really liked. They spent their first day off in a long time at home, and even Naruto, surprisingly, managed to resolve all the issues the day before and stayed at home. Two months had passed since the mission in the Land of Waves, the hot day of June was slowly coming to an end, with no signs of trouble. The blonde poured the batter into the pan and added roughly chopped pieces of baked apples that smelled like cinnamon and vanilla. There was a knock on the door just as Naruto put the pie in the oven, and the girl went to open it, turning the manual timer as she went. Kakashi and I, I? Come in, Naruto smiled, letting the jounin into the house. Something happened? Sort of, he breathed, looking around. Where is Sasuke? In the backyard, Uzumaki waved her hand, pulling off her colorful apron. Secret? She asked carefully. Not really, Kakashi admitted, gratefully accepting a glass of cold lemonade. Only from the Hokage, in a week the Chunin exam will begin. That's it, Naruto breathed, looking at her calm mentor. And? I recommended you for this exam, Hataki shrugged. Asuma and Kurinai did the same. And you, by the way, are the only genin with Mission B in your personal file. You remember very well what happened on that mission, she muttered. Tell me honestly, is this another stupid argument with Guy? Uzumaki asked, placing her hands on her hips. His team also applied for the exam. Yes and no, Hataki answered evasively, dodging the towel that the girl threw. You are the most prepared for this, the sensei added seriously. Why do you need to worry? I guess my intuition worked again, she sighed, sitting down in front of him. However, have you already been given passes? Yes, the man nodded. I wanted to give it back tomorrow after the mission, but I can do it now. You'll give it back tomorrow, the blonde snorted. You know how to find problems for me, Naruto was kindly indignant. Kakashi sighed and took his leave, lamenting his jonin responsibilities for the exam. The girl shook her head with displeasure, distracted by the timer that reminded her of the pie. Taking out a sweet-smelling treat, she covered it with a waffle towel and went to the backyard to call Sasuke. The brother practiced with a katana, being in a kind of zen with his weapon. Naruto involuntarily fell in love, concentrated attacks, clear and precise blows, the brunette was simply created for Kenjutsu. Uzumaki didn't understand, why was Sasuke compared to Itachi? The brothers were completely different, only the Sharingan united them, and so they followed completely different paths. For a moment it became a pity that Fugaku stubbornly tried to mold a second Itachi from his youngest son, turning a blind eye to the obvious difference between the children. Itachi came to mind again. The girl's heart was warmed by the thought of his last note, they were short, 
barely three or four sentences, but meant much more to her. This was proof that he was still alive, loved her, and was waiting for her return. Sometimes the smell of baked apples transported her to the past, where she could hear Shursui's loud laughter, Sasuke's childish cries, and her husband's warm touches. Reality was as sobering as the best poison, from Suna. Shursui's laughter disappeared, reflecting in the only Sharingan of the summoning raven that Naruto carried within her. Sasuke quickly grew up, striving for strength, which would allow him to protect what was dear to him, and his husband's touch remained in Soraku, concentrated in the intertwined strands, reminding him of himself with a sweet shiver. I know what you're thinking, his brother's voice pulled him out of his thoughts. What happened is irreversible, remember? How well you have begun to remember my words, the girl laughed, feeling how sadness was gradually receding, giving way to bright hope. You talk so much it's impossible to forget, Sasuke snorted, hiding his embarrassment, behind feigned displeasure. Is this a pie? The Uchiha pulled his nose towards the kitchen, no one would have thought that the heir to the great clan had such a sweet tooth. Pie, Uzumaki confirmed, grabbing her brother's neck, to give him a good squeeze. Wash up and go eat, she released the disgruntled teenager, who was muttering something about tactile hunger, some sisters, and exhaled lightly. Maybe things aren't so bad. Naruto looked around skeptically, the office could barely fit everyone who wanted to become Chunin, and the atmosphere of friendliness and joy reigned here by no means. Shinobi with protectors from different villages looked displeasedly at the noisy crowd of Genin that surrounded the entering team number 7. Were you also sent to this stupid exam? Nara said lazily, throwing his hands behind his head. All the genin from our class are here, Ino nodded, shooting her eyes at the dissatisfied Sasuke, of course, his sparring with Lee in the backyard of the academy was interrupted by Gai Sensei. We've learned a lot, so watch our team become the first chunin, Kiba announced, raising his dark nose. We'll see, the Uchiha chuckled, turning his gaze to his sister, who was flying in the clouds. Hey, you there! A voice came from the side. Behave yourself properly. A leaf genin who was as tall as Naruto approached their company. Newbies? Look, they screamed like sparrows. And who are you? Ino ruffled her feathers, no worse than a sparrow, pointing her finger at the stranger. My name is Kabuto, the guy introduced himself, adjusting his glasses on his nose. This is my seventh time here, so I know a lot. Nanny? For the seventh time? Kiba was surprised. Is the exam so difficult? I never made it to the third stage, Kabuto shrugged, causing the genin to moderate their ambitions, and Naruto to smile subtly. If you don't try, you won't know, Uzumaki encouraged the guys, looking at the guy with glasses. In any case, Kabuto-san is proof that this exam is not the only one, and there will still be a chance to become a chunin. Naruto, Kurama's voice rustled, I feel the presence of the one tails. He's inside that boy from sand, red-haired with a pumpkin on his back. The girl turned her gaze to the indicated guy, noticing the bruises under his eyes and the gloomy appearance that made his teammates frown nervously. Nearby, the sound genin began to stir upon hearing Kabuto's comments about their village, but a fight was prevented by the appearance of the examiners. At the head of the detachment of Chunin and Jounin was Marino Abiki, the head of the torture and interrogation department. Naruto for the umpteenth time that day, remembered with all the flattering and unflattering words of Kakashi and Ai that he didn't say a word about the exam, but only smiled mysteriously. Personally, Ibiki Uzumaki did not know Marinko, but she heard a lot from the group of Jounins, especially Asuma and Kakashi. Good afternoon, a loud voice scared half of the Chunin candidates. I am Marino Ibiki, the examiner of the first qualifying round. Are you having problems, team from sound? No, their leader, a short guy with a bandaged face, spat out. Sorry, we got carried away, he said, glancing at Kabuto. Let me clarify the situation, Ibiki began, releasing a rather weak key that pinned the entire audience, fights without the examiner's permission are prohibited. Those who disobey can consider themselves as having failed, the herd of Chunin behind him chuckled contemptuously, watching the frightened Jenin. Let's start the first test. He announced. 
Now you will all hand in your applications and receive a number in return, the Jounin showed a small wooden square with a cutout number. And then we'll give out the options. The crowd buzzed with dissatisfaction, because they were not expecting a test, but they reached out to the main table to take the numbers. Naruto calmly handed over her pass, receiving, in addition to 53 options, and a slight half-smile from the examiner. Hinata was nearby, and shyly wished him luck, Sakura was one desk behind, and Sasuke was two desks further from Sakura. Now I will explain the rules for taking the test, the examiner continued as soon as everyone was seated. I'll write them down on the board, but asking questions is prohibited, he took the chalk, quickly writing down a few points. The first rule is that you will start the test with 10 points. There will be 10 questions in total, each worth 1 point. The test is built on a subtractive principle Ibiki gave two simple examples, from which it followed that if the participant answered all the questions incorrectly, the participant received zero points. The whispers around gradually grew, and when Marino announced that the test was a teen test, the wave of indignation overpowered the fear. Wait a second, someone shouted from behind, why did they make the test a teen test? It was said to be silent, powerful key hung over the audience again. And Ibiki continued. The third rule states that everyone who is caught cheating or otherwise cheating will be deducted two points. Those who lose all points will be disqualified, he turned to the audience, enjoying the sight of the tense genin. We'll keep an eye on you, came the voice of one of the chunin who sat around the perimeter of the audience. Losers caught cheating are not worthy of the title of chunin, said the examiner, grinning bloodthirstily. If you really want to earn it, then behave like a real ninja should, Ibiki added more softly, looking slyly at Naruto, who was barely smiling. Uzumaki was beginning to grasp the meaning of the test, but all that remained was to see the tasks. And the last rule, Marino finished his explanation, those who lost all their points by cheating or did not answer a single question are eliminated by the whole team. At these words, indignation rose again among the audience, but Ibiki ignored all the questions adding that the exam would last one hour. At the go-ahead, they turned over the sheets of assignments, staring at the blank forms. The blonde glanced through the questions, noting the last one, the examiner would announce at 15 minutes before the end of the stage. She smiled triumphantly, everything was converging to force the participant to break the rules and cheat. So they were going to test their skills in obtaining information in difficult conditions but Naruto did not succumb to the atmosphere of panic and fear, hoping that Sasuke and Sakura would also be able to grasp the meaning of the whole test. Most likely, the answers themselves will not be taken into account, the main thing is simply not to catch the eye of the Chunin, who have already made notes in their tablets, and the last question will decide everything. In principle, you could sit through the rest of the test without even moving, but Uzumaki decided to dust off the theory that she studied hard at the academy by writing down the answers. The first question was a cryptogram, which already revealed the absurdity of the task. The cryptogram was used as a way to transmit information between the village and shinobi on missions. Secret messages were encrypted using special keys, of which there were about 120 in the village. At one time, Naruto managed to get acquainted with some when she helped the encryption department move. So this message could be deciphered in several ways, spending a good portion of time on it. What about the genin of other villages? Will they unwittingly give away their secret keys? Naruto giggled stifledly, what cunning Kanoha shinobi? The girl sighed, taking the simplest sequence as a key, and received a set of words that did not fit into a meaningful sentence. The second task is a problem, line B shown in the figure shows the maximum distance that a shinobi sitting on a tree 7 meters high can throw shuriken. Show all possible ways to eliminate opponents who appear within the radius of a shinobi's reach, taking into account the various perceived capabilities of the enemy. Explain the answer. And this is already a mockery. The task is complex, requiring knowledge of mechanics and aerodynamics, various techniques that the enemy can use to attack, and, in the end, imagination. You can give an example of an attack by an ordinary genin, an experienced jounin, or even an S-class nuke mean. 
Sighing, Naruto gave an example of an attack by a shinobi with a Byakugan, Hinata nearby sneezed strangledly, reminding of herself. Next came two logic problems, she solved one quickly, but had to tinker with the other, then she easily answered a question from the field of medicine, which, in principle, could only be answered by the Irenans, who understand medicinal herbs. When Naruto moved on to the sixth question, active cheating began in the audience, the majority guessed the meaning of the test, trying to cheat with all their might. She wasn't worried about her team, because Sakura would definitely be able to write the test herself, and Sasuke would shamelessly do it with the help of the Sharingan. Giving up somewhere in the middle of the eighth question, Naruto relaxed. Counting how many teams had already been kicked out. A total of 51 teams registered, and with 15 minutes left, barely more than half remained 32 teams. Ibiki announced the announcement of the tenth question, again letting out the notorious key. Before asking it, I will introduce a few additional rules. And these rules are very strict, he began. First, you must choose whether you will answer the tenth question. Choose? The Kunoichi from Sand couldn't resist. What will happen if we refuse the question? If you refuse, your points will be reset, Marino answered the question. That is, you didn't pass. Shouts shook the audience every now and then, all the genin, of course, agreed to the question, only Ibiki continued. But there is one more rule. If you try to solve this question and answer incorrectly, the deathly silence fell in the audience, and the jounin took a dramatic pause before continuing, you will forever lose the right to take part in the exam. But if you refuse now, the whole team will leave, but they can try their luck next time. The Chinin candidates tried to prove something to the examiner, but he relied on bad luck that it was he who was tasked with selecting the participants for the second stage. The teenagers fell silent, crushed by powerful key and the burden of responsibility, some immediately raised their hands, apologizing to their teammates. Naruto didn't reproach them it's still better to lay down your arms at the very beginning if you're not confident in your abilities. When only 26 teams remained, Naruto noticed that Hinata, sitting next to her, was about to raise her hand, and could not resist, deciding to slightly confuse the cards for the examiners. You can't wait. She shouted, releasing a powerful stream of chakra at once that blew away Ibiki's notorious key. I won't run away. I will answer, even if I remain a genin forever, Uzumaki said confidently, looking straight into the jounin's eyes. Genin, chinin, or jounin, it doesn't matter, that's not what defines you as a shinobi. Give me your question here, I'm ready. Naruto smiled, charging everyone with her confidence. Well, Marino chuckled, looking at the laughing chinin, who were staring at Naruto, pleased with himself. So, everyone who remained, congratulations. You've passed, your first test. Nanny? The audience was indignant. What about the tenth question? Why the rest of the questions? There was no question, Ibiki cheered, enjoying the effect produced. We can say that the question was a choice, give up or continue. What about the other nine questions? Asked the girl from Sand. They made sense, he explained patiently. They completed their task weeded out those who do not know how to obtain information. To put it simply, it was a cheating test, Ibiki sighed, grabbing the fabric of his bandana with his hand. Sometimes information will be more valuable than your life, under the cover, there were clear burned scars and broken holes, which made the genin wince. If the enemy or someone else spots you, there is no guarantee that the information obtained will be correct. I want you to remember for the rest of your life that valuable information in the right hands can become a powerful weapon. And yet, the curious Kunoichi continued, why the tenth question? This became a real test of spirit, the examiner threw up his hands. The difficult choice that appears before you is only an allusion to what awaits you in the future. You will always be faced with a choice, refuse the mission and save your skin, or continue the mission, fulfilling your duty. The ability to overcome oneself and one's fear, the ability to cope with any difficulties and make the right decision in time, this is what future Chunin need. So, congratulations, you have passed the first stage for the title of Chunin, the audience hummed approvingly, and Ibiki looked at the girl sitting in front of him and smiled lightly. 
Naruto crossed her arms over her chest and shrugged her shoulders innocently, responding with an equally innocent look. Suddenly, the genin's joy was interrupted by the sudden appearance of a stranger who jumped straight out the window. Simultaneously launching several kunai at the ceiling, to the ends of which the edges of a healthy black cloth were attached. Against the dark background of Midarashi, Enko shone in her provocative outfit, loudly declaring herself. Naruto giggled strangledly at this appearance, very much in the style of the unrivaled Kunoichi, who was the second stage examiner. Follow me quickly, she shouted, looking around the audience. Twenty-six teams? Have you missed that much? Anko asked displeasedly, discreetly winking at the laughing Uzumaki on the first desk. There are a lot of strong guys this year, Ibiki chuckled. Nothing, the Kunoichi said contentedly. After the second stage, barely half will remain. This will be interesting, Midarashi smiled, bloodthirstily, raising the confused genin along with her. Anko-san, you are, as always, inimitable, Naruto whispered quietly, passing by the woman. Oh, Naruto-chan, she drawled in a snake-like voice, I'm trying, trying. Brought your sweet brother to the exam? He wants to become a chunin, the blonde explained. We'll see, we'll see, Anko laughed, rushing forward. And what Kakashi and I, I signed them up for is anyone's guess. After Anko had horrified the genin by telling them about the second stage, a horde of genin suddenly surrounded the surprised Naruto and looked inquisitively at the blonde. Naruto-san, Shikamaru began, we agreed that we would not attack each other. So we will give one of us a chance to become a chunin, after all, we are from the same village. I understand, the girl chuckled. Well, I hope we all meet in five days in the tower. Good luck to you guys, she smiled at the two teens that went off to get their scroll. What are we going to do, sister? Sasuke asked, clutching the agreement that Anko gave out. Eh, Naruto exhaled heavily, looking at the teams lining up for the scrolls. It's a pity, of course, that we don't see who has which scroll, that Hyuga's little eyes wouldn't hurt here, she grinned, but quickly regained her serious look. Half of them will definitely fail, and those who are stronger, are already looking for opponents. Ten kilometers to the tower is not so much, it is best to quickly cover this distance. It would be better if no one sees us, Sakura frowned. That would be nice, Uzumaki nodded. In principle, you and I can hide Chakra, but a good sensor will notice Sasuke, the Uchiha pursed his lips it was hard for him to hide Chakra. Let's do this. I'll send several clones forward to scout out the situation ahead, you'll cover Sasuke from behind, and Sakura won't interfere until the last minute, as you're more needed as a medic, Haruno nodded importantly, realizing that if something happened, she could save her teammates. Do you want to get the required scroll on the first day? Sasuke asked, looking back at the trio from the grass, who were looking in their direction with interest. I don't know, Uzumaki thought. What do you think? Now or shall we set up an ambush, near the tower? We'd better quickly make our way to the tower, avoiding any skirmishes, and then we'll wait for the first people we come across, answered the brother. But the strongest of all will come to the tower, Sakura doubted, rationally assessing the situation. Yes, the Echiha patiently agreed, but they were pretty beaten up, by the time they reached the tower. If we are lucky, we will not spend much effort to get to the tower and there we will take advantage of the effect of surprise. The guys fell silent, waiting for what Naruto, the informal leader of the team, would say, but the girl turned her attention to one of the grass genin. The tall, long-haired woman grinned slyly, sticking out the tip of her snake tongue, and looked at Sasuke, releasing bloodthirsty ki. The blonde remembered that Itachi warned her about Orochimaru, who was very interested in the Sharingan while being part of the Akatsuki. Complaining about her intuition, she caught Anko's gaze, discreetly nodding towards the suspicious person. Midarashi nodded in understanding, waving her hand to the two chunin who were standing nearby. Wanichan. Don't sleep, Sasuke hissed, lightly pulling the tip of his blonde braid. What do you think? Sorry, Sasuke, I was staring at it, she smiled, ruffling the dark top of her head. We'll try to get to the tower. But if along the way we meet someone weak and with the necessary scroll, then we'll fight, Uzumaki answered, taking away their permission. 
Now, let's go get the scroll, and, Naruto hesitated slightly, looking at the serious children in front of her, if something happens, don't lose your head, okay? Don't be a hero, just hide and run, did you hear? The blonde was sincerely worried about her guys, finding the strength to smile. With him, with the title of Chunin, I need you alive, Sasuke, and Sakura nodded obediently, also smiling. Nothing will happen, Naruto. I won't allow it, Kurama reassured her, running his tails around the cage. Team number 7 started with the sky scroll from gate number 12. The mysterious trio from the hidden grass village were very close, starting their journey from gate 15, so Naruto immediately identified the main enemies. Sasuke nodded understandingly, watching several blondes rush forward, and activated his Sharingan, looking back from time to time. You and the original, go ahead, one of the Uzumaki clones shouted, stopping on a branch, I'll quickly leave a trap from those from the grass. I feel like they are following us. What if something happens? Asked the Echiha. The original will find out, the girl answered, taking out paper and several kunai. It took little time to create a simple barrier, just draw three pairs of an elephant and a monkey, attach them to kunai, and place them in the corners of the square. The height and power of such a barrier depended on the amount of chakra swollen, but still the clone could not completely use up the entire supply. The girl estimated the distance between the nearest trees, prepared kunai, and secured them around the perimeter it turned out to be a square of approximately 5 by 5. Uzumaki sensed the approach of that same bloodthirsty chakra, finally making sure that their goal was not the scroll at all, but one of them. Once beyond the line of action of the technique, Naruto smiled triumphantly, activating the barrier. Two of the genin were confused when they saw the four-meter-high trap, but that same woman smiled predatorily, licking her lips with a snake tongue. Uzumaki, her voice whispered. I didn't think there were any good barrier experts left. We stayed, as you can see, Naruto spat. Your goal is not the scroll, right? You're deliberately stalking us, so who do you want? Sharp-witted, he chuckled, as it turned out. I need Sasuke Kuen's lovely eyes, and you are probably Itachi's wife. You heard us, he hissed, like a snake, approaching the wall, that shone with reddish chakra. It didn't work out to capture Itachi, so you dared to come to Kanoha in the middle of an exam? Uzumaki bared her teeth, watching as Orochimaru put down the seal of cancellation ordinary removal will not help here, you need to choose the right combination of hand seals, and this will take time. The ANBU will know you're here, so it's best not to track us, Naruto said, dispelling herself. The original who was running ahead, having caught the information from the clone, tensed. The blonde understood that the most important thing now was to notify Enko about her former mentor, who was about to break the barrier. Having created another clone, the girl turned her into a bird, which instantly flew to the gate. What's there? Sasuke asked. We need to run as far as possible, Uzumaki informed the team, noticing her brother's displeased face. Sasuke, these are not just Genin, he is one of the Kanoha Sanin who wants to get his Sharingan. Neither I nor you are ready to directly get involved in a fight with him yet, the younger instantly calmed down, accepting his sister's words. I sent a clone to Enko while he's sitting in the barrier, but there's a chance that the snake will break out before they arrive. Maybe we can hide for now? We need to find a stream and stock up on water and possibly fish, Haruno suggested. Out of breath from a long run. Naruto didn't have time to respond as she felt one of the clones dissipate, reporting that a team from Waterfall was ahead, facing off against the carrier of Shikaku. There are two teams ahead, we shouldn't interfere with them, the blonde answered, turning sharply to the right, where, judging by the sound, there was a stream. When they reached the reservoir, they quickly filled their empty flasks with clean water, which Naruto grabbed by pure chance. The clones rushed further to clear the way to the tower, which was halfway. Another clone dispelled, causing Naruto to smile in victory. Quickly, she caught herself, rushing forward, followed by the others. There are two unconscious people from Kanoha ahead, a third is nearby, and they have the required scroll. So simple? The Echiha exhaled, wanting to finally stretch his bones. The genin received them with a swarm of kunai, 
which blew Naruto away with a stream of wind, and Sasuke, without straining, approached the guy, touching his shoulder with his katana. It's better not to resist you, he said, pointing the weapon straight to his throat. Okay, take it, the guy nodded, throwing the scroll to the ground. My team was eliminated anyway, they tried to open the scroll. They're stupid, Naruto couldn't help herself, hiding the scroll in the seal on her wrist for the second scroll. Great, now all that's left is to get to the tower, the girl looked at the sky, which was noticeably getting darker. It's already sunset, maybe it would be better to spend the night here? Suggested the Echiha. And at dawn, get to the tower. Okay, Uzumaki agreed reluctantly, slightly worried that the clone she sent after Anko had not yet dispelled. Sakura, heal his shoulder, the girl asked, pointing at the Kanoha, Jenin. Still, we are from the same village, she smiled. Haruno obeyed, guiding Shosun through the guy, who politely thanked him and immediately disappeared. The Uchiha quickly cut up the fish, while his sister set up several traps and barriers around the perimeter of the clearing. She forbade starting a fire, fearing that it would attract opponents. Raw fish didn't really appeal to the spoiled Jenin's taste, to which Naruto laughed and thrust into her hands a few sprigs of mint that she found nearby. Sakura patched them up a little, replenishing her strength, and with a clear conscience went to bed first at the root of the decayed tree. Having barely sent her brother to rest, Naruto climbed a tall tree, hiding in the foliage. So far everything has been fine, whispered the fox's voice. Yes, but the clone haunts me and I don't want to dispel it earlier," Uzumaki answered. I don't feel their chakras up close, he said. A little more than four hours have passed since the start of the exam, you did well, Kurama encouraged her. Thank you, of course, Naruto barely smiled, but instantly jumped to her feet, sensing that the required clone had dissipated. Along with the information, fatigue also came, the clone fought with Anko against Orochimaru, that he was still able to break out of the barrier and escape from the Kunoichi, and was now approaching them. However, the Sanan also had a tail of two ANBU behind him. Naruto exhaled heavily, trying to make the right choice, to run, or to fight, waiting for ANBU support. Stop running, Kurama bared his teeth, I'll share my chakra, just show him what you're worth. Uzumaki smiled at the peculiar support of her beast, but obeyed. Two people were sleeping in their hiding place, it was dangerous to leave both of them in this state, but she could not decide to wake up Sasuke. But Sakura quickly woke up, focusing her gaze on her teammate. What flowers did that man from the center give you? Haruno suddenly asked, pointing a kunai at the blonde. Phrygia, Uzumaki answered calmly, watching how the girl quickly blushed. Sorry, she muttered, hiding the kunai. I had to make sure that you were real and that was the first thing that came to mind. It's okay, Naruto smiled, I'm not angry. Listen to me, the blonde turned serious, I need to step away, so you remain on guard. If Sasuke wakes up. Don't let him look for me under any circumstances, understand? Haruno nodded timidly, but clarified. Naruto-san, what should I tell him? Tie him up, knock him out, it doesn't matter, but don't let him in. Orochimaru is looking for him, and I'm not going to meet him so that Sasuke will come running to him, Uzumaki explained patiently. Don't worry, there will be ANBU there, so I'll come back myself, and you wait, she patted Sakura on the shoulder and, after a moment, added, you've grown a lot, Sakura. The pink-haired girl was slightly embarrassed, but nodded confidently, watching Naruto move further away. The blonde again sent several clones forward, hoping to detect the Sanin who dared to encroach on her husband and brother. He should have known that Uzumaki did not forgive such things. The spears dissipated, sensing Orochimaru ahead, and Naruto stopped on one of the branches, waiting for her opponent. A huge snake appeared right in front of her and wanted to swallow her, but the flow of wind knocked it off course. The blonde mentally promised herself after this stage, to get a call, in order to also distract her opponents. You again, Orochimaru hissed, seeing the pestering Uzumaki. You thought I'd just let you have Sasuke? The Kunoichi began to get angry, allowing the tail chakra to absorb the body until their limit was three tails, then Naruto lost her mind. 
Well, of course, the Sanin licked his lips, disgustingly, dodging a stream of kunai fueled by air chakra. Uzumaki and the Echiha clan, now it's clear to me why they married you off to Itachi, his yellow eyes flickered in the darkness, and the omnipresent snakes tried to grab her. The tailed one in the ranks of the red-eyed and how did the old man do such a thing? He was surprised. Now you have become interesting to me, Jinchiriki of the Kyubi. Orochimaru evaded each blow like a snake, managing to hit the blonde with a kunai. The snake escaped from his mouth, entangling the girl's body, but the demon's poisonous chakra burned everything that touched the fox's cover. The Sanin took advantage of Naruto's momentary weakness, releasing a long blade that tried to pierce her chest right through. She managed to dodge so that the blow landed on her shoulder. Orochimaru did not give her time to rest, folding the seals, before cutting the tight belt at the waist and the blouse with a rolled blade. The Uzumaki's eyes widened, seeing what kind of technique he was about to use. Over her injured shoulder, the blonde was unable to jump away in time, receiving a powerful blow to the stomach. Worst of all, she felt the demonic veil fall away, and the fox's voice weakened in her consciousness. Orochimaru introduced discord into her seal by adding a bunch of five elements on top of the even structure, which created an imbalance now Naruto could not normally use the fox's chakra without the threat of losing control. Let hatred not take over her mind, but a huge amount of demonic chakra will simply burn the chakra channels. The main thing now is to remain conscious, which surprised the snake. Here it is, Uzumaki blood, he was amazed, licking his lips, carnivorously. Even after the seal you stand on your feet. I won't rest until Sasuke is safe, she spat, clutching the bloody wound. Will you take care of it all your life? The Sanin asked with concern. Sooner or later I'll get to him, the snake laughed, taking out his katana. Luckily for Naruto, a squad of ANBU appeared in front of her, and the girl finally allowed herself to fall onto the grass. The girl woke up already in the familiar den, noticing a frightened Sakura above her, who was healing her shoulder with Shosen. The blonde easily grabbed her hand, drawing attention to herself, to which Haruno exhaled in relief. Kami-sama, I was so scared, the pink-haired girl muttered, taking out a bandage from the first aid kit. It's okay, Sakura, Naruto smiled, allowing her to bandage the cut shoulder. Thank you for curing me. You're welcome, she nodded, finishing the bandage. I just healed a deep cut, and the muscles and ligaments healed by themselves, the girl was surprised. Looking inquisitively at her teammate. But I still can't heal it neatly, so it's better to bandage it. Thank you, Uzumaki repeated, seeing that she was wearing her brother's shirt. Why am I wearing Sasuke's shirt? 2 ANBU brought you unconscious, Sakura began to tell, her pink eyebrows furrowing cutely. Your clothes were torn and your shoulder was pierced, so Sasuke Kuan asked me to heal your wound and gave me his shirt. And he went off to watch outside, the girl finished. What time is it now? Naruto asked, hoping that the ANBU were able to apprehend Orochimaru. It's almost dawn, Haruno informed her, helping her up. You only slept for four hours. Sakura and Naruto emerged from their temporary shelter, looking around the empty clearing. Sasuke jumped down from the top branch of the tree, wearing only a t-shirt, frowning at his sister. He was angry, tightly clutching the katana in his hand, and his gaze sent all possible punishments to the bright head. You're an idiot, Wani-chan, the Achiha muttered, causing his sister to give an embarrassed half-smile. I'm sorry, Sasuke, Naruto said, admiring her brother's embarrassed and angry face. I couldn't do otherwise. Okay, he said, turning away from the girls who were giggling when they saw his red face. We'd better go to the tower. Now Naruto is in the center, Sakura is behind, I am in front, the Echiha commanded. We'll give everyone a wide berth and don't get into fights anymore. Hi, the teammates saluted jokingly, following the guy. Fortunately for them, on the way to the tower, they met only one team that was preparing an ambush at the entrance, but an angry Sasuke, who had not yet recovered from the Uzumaki's prank, quickly dealt with the rain genin who used strange illusions with copies. The corridors of the tower were empty, except for a number on each door. 
The team looked at each other and entered the room with the number of the gate from which they started. The inside was empty, except for a couple of futons rolled up in the corner and another door that looked like it led to the bathroom. Look, Sakura pointed to the wall in front of her. Without heaven. There are not enough words here. We should probably open the scrolls, she suggested. Naruto nodded in agreement, summoning scrolls from the seal, to give to the boys. They opened them carefully, noticing a row of hewn blocks. Throw it on the floor, Uzumaki shouted, these are summoning scrolls. Sasuke and Sakura shied away, and threw them away, and the blonde tensed another task or test. But in the summoning cloud the figure of a smiling Iruka sensei appeared, holding a pocket watch in his hands. Well done, guys, the teacher, praised them. It's exactly 10 o'clock now, which means you passed the exam in 16 hours, this is a record among newcomers from the academy. Why are you here? Haruno asked, relaxing. Everyone who arrived on time is met by a chunin to congratulate them on completing the stage, he explained, pointing to the writing on the wall. And this is what I have to tell you. This motto was written by Hokage-sama, under the sky, this means the human mind, and by earth body. And if you need, sky, seek wisdom, prepare and wait, and. If you need, ground, then hard work will lead you to victory, Sakura continued, instead of Irika, smiling lightly. If there is both earth and sky, any task will not be a hindrance for you, Sasuke continued, quoting the message. And these rules determine the path of a person, Irika finished. You're lucky, there are still four days left by the end of the exam, so you can have a good rest. There's a bath and futons for sleeping, and you can eat downstairs, the Chunin said kindly. You know, he suddenly began, looking slightly embarrassed at Naruto, I'm a little proud that I had the opportunity to meet you. Although I didn't teach you personally, Naruto-san, I simply gave you assignments, Sasuke and Sakura were my students. What, Iruka sensei the blonde smiled, just call me Naruto. Thank you, she bowed respectfully, followed by the entire team. Well, rest, the sensei became completely embarrassed. Rubbing the bridge of his nose, and disappeared into the shunshin. I can't believe it's over, Sakura muttered, turning her gaze to her teammates. But we did it. The girl raised her fist, victoriously, laughing loudly. Her laughter was supported by Naruto, and Sasuke, squeezed by his sister, also could not help himself, laughing quietly in the company of the girls. When their stomachs ached and they couldn't breathe, they calmed down, deciding to get a good night's sleep. Naruto, having given up the pink-haired girl's turn for the bathroom and sending Sasuke in search of provisions, sat down on the futon to meditate. Orochimaru's seal knocked down all control, preventing her from entering the subconscious. Of course, Naruto knew the technique of removing such a seal, but that was where the beauty and complexity of Hyuin Jutsu lay. As with the Uzumaki barrier, the removal of such a seal required a special sequence of elements, and if the master modified a known Hyuin, then any other shinobi could not simply cancel it by performing a standard removal. And if Orochimaru could select hand seals as much as he wanted to dispel the barrier, then Uzumaki did not risk experimenting with a seal on the body. Uzumaki wasn't worried about Kurama, since the fox was able to heal her shoulder, then everything was fine with him. What was needed here was a person who was well acquainted with Orochimaru's Fuinjutsu, but only one character came to mind. Deciding to put off this question until the end of the second stage, the blonde stretched tiredly, nodding to Sakura that she had freed the shower. After washing up and having a snack that Sasuke could get, team number seven lay down in the middle of the room, hoping to sleep peacefully, despite the heat of the day. Naruto woke up late in the evening, feeling a powerful key that seemed to hang in the air like fog. The guys nearby were fast asleep, barely frowning in their sleep, and Uzumaki decided to test her guess by securing the pouch to her belt. It was quiet in the corridor, as well as in the entire tower, Sasuke reported yesterday that only the team from Suna and that quarrelsome trio from Sound had arrived before them. The burning chakra was clearly felt, and the trail led to the roof, which the blonde followed, knowing full well who she would meet there. The bearer of the one tail sat sideways to her, peering into the cloudy sky. It seemed that he was not blinking at all, 
his hands trembled slightly, squeezing his legs tucked under him. Shikaku, Naruto said quietly, drawing attention to herself. The guy turned around sharply, staring at the stranger, and the sand instantly approached her, creeping up her legs. How do you know? The young man whispered, looking at the girl with his bottomless turquoise eyes. I'm the same, she smiled easily, feeling the sand loosen its grip on her legs. There is also a tailed one inside me. Do you hear his voice too? Asked the bearer, almost crying. He whispers, so loudly. I can't sleep, the boy almost cried, staring at Naruto. Do you want to kill too? I don't want to, Uzumaki objected softly, coming closer, the sand completely crumbled, returning to the owner. I was able to talk to him, got to know him better, and he became my first friend, Naruto sat down next to him, turning his gaze to the sky. A friend? The guy's voice trembled. You have friends? Yes, she nodded, smiling lightly. Enough to keep me from being consumed by hatred. You also miss friends, right? I'm a monster, the red-haired man answered unexpectedly rudely. They're afraid of me, so they don't come close. No wonder, the blonde chuckled, turning her face to the surprised guy, it's warm and calm next to you, and, indeed, surrounded by grains of sand that swirled around them, it seemed like you were in a warm and safe cocoon. Maybe you don't let anyone near you? If I let anyone in, I'll die, he answered, clenching his fists so that the sand around him rustled threateningly. What made you think that? I loved, the Jinchuriki admitted. I loved my uncle, through the sand I felt how my mother loved me. But their love was a deception. They tried to kill me. If mother's love was a deception, would the sand protect you? Naruto asked, barely touching the grains of sand that were circling around. And your uncle too, if you felt love, then so be it. They were pretending, the young man closed his eyes, leaning into his crossed hands on his knees. Love is not something that can be played, said the girl. You can pretend to be kind, pretend to be joyful and cheerful, even convince everyone of your grief and sadness, but if you are loved, it cannot be compared with anything. Love hurts, the guy whispered, barely audibly. You are hurt not from love itself, but from the fact that you have lost it, Naruto also quietly objected. When you learn to love again, you will feel truly alive. But it will hurt me again when I lose again, the young man was stubborn, causing the girl to laugh quietly. Then protect her, she answered simply. Do everything so that love does not disappear. Should I live for love? His voice was so confused that Naruto saw a small child in front of her that she was lost. I used to kill to feel alive, but now? Love will justify your existence, much more than the death of another person, Uzumaki answered, lightly touching her red hair. Shikaku won't want this, the young man darkened, finally convincing Naruto that the whole problem lay in the maddened tailed one. Why don't you tame him? Uzumaki suggested. Perhaps someday he will become your friend if you extend your hand first. Do you know how to do this? Asked the young man, after a short silence. You did it. It worked, she confirmed. I'll help if you promise to stop killing me, the girl said seriously. You must be strong and resist his whims. Stop being a weapon in his hands, then people around will see that you are not a beast, but a simple person. I don't know how to do this, he was confused. Imagine, the blonde began, after thinking a little, that Shikaku is sand ordinary sand that you know how to control and then collect all the sand in a vessel similar to this one, she nodded, pointing to a large clay pumpkin near him. Simply put, close it in a vessel so as not to hear the voice, and when you are ready, you can talk to it. Will you try? I promise, the tips of his lips barely trembled in the semblance of a smile, and Naruto could not resist, hugging the guy tightly. Try to sleep, okay? She laid the boy's head on her lap, touching his fiery hair. I will watch over your sleep. At first, he tensed, but obediently lay on the girl's lap, shuddering with every touch of his warm palm. The sand around rustled approvingly, calming down from the light sunny aura that the blonde emitted, and Gara was afraid to move so as not to frighten off the unexpected calm. 
As he fell asleep, for a moment it seemed to him that his mother's hand touched his cheek, and the young man fell asleep calmly. Naruto met Dawn on the same roof, without lowering her hand from the red-haired top of her head. The sun's rays woke up the guy, who raised his head from her lap, slightly confused. How did you sleep? The girl asked, smiling welcomingly. Okay, the young man answered chaotically, trying to imitate her smile. It turned out badly so far, but the main thing is desire. I almost didn't hear his voice, I did as you said. Well done, Uzumaki sincerely praised him. Would you like me to introduce you to my team? She suddenly suggested and added, watching how the young man was confused, don't be afraid, but be the first to extend your hand. He nodded timidly, rising after him, but suddenly stopped, holding out his open palm. Gara, the red-haired man said, barely smiling. Naruto, the girl responded to the handshake, laughing loudly. He was embarrassed by the loud laughter, but followed her into their room. Sasuke and Sakura had already woken up, looking slightly surprised at Uzumaki and her sudden guest. Sorry, guys, the blonde said, I woke up earlier and didn't want to wake you up. I decided to take a walk, and so, she pointed her palm at Gara. I met an interesting young man. This is Gara from the Hidden Sand Village. I am Sakura Haruno, the pink-haired girl smiled quite sincerely, fortunately she had not heard rumors about the bloodthirstiness of the Shikaku bearer. Sasuke Echiha, his brother introduced himself less cordially, looking warily at the guy. Sasuke, don't be harmful and make your face simpler, Naruto giggled, pushing Gara closer to the small table that the Echiha had gotten yesterday. Gara is a resident of another village, so show your hospitality and listen to how people live in other villages. The brunette snorted funny, but extended his palm, to which Gara barely smiled, returning the handshake. Sakura boasted that she managed to beg tea from the chunin that she met in the kitchen, and began to prepare a simple drink. Naruto also learned that Karina's team had already appeared in the tower and promised to come back later. I didn't think that their team would appear so quickly, Sasuke was surprised, taking a bite of a bun. Somehow Shikamaru was delayed, the Uchiha was noticeably worried about his close friend. It's only the morning of the third day, there's still time, his sister reassured him, enjoying hot tea. So, Gara, tell me what Suna is like? Switched to Naruto's guest. The red-haired one was slightly confused, but began his story, enveloping everyone in the sandy rustle of his voice, drawing dunes with his fingertips, barely noticeably squinting from the rays of the imaginary desert sun. Still, Naruto was not mistaken, he is still capable of love. Naruto escorted Sasuke and Sakura to the rest of the genin, who had gone to meet Team 10. During these days, the blonde counted that, in total, seven teams passed the second stage, her entire horde of genin, the team of Gai and Kabuto-san, the trio of Sound and Gara with their relatives. Mentors, unfortunately, were not allowed into the tower, and Chunin's were on duty on the floors to greet the teams. Kakashi and Ai showed up only on the fifth day of the exam, half an hour before the end. I'm sorry it happened like this, he awkwardly scratched the back of his head, looking at the calm student. I wasn't allowed into the forest, but I found out from the ANBU everything that happened. Did they manage to catch Orochimaru? The girl hoped. No, he slipped away, Hataki upset her. How are you after the fight with him? He became worried. It could be worse, she chuckled. This snake put his seal on top of my seal, and now I can't normally use either my or the fox's chakra. Were you afraid to take pictures yourself? Kakashi asked. Here you need to be well versed in the intricacies of Orochimaru's fuinjutsu, Naruto answered, looking at Kakashi defiantly. I really need to contact Jiraiya in any way, Uzumaki blurted out, realizing that no one else could help her. The man involuntarily let out a heavy sigh. Finding one of the great Sanin was a difficult task, as was finding any of the notorious Sanin. Orochimaru has become interested in Kanoha, so Jiraiya-san will definitely show up here soon, Hataki suggested. As soon as he is here, you will know, the sensei promised, which made Naruto calm down a little, she felt uneasy without Kurama's voice. Hi, Uzumaki nodded. 
Do you know what else I got myself into? The blonde suddenly drawled slyly, noticing how Kakashi and I rolled his eyes. Did you know that Suna brought Jinchuriki to the exam? No one spoke directly about this, the man became serious. And what happened to him? The boy is unstable, problems with sleep against the backdrop of a shattered psyche, plus the bloodthirstiness of a demon, which makes him kill, Naruto listed, tiredly rubbing her forehead. But it's not all bad, I talked to him. I pushed him a little to pacify the one tails, and my horde of genin quickly drew him into conversation, she cheered up, remembering Gara, who listened with interest to the conversations of other children. Still, he is still capable of love, and I know too well what it's like to be a weapon and monster. Amazing Uzumaki, Kakashi chuckled, making the girl feel embarrassed. Who didn't you help? He asked rhetorically. To save a person, it's not enough to extend your hand. You have to give him yours in return, the girl shrugged. It's the same with Gara. he's ready to change, he just needed an incentive to do so. You just know how to see something good even in the darkest personalities, the mentor objected, easily hugging the blonde. For some reason, I again remembered the rebellious husband who was the first to extend his hand to her, desperately asking for help. Their idol was interrupted by Sasuke, who announced a general meeting of all genin in the arena. Kakashi lightly squeezed his dark palm, ran his hand over the student's dark crown and left to join the rest of the mentors. All seven teams lined up in neat rows of three, exchanging glances. Hokage-sama himself stood in front of them, surrounded by Jounin and Chunin. Now Hokage-sama will explain the rules of the third stage. Anko declared loudly, standing out in the line of Jounin. Listen carefully. Rules of the third stage, an old voice rustled, and his gaze stopped for a moment on Naruto. But first I want you to know something. The real reason why this exam is being held, the genin around them tensed as they listened intently to Haruzen. How do you think? Don't be fooled by the words about strengthening friendship and raising the level of shinobi. All this, he spread his wrinkled hands to the sides, is just a substitute for war, the teenagers around whispered, looking questioningly at their mentors. Of course, you came here to become Chunin, Sarutobi continued, but the exam has a downside. All of you are the face of the village, and how well you perform in the exam and risk your lives will show the power and strength of the village. Many influential people will be present at the exam, all of them are potential clients who can use the shinobi services. And the stronger the village, the more orders there are. Naruto noticed how Sasuke standing in front clenched his fists, she smiled sadly. He was a smart guy, he perfectly saw the flaws of this world, he had already learned how different the fate of shinobi can be, but, nevertheless, he remained an idealist. But why should we risk ourselves? Kiba could not restrain himself, expressing the common thought of all participants. The strength of a country is the strength of a village, the Hokage began patiently. The strength of a village is the strength of a shinobi, and the true strength of a shinobi is born only in mortal battles, a heavy silence hung over the arena, today many will say goodbye to childhood forever. But why then the words about friendship? And strengthening? Ten Ten asked. I told you, don't be fooled by beautiful words, the old man closed his eyes. Balance is achieved at the cost of life. Such is friendship in the shinobi world. And that was what angered Naruto the most. The bitter truth has been shaking their world for many years, forcing countries to increase their power, distorting the concept of shinobi more and more. But before the third stage, the old man began, but he was interrupted by one of the chunin, bowing respectfully. Sorry, Hokage-sama. Perhaps, as a referee, I will explain better, he said, receiving Haruzen's approval. Good afternoon, the man addressed the genin. My name is Gekko Hei 8, the blonde sensitive ears heard Sakura lamenting about his unhealthy appearance. Before the third stage begins. There is something you must do. A qualifying round will have to be held to determine who will advance further. The dissatisfied roar became even louder. The genin were indignant, but their ardor was quickly besieged by strict rules, the third stage is limited in time, so they will not be able to admit everyone. To Hyatt's proposal to give up now, 
Kabuto unexpectedly responded, leading the even formation of the participants. In total, there were 20 of them left, which means 10 fights, all eyes were directed to the scoreboard, where pairs of fighters were shown in random order. Sasuke smiled, contentedly when he saw his name first and nodded lightly at his sister's warning look. Everyone else climbed to the top tier, where they were joined by their mentors. Akato Yoroi A genin from Kabuto's team stood opposite the Echiha, clenching his fists, and as soon as the go-ahead was given, he made his seals, launching several shuriken at Sasuke. The brunette dodged, taking his katana out of the seal, to immediately launch himself at the enemy. Yoroi was able to repel the attack with a kunai and grab Sasuke first by one hand, and then the other, literally sucking chakra from the echiha. The katana disappeared, hiding in the seal, and the brunette pulled his opponent towards him, straightening his leg. Yoroi received a precise blow to the chest, flying back, and Sasuke was finally able to escape. Akato managed to suck out enough chakra, which was undoubtedly a disadvantage, but the Echiha still had an advantage, long-range techniques. He made seals, releasing phoenix flowers, which the enemy barely managed to dodge, and several shuriken followed them. Yoroi grinned as he watched the weapon fly by, but didn't notice the thin line that was attached to the shuriken. Sasuke skillfully pulled the threads, launching shurikens in a circle, entangling Akato. The genin tried to cut the line, but the Echiha pulled the enemy towards him with all his strength, slamming his fist right into the face. Hey 8 could only state the victory of Sasuke, who proudly climbed onto the balcony, accepting congratulations. You did a good job, Naruto praised him, lightly touching his shoulder. Even without the Sharingan, she noted. I decided to leave it for the third round, the Echiha said, smiling lightly. Don't give in either, sister. Sasuke Kuen, Sakura turned to him, let me heal you, the pink haired girl suggested. No need, the guy objected softly, save your strength for your duel. Haruno nodded timidly, blushing slightly, and turned her gaze to Uzumaki, who patted her shoulder approvingly. You're not going to lose to Ino, are you? The blonde asked, nodding her head at the scoreboard. The Kunoichi was surprised, the fight between Shino and the guy from sound ended very quickly and new fighters had already been called to the arena. Naruto doubted the accident for a moment. Such selection, watching how two bosom friends stand in front of each other. The fight will be boring, of course, Kakashi breathed, exchanging glances, with Asuma. Inochan's clan techniques are not suitable for such battles, and Sakura is a medic, but not a fighter. Believe me, Kakashi and I, I the girls will be able to surprise you, the blonde objected, watching as her rivals tied their hatayate on their foreheads. To Sasuke's great joy, the girls did not share his skin on the battlefield, especially since Sakura had already realized that this was the wrong path to the Echiha's heart. And she fought desperately, hoping to earn praise, by concentrating chakra in her fist. Still, Sakura has excellent control, Sasuke chuckled, carefully watching the fight. Yamanaka tried to reach her with a throwing weapon, but, trained in sparring with Ten Ten, the pink-haired one skillfully dodged. They're being careful, Kakashi noted after five minutes of the fight. They are afraid to seriously hit each other. Sasuke, Uzumaki lightly pushed her slightly embarrassed brother on the shoulder, do you want to help? You're so nasty sometimes, the Echiha said displeasedly, but shouted loudly from the balcony, Sakura, you can't lose. Sasuke's words had a colossal effect on her, Haruno confidently raised her head, hitting several shuriken with a kunai, and rushed forward, creating an illusory clone. Ino mockingly said that she couldn't be caught like that, but the clone, to his surprise, jumped high up, ending up behind Yamanaka. Ino was distracted by the copy, parrying a direct attack with a kun, and snatched a powerful blow from the original. Now she didn't hold back her power, Hataki stated, watching Hayat announce Sakura's victory. If she had Tsunade as a mentor, she would make an excellent combat medic, with her talent for control. Sasuke, try never to make Sakura angry, Naruto joked, enjoying the surprised expression on her brother's face. After the fight between Yamanaka and Haruno, there followed a fight between Kankoro from the sand and his second teammate Kabuto. 
The puppet master cleverly outwitted everyone by replacing himself with a doll. This fight did not cause much excitement, but the fight between Ten Ten and Tamari was considered unsuccessful. Gara's sister turned out to be the worst opponent for Takahashi, simply blowing away all the weapons that the brown haired girl sent, and also dared to swing a fan at Ten Ten after the victory. Rock Lee stood up for his friend with dignity, intercepting the blow. The sixth match, Shikamaru vs. Kintsuchi of Sound, was worth watching for a simple example of how good strategy and forethought can replace many techniques. The first thing that came to Shikamaru's mind was to immediately use the shadow imitation technique, to which Kin launched two Sanban at him with and without a bell, using the ringing of bells akin to Jinjutsu. Still, Nara, he managed to catch her with shadows, imitating the shadows from the fishing line that was attached to the Sanban. As a result, Kin, repeating Shikamaru's movements, hit her head well against the wall, causing laughter from a good half of the hall. And Naruto smiled widely when he saw his opponent, Kiba Inazuka. Naruto-san, I ask you not to give in, the genin asked seriously, not even thinking about giving up. I won't, Kiba Kuen, Uzumaki smiled easily, figuring out the tactics of the fight with the heir to the dog breeding clan. Kiba was a capable shinobi, but a clear disadvantage in battle was his emotions and temper, he had a hard time calculating the enemy's moves, relying on brute force. Which is what the blonde wanted to take advantage of. Kiba did not hesitate and threw a smoke bomb at the girl, turning Akamaru into his clone. A kunai suddenly appeared from the haze, flew up with a precise throw, and secured itself on the ceiling, making Hitaki laugh next to the uncomprehending Genin. Kiba and Akamaru attacked together using Gitsuga and hit the target. When the haze cleared, everyone saw three identical genin looking at each other. This is funny, Naruto-san, Kiba drawled. I know perfectly well where you are, sensing the smell, he attacked one of his copies, firmly convinced that it was Uzumaki. The copy did not dodge and flew back, but turned into Akamaru. Here Kiba's temper played a role, that he did not believe for sure, but attacked the second one, who also turned into a Nin Ken. Sasuke grinned at his sister's cunning, which combined two completely simple techniques, cloning and transformation. One of the Akamaru dissipated, and at the same moment, air bullets that Naruto had fired fell on Inazuka from above, hanging from the ceiling in the place where the kunai had previously been. Sometimes I think Naruto is the only one who seriously uses henge, Kakashi said, amazed at the simplicity of her plan. Even in the haze that Kiba created, she used a clone, and she threw a henge of a kunai, which she secured to the ceiling. All that remains is to play on Kiba's emotionality and knock out the Nin Ken, Hataki finished, turning his gaze to the defeated Inazuka. Sister has excellent control over her clones, Sasuke nodded, and her imagination leaves no chance. Have you decided to leave the Fuen for the third stage? The Echiha asked smiling when the blonde climbed onto the balcony. I'll follow your example, brother, Naruto winked, but stopped short when she saw the next pair of fighters. Hinata looked fearfully at the determined Niji, who turned out to be very pleased with his opponent. In the beginning, Niji tried to put pressure on Hinata psychologically, taking advantage of her fears to convince her that she would never win. However, after the angry screams of Naruto, Sakura, and Ino, she decided to fight to prove her courage. The Hyuga clan style was not as spectacular, but truly mesmerizing. They moved almost identically, but if Niji's attacks were rough and precise, then Hinata struck softly, flowing around the enemy like a stream. The power seemed equal at first, but Niji managed to interrupt Hinata's chakra flow, blocking her ability to use the soft palm. Hinata stood up over and over again, not paying attention to the contemptuous comments that her opponent made. Naruto grabbed the railings with a death grip, feeling the growing anger and disgust towards the guy who mercilessly beat her relative because of the prejudices of the side branch. Uzumaki could not stand it, jumping down after her mentors to stop the final blow, which could easily end the life of the exhausted Hinata. I see the Jounin are indulging the main branch, Niji chuckled, watching the horde of Jenin approach the girl who had already fallen unconscious. I see you, Niji Kuen, have a thing about this? Naruto said, holding his hand tightly. First of all, she's just your sister. What do you want? 
the guy said rudely, pulling out of the grip. Keep hanging around with these weaklings, you idiot, Sasuke reacted with lightning speed, but Naruto stopped him, calling for calm. Nijikuen, don't forget, said Gai-sensei, placing his hand on the student's shoulder. Nothing, Gai-san, the girl smiled easily. At the third stage, we'll see which of us are weaklings. I officially declare that I want to kick his ass, Sasuke hissed as he climbed onto the balcony. You'll still have time, Uzumaki assured him, catching the gaze of Gara, who was called to fight with Lee. The fight turned out to be intense, Gara's perfect defense succumbed to the blows of Lee, who gave it his all, but the Sandman was able to capture him in one of the techniques, warning the examiner that if he carried the matter through to the end, he would kill his opponent. At this point the fight was stopped, and Gara caught an approving smile from the Uzumaki. After watching the quick fight between Cheiji and the last of the sound team, in which Dosu Kinyuta won, the ten winners went downstairs, standing in front of the Hokage. To determine your opponents in the third stage, please draw a number one by one, he pointed his hand at Anko, who was holding a small box. The final will take place in a month. You need this time to heal and think through the strategy of the fight. Having written down all the numbers, the Chunin showed them the diagram of the fights, the fight between Naruto and Niji was the first, then the fight between Sasuke and Gara. Shino became Kankuro's rival, and his sister, the disgruntled Shikamaru. Sakura ended up last in the battle against Dosu Kinyuta. Team number 7 advanced in full force, which undoubtedly pleased Naruto. She looked at Niji, promising herself that she would definitely win. When Naruto and Sasuke, tired and dirty, fell home after the second stage, a faithful raven was patiently waiting in the backyard, holding another note tightly in its beak. By some miracle, Itachi heard about Orochimaru's presence at the exam, which made him want to meet quickly, so that her husband was waiting for her in Soraku two days later. The news awakened hidden reserves of strength in the tired girl in order to quickly solve all the problems by carving out a free day for herself. Fortunately, being a genin and also a participant in the third stage, Uzumaki could slip away outside the village at least for a day, however, Kakashi was going to take Sasuke for a whole month, which the blonde wanted to take advantage of. So far, everything has been going well, yesterday Gara and his team left the village, promising the girl to practice controlling the bijou. Then Kakashi and Sasuke went outside the village to train with lightning, which could be advantageous in a fight with sand the Uchiha was already eager to show off with his reiju blade, so Hitaki was busy for the entire preparation period. Naruto still hoped to get a couple of lessons from Jiraiya, who was spotted near the ANBU village, and out of old friendship they whispered about this to Kakashi and Ai. The only one left restless was Sakura, who quickly found something to do in the hospital, concentrating her energy on improving her medical skills. Uzumaki, of course, asked, sitting in the kitchen with a mug of fragrant tea, whether Sakura was thinking about her fight with Dosu, but the pink-haired girl decided for now to raise her medic rank from D to C, thereby gaining more authority in her work. The blonde was involuntarily surprised by such prudence. But advised, nevertheless, to think through at least some strategy so as not to give up so easily. Haruno smiled slyly and promised to surprise, and then rushed back to help in the hospital after the second stage there were more patients. So, after two tiring days full of clan business, early in the morning, Naruto sneaked through the clan territory, making her way to the familiar passage to Soraku. The sun was just rising, and the girl had already managed to visit her ancestors in the clan temple, thanking them for their help and praying for her loved ones. Old man Yamada and Sakura, in case of anything, had to spread the word that Naruto-san went to Kakashi-san and Sasuke-kun to supervise the training, ensuring her a calm day. Again everything was like the first time, the heart jumped out of the chest furiously, tearing heavy breathing from parted lips, the hatch almost broke off its hinges under the force of fragile hands, releasing Naruto into the light of a familiar alley. Even without Kurama, the burning chakra was felt strongly, and even more so a strong hug. Itachi hugged her greedily, inhaled her scent, lightly touching the personal sun that zealously pressed against her thinner body. I have very little time, he exhaled, hot breath scorching his ear. Naruto nodded obediently again, finding herself in the familiar room where their amulet was still swinging. 
You weren't able to take a long time off? The girl asked, looking into the dark eyes. No, Itachi whispered, carefully squeezing his dark face in his hands. I need to tell you something and I'll leave, he began, releasing his wife. Something happened? Uzumaki became worried, involuntarily examining the brunette for wounds. It will happen soon, he answered seriously. Orochimaru haunts me, I heard out of the corner of my ear that he showed up in the exam. Tell me, did he find you? Yes, the blonde admitted, immediately correcting herself so as not to see the excitement on his face, everything is fine, Sasuke was not hurt. And you? Asked the husband. We managed to sneak away, before the ANBU arrived, the girl lied, without blinking an eye. He wants to get Sasuke, he needs the Sharingan. Snake, Itachi was dizzy with anger, clenching his fists, but Naruto lightly touched his pale cheek with her lips, taking all the anger upon himself. I can't protect Sasuke forever, the girl said in a calm tone, something needs to be done with the Sanin, otherwise he will put one of his seals on Sasuke. We need to use Koto Amatsukami on Orochimaru, Itachi suddenly said, looking confidently at his surprised wife. This will be the only way out, the brunette admitted. I still have no idea how to do this, but it's obvious that he will show up at the third stage, the Uchiha reasoned, based on the rumors that reached Akatsuki. Suspicious activity in the newly created village of Sound, the sudden appearance of the Sanin himself and problems in the village of Sand gave rise to certain thoughts. But how? Naruto breathed. You can't show up in the middle of an exam. I want you to do this, he squeezed her forearms tightly, trying to remain calm. If there is an opportunity, suddenly you find yourself very close to him all you need to do is release the raven. Will a genjutsu work without a bearer? The blonde doubted. The power of Shursui's genjutsu is that it can be tuned to a specific command. This eye contains the message, to take care of Kanoha, and I can make it activate on the first one it hits, Itachi explained. I'll only have one try, the girl nodded understandingly, staring resolutely at her husband. I will do it. I just ask, the Uchiha suddenly continued, lowering his hands to grab the dark palms, do this if you have the opportunity. I know you're strong, but I don't want to lose you, with every word his voice turned into a whisper, making her heart clench harder. What will happen to you? She asked, touching her chin with her lips. Don't worry, Itachi replied softly, capturing her lips with his. Naruto was thrilled under his caress, opening up in a reverent kiss, but her intuition screamed that this was farewell. Tell me the truth, Uzumaki asked sharply, pulling away. I feel like you're not saying enough, the blonde excitedly stared at her calm husband, who was smiling slightly. Don't worry, was all the Echiha said, but the girl was even more convinced that he called her for a reason, her husband was saying goodbye. Itachi, her voice filled with wild notes of irritation, anger, and despair, don't be silent. Tell me the truth. Don't worry, the guy repeated like a mantra, trying to squeeze his wife in his arms, but she suddenly began to break free. Don't tell me that, Naruto hissed, feeling tears pooling in her throat. What happened to you? You put on the mask again, not letting me near you, the hot tears could no longer be held back, flooding your dark face. Don't you dare do this to me, Uzumaki didn't scream, she couldn't, she just pulled away from her husband, looking into the very recesses of his dark eyes. Naruto, his voice took on cold notes, calling his wife to submission, I will do whatever it takes to keep you, Sasuke, and the village safe. That's enough, she couldn't restrain herself, lightly hitting the man's chest with her fist. Stop being a hero, Naruto cried, frantically shaking her head. Please, that's enough, she asked more quietly, exhaustedly diving into the arms. I am an Uchiha, but I am not one of the women of your clan, I will not remain silent, the blonde objected, but Itachi only held her tightly in his arms, stroking her blonde head. That's why I loved you, he breathed, raising his tear-stained face, to himself. Do you remember what we talked about when I left? You promised that you would protect the village inside while I did my duty outside. Then I didn't think there was anyone who could do it, she objected hotly. But now there are many people in the village who are ready to defend the village. 
You raised them, the guy smiled slightly, wiping away tears with his thumb. But this is my duty, my responsibility, I have no way back. All I ask is that you live for us, okay? Perhaps in the next life we will find peace, but now I am ready to die for you. Please accept this as my gift, Itachi carefully touched his dark forehead with his lips, scorching his reddened face, with his breath. I don't want to believe that nothing can be changed, Naruto sobbed convulsively, shaking her head negatively, but I will do everything to make the world worthy of your sacrifice. If I have the slightest chance to return home, I will take it. And you wait for me, okay? Itachi asked, touching her hair for the last time. I will wait, today, tomorrow, even forever, the wife promised, closing her clear eyes. They were already waiting for her near the house. The tall figure of a man loomed over a fragile girl, whom Uzumaki recognized as the granddaughter of the owner of one of the hotels in her quarter. Akemi, blushing, answered something to the stranger, clearly hoping for the speedy return of the mistress of the house. Master Jiraiya, Naruto shouted, drawing attention to herself, there is no need to embarrass young beauties, the man turned around, staring at the blonde in surprise, and Akemi exclaimed joyfully. Naruto-san, we need your help, she stammered. There, artisans from the land of tea came to Aji-san and wanted to open a shop near Miho-san's stall. So my grandfather sent me for you, they are waiting at the hotel. Hi, the blonde nodded, turning her gaze to Jiraiya, who immediately reassured him, assuring him that he would wait. Please come into the house, you can drink tea or have a snack, and I'll be right there, Naruto smiled, opening the door. Following the tip of the blonde braid that flew away with another girl into the shopping arcade, Jiraiya entered the house, throwing off the getta at the threshold. The man looked around with interest, the home was lived in, cozy and bright. Flower pots bloomed lushly on the window sills, and a maneki Niko waved his paw nearby, the walls in the living room were hung with photographs, which attracted Jiraiya most of all. He looked at them either the young Naruto in the company of Jounins at the training ground, or the older one, surrounded by children at the festive table, then alone in a cute yukata for the new year, or with a black-haired boy at home. The wedding photograph stood out in the center. Jiraiya frowned, remembering the stories of the Jounin that he had met on the way here, they were extradited into the Echiha clan, and then left alone with the younger heir while her husband was in the ranks of the criminal organization. But in the photograph she did not look unhappy, on the contrary, she stood out against the solid black background of the Echiha clan as a bright snow-white spot, smiling widely. The man forcibly tore his gaze away from the bride, turning it to the groom who was sitting next to him. Even in the most remote wilderness on the borders of the Country of Fire, they knew about the young genius of the Echiha and the sad fate of the entire clan. To everyone, Itachi was a madman who killed his entire family on a whim, but only a few knew the truth. He turned away from the photo, feeling sorry for the two children that they turned out to be just weapons in the hands of old people. On the table were scrolls and books that Naruto had forgotten to put away the day before, behind the sofa was the door to the backyard, and to the right was the kitchen. Remembering his hostess's permission, Jiraiya decided to make tea while rummaging through the kitchen shelves. The girl had a very large quantity of tea different varieties and compositions in small tin jars occupied an entire shelf. Choosing something simpler, like green and jasmine, Jiraiya looked into the refrigerator, robbing the family of a few rice balls. You haven't been fed for a long time, have you? Naruto asked with a laugh as she appeared in the kitchen. You cook well, the man shrugged, devouring the third on a jirai. Just call me Jiraiya and use your first name. Hi, Naruto agreed easily, pouring water into the kettle. What is your purpose for coming? I found out that Orochimaru showed up in the exam and decided to visit his beloved village, he drawled. And I came to see you because I've been wanting to for a long time. Yes? Uzumaki stared questioningly. And for what? Are you angry? The man asked, looking at his goddaughter's dissatisfied pug. At you? She asked, waving her hand. Why should I be angry? Or did your conscience suddenly torment you that you did not stay in Kanoha to raise your student's daughter? Somewhere like that, the man admitted, slightly confused. 
I'm not angry, Naruto nodded, after a brief silence. Life with a child is not for you, but I don't regret mine, I'm grateful for what I have. Wow, you've grown so much, Jiraiya chuckled. I had to, Uzumaki spread her hands. But now I won't let you go so easily, the blonde scolded him with her finger, smiling widely. Yet Jiraiya was a master of espionage, for a reason. His life was not exemplary, full of chaotic moments in the search for truth, he skillfully played, hiding behind a thousand masks that he managed to create while wandering around the world. He easily read people, distinguished between lies and truth, saw the most hidden inside, and, looking at Naruto's smile, he clearly saw tears. This was why she liked Kushina, that she never showed her tears to others, even near Minato, hiding her weakness behind happiness. For some reason, Uzumaki was unlucky in love. They loved more than anyone, but they suffered from the same love, constantly bumping into obstacles that fate had in store for them. Naruto sparkled with light, radiated a barely noticeable warmth, but inside she cried like a child. Don't look at me like that, the girl asked, biting her lip. Don't be sorry, this is the worst thing you can do, Jiraiya stopped short, realizing that people like her do not tolerate pity. Just help, this will be enough for me, Naruto barely smiled, letting his godfather into the circle of close people. Jiraiya let out a short laugh, feeling the weight of many years, gradually lifting off his shoulders. The girl was not angry with him, she lived her life, relying on herself, learned independence, thinking like an adult at not quite thirteen. She didn't need a father or a grandfather, just someone she could trust. And she confided, she told about the meeting with Orochimaru, about his interest in Sasuke, and a rough plan on how to stop one of the Sanans. Jiraiya was easily able to remove the seal of the five elements, and listened attentively, noticeably tense from the conversation about his former teammate. A sore subject, yes, but Naruto didn't blame him. An ordinary shinobi will have the courage, to confront enemies, but not everyone can decide to go against a friend. Uzumaki took this part of the plan completely upon herself, and made Jiraiya promise to teach a couple of lessons, to which the man readily agreed, postponing this matter until tomorrow. Promising to stop by for dinner, the Sanan left to run errands, leaving Uzumaki alone. In an instant, memories of the morning fell upon her, at first bright, full of tenderness, which her husband's embrace, gave her. And then tears and fear firmly settled inside her, forcing her to burn all the forces in the world for treating them this way. He and Itachi have no peace in this life, they sacrificed everything to give this world a chance for salvation. It was easier to think alone. However, they chose this path for themselves long ago, and their happiness was left behind, sewing up their souls with warm memories from the past. Tears, alas, will not change anything, they have a price when you cry with happiness. All that was left was to wash off the fatigue, exhale deeply and move on with life as promised. But first, take a little rest and meditate, Karama was already waiting in the subconscious. Naruto stood in an even row of genin who were waiting for the start of the third stage to the accompaniment of excited spectators, who filled the entire stadium. Above all, there was a bed for noble guests, among whom the old Hokage and the Kazakage sitting next to him stood out. Sasuke was slightly nervous, noticing that his opponent, Gara, had not yet appeared on the battlefield, although his match was second in line. Tamari and Kankuro steadfastly ignored Uzumaki's questions, which only increased the blonde's suspicions. However, her fight was the first, and there was no point in thinking about the problem in advance. Naruto listened to the opening words of the Hokage and Genma, who turned out to be the judge of this stage, waking up only from the Echiha's approving pat on the back and a timid wish of good luck from Sakura. Niji stood opposite, full of confidence in his victory, which caused a condescending smile on Shiranui's face, he didn't know about the Uzumaki's abilities. I think you want to say something? Hyuga chuckled. I've already said everything, Naruto answered, remembering her morning conversation with Hinata. Two hours earlier. Full of ideas and energy, she went to her favorite training ground before the start of the third stage. The month turned out to be very productive, despite the deplorable beginning, having cried a lot with clear eyes, Naruto came to life again. 
Having met Karama after several days of silence, she suddenly remembered why she started training, why she agreed to marriage, and what she valued in her husband. Naruto knew what she lived for, what she strived for, and what she promised her furry friend when she was four years old. The fox did not scold her, smiled knowingly, as much as it is possible for the nine-tailed demon to smile, and uttered further wisdom, miraculously finding more and more strength in the girl. The fallen tree reminded her of the first day of their training Uzumaki begged the Sanin for a summons and on the fifth day, having gained a huge amount of strength, she was able to summon the toad boss, who was skeptical about the new owner of the summons. Naruto, with enviable stubbornness, stayed on the back of Gamambunta, who galloped briskly on the outskirts of the village, hoping to throw off the annoying fly, but in the end he recognized the blonde, accepting him into his clan. After placating the girl with the promise of learning the toad sage mode in a few years, Gamambunta disappeared into a haze, leaving Naruto with a notable exhaustion. Then Jiraiya. After listening to her story about controlling the Kyuubi's chakra, also promised to give up the key to the seal, but he just needed to grow up a little. Karama, surprisingly, agreed with the master and did not object. So the Sanin and his student began to study Fuinjutsu, here Naruto perked up because, in fact, she learned the subtle art from scrolls and books, experimenting very carefully, and here was a living master who himself had studied with Uzumaki for a long time. Yesterday, he and Jiraiya worked hard trying to finalize her block seals, they really wanted to prolong the effect of such fuin and, if possible, make the seal work on the entire body, and not on an area. So far, it hasn't worked out very well, the duration has increased to 10 minutes, but with the distribution everything is bad. The chakra that was put into this seal ended up exactly at the place of application, without having time to be distributed throughout the body. However, it is a matter of technique and stubbornness, to choose the right ligaments and blocks, calculate the amount of chakra and find a balance between duration and effect. But most of all, Jiraiya helped her with the tactics of fighting the Hyuga. The boy's clan style would be useless in battle with long-range techniques, and even more so if barriers and fuin were used. She was not alone at the training ground, upset Hinata leaned against one of the wooden posts, sighing heavily. Hinata-chan, have you been discharged yet? The blonde asked, moving closer to the girl. Naruto-san, she squeaked, hello, Hyuga bowed respectfully, putting her fists to her chest. Yes, I was allowed to go see the third stage and I'm waiting for Kiba, the brunette answered, blushing slightly. Will you root for Shino? Uzumaki suggested, noticing the tight smile. Hi, Hinata agreed, then added, both for you and Sakura-chan. Shikamaru-kun and Sasuke-kun. I would like you all to win, she smiled lightly, but could not deceive Naruto. You're upset about Niji, right? Ano? No no. The Kunoichi shook her head. No, no, I understand why Niji and Aisan is so angry. And you? Uzumaki asked, and noticing the misunderstanding, she clarified, are you angry with him? No, the girl completely drooped, hiding her eyes behind her bangs. I have no reason to be angry, but Niji and Aisan is angry with the entire senior branch. He considers me weak, unworthy to belong to the main branch. He's right, she sobbed, wiping her eyes with her fist. Tusan also considers me weak and unnecessary, training only Hanabi-chan. You know, Hinata, Naruto began, squatting down in front of the crying girl, it seems to me that their vaunted Byakugan does not see the obvious. You are strong, stronger than all of them combined, Uzumaki said, looking straight into lavender eyes. They can train as much as they want, improve in all the clan techniques, but they will never gain the strength that you have. What is this? Hinata sobbed, not taking her eyes off the blonde. Forgiveness, Naruto answered, lightly touching her trembling shoulders. I once said these words to Sasuke, and now I'll tell you, it's the prerogative of the strong to forgive, the weak simply don't know how to forgive. Do you think this is strength? She asked, biting her lip. I believe it, Uzumaki breathed. I believe in forgiveness, that this is the path of truth. If everyone in the world were so strong that they learned to forgive with sincere repentance, then it would be easier for everyone. 
They say I'm too soft, the girl admitted. Maybe this is for the better? Naruto chuckled. Gentleness cannot be broken. Think about it, if you compare Niji, he's like a stone, strong, it seems eternal, but if you throw him into something harder or throw him off the highest cliff, he might break, the blonde suggested, noticing the enlightenment on girl's face. If we compare you, then. Something like a rubber ball, Naruto shrugged, smiling, even more. Maybe not the most beautiful comparison, but still. Throw a rubber ball as much as you like, from any height, it doesn't care, it will just obediently spring back and jump on. Understand? Hinata nodded timidly, and Naruto continued, they confuse concepts, they make false accusations against you because they see that you are different. You have something they will never have so easily. I wouldn't convince you of your strength if I didn't see how desperately you fight, you stood until the end in the battle with Niji, passed the exam with your team, and didn't give up. And who else is weak? The blonde finished, hugging the young Hugo lightly. Thank you, Naruto-san, the brunette breathed, wiping away the remaining tears. I will be strong, but in my own way, Hinata promised. Now. Let's see if the Underheim is capable of something more than shadow clones and henge, Niji chuckled, bringing Naruto back from his memories. He took a clan stance, activating the Byakugan, and the girl instantly threw a smoke bomb and created several clones, sending them to the arrogant Hyuga. Five blondes confronted the brunette, launching kunai, but he dodged the blows with enviable ease, throwing the weapon away, and soon disincarnated all the copies. And it's all? He drawled. I see everything. Talent is determined at the moment of birth. Do you want to say that a person has no chance of becoming strong thanks to only desire and perseverance? Empty chatter was now playing into Naruto's hands. I want to, Hyuga nodded. A person's fate rules over him, only those who are destined to become great become great. And I'm sure that just a wish can change fate, Uzumaki answered firmly folding seals to summon several more clones that scattered around Niji. All copies at one moment released air bullets, surrounding Hyuga from all sides, but he did not dodge, using Katen a technique of the elder branch. They call you a genius, Naruto said intelligently, calming down, but you are still far from that title. For a genius, your horizons are still very narrow. I was able to learn the techniques of the main branch, this is already an indicator of my strength. Niji raised his chin. Isn't this proof? Uzumaki objected, we just have to wait a little longer. Fate left you in a side branch, but your desire for strength and recognition brought you out of the shadows, you were able to learn the style of the Elder One. No matter what I can do, he said, taking off his Hatai 8, no matter what techniques I master, will not change the fact that I will always remain a bird in a cage, the stamp of submission was clearly visible on his pale forehead. This doesn't change the fact that there is always the opportunity to change your fate, Naruto objected, turning away from the cursed mark on the boy's forehead. Impossible. He shouted, rushing forward to the girl. Uzumaki did not dodge, falling under one of the heaven's touches. She barely suppressed a smile, stepping back slightly so that the guy could follow her. Niji struck so quickly that the blonde could only wait for the end, pulling him exactly where she needed it. Naruto collapsed, feeling the spots burning, as the hearth slowly died out. The fox growled impatiently inside, wanting to show the impudent Hyuga who knows how to resist fate, but Uzumaki quickly calmed him down, assuring him that the boy would understand everything. Groaning, she rose to her feet, looking firmly at the satisfied guy. You were just lucky to get into one of the noble clans, but, well, you are a rootless loser. My last name is Uchiha but by blood I'm Uzumaki, the girl spat out, smiling widely. Hi. She was rightfully proud of this barrier, the most complex technique of the clan from the old scroll that Jiraiya had given her a few weeks ago. The barrier required enormous concentration, which was a luxury in such a battle, but the original distracted Hyuga's attention with all her might, sending several clones under her favorite henge. The kunai that Hyuga repulsed at the very beginning of the battle were already blonde, and were fixed in the right places, remaining there to concentrate a sufficient amount of chakra. Making a seal, she turned the kunai back into their copies, 
and the four blondes around the perimeter simultaneously activated the barrier. Hugo found himself trapped in a tight cage, but did not want to just give up, activating the caton, but collapsed after the first turn. As soon as you perform any technique, the barrier eats up your chakra and becomes stronger, Uzumaki explained. Now you know what the Uzumaki clan is capable of, she smiled sweetly, releasing Kurama's light key. Niji was confused, staring at the girl who, it seemed, did not fall under 64 touches of heaven, because the fox was able to restart the Kirakuki eye. You turned out to be arrogant. I saw my fight with Kiba very well, I knew what to expect from me, but I still fell for the same hook, Naruto shrugged. I know how to hide chakra, not so well that I don't notice it at all, but that's the plus of the henge, that you won't be able to see the hearth right away. Moreover, you were completely distracted by me and our conversation, Uzumaki finished, nodding to Shiranui. The fight is over, Shiranui announced, jumping into the arena. Uchiha Naruto won. The crowd at the stadium roared, congratulating the winner. We ourselves create the future, then calling it fate, Naruto suddenly began, moving closer to the barrier. The easiest way to choose your path is to say that it is fate. But in the end, we all live with our own decisions, Hugo bowed his head, hiding from the blonde's piercing gaze. So stop blaming everything on fate, finally take everything into your own hands, and live the way you want it, Naruto made a seal of cancellation, dispelling the barrier and her copies. Niji silently clenched his fists, and then raised his pale eyes to the sky, birds were flying over the stadium. A smart bird will be able to open even the largest cage, the examiner drawled, casting a last glance at Hyuga. The Irayanan dragged Hyuga to the infirmary, and Naruto climbed up to the small balcony where the rest of the participants stood. Surprisingly, Gara never showed up, which caused indignation not only among Sasuke, but also among a good half of the audience who were most looking forward to this particular fight. The son of the Kazakage and the heir of the founding clan promised a very spectacular fight, apparently, the elite did not want to leave the audience without such a performance and postponed the fight. The fight between Gara from Hidden Sand and Uchiha Sasuke will take place last, Shiranui announced, drowning in the indignation of the audience. The next speakers will be Aburame Shino and Kankuro. Shino was about to enter the arena, but Kankuro's voice caught up faster. I give up. He shouted, causing Naruto even more doubt. Even at the fights of the second stage, Kankuro seemed to be a very boastful genin that he did not lose the opportunity to show himself. You couldn't say that Shino was the strongest opponent, but giving up so easily seemed very suspicious. Uzumaki turned her gaze to the stands, noticing Kakashi among the crowd, who nodded understandingly. Naruto hoped that her intuition was wrong this time, but there were too many suspicious things going on. However, Tamari did not refuse the fight, descending into the arena with one wave of her fan. Shikamaru exhaled in annoyance, complaining that other opponents gave up so easily. Shikamaru, I'll stop respecting you if you lose to this girl, the Uchiha muttered, literally pushing his friend out of the balcony. Tamari couldn't wait to wave her fan well, thereby forcing Nara to fight in earnest. Sasuke, Sakura, Naruto whispered, calling her teammates closer to her. After the exam, I'll treat you to yakisoba, the blonde said, glancing at Dosa Kinnett, who stood with his back to them, Naruto was ready to give his teeth for the fact that this guy tried to eavesdrop on them. Well, well, good luck. Even at the academy, they were told simple ways to encrypt information in dialogues. Having become a team, they came up with several keys for writing and for speaking. When talking, it was necessary to use simple, cyclic keys, which were easily read during dialogue, but for the enemy they were perceived as empty text, if you don't write it down, you won't be able to guess it. Or identify key phrases in advance. Something like, yakisoba, get ready, on command. So, Sasuke and Sakura understood the warning, smiled deceptively, anticipating yakisoba, and turned their attention to the arena, Nara was just driving the girl into a trap with the clan's technique. The kunoichi from sand was not distinguished by patience, akin to the wind, which she mastered perfectly, she drove the clouds that the lazy genin loved so much. But the tactics worked here too, the girl fell into a trap, cleverly set from the first minutes of the fight, 
but Shikamaru decided to stand out and surrendered himself, causing indignation among the crowd. Although Naruto was ready to give up a chunin vest for such a gesture based on one fight, Nara was the only genin who did not lose his head in a fight, but calculated the consequences as much as possible, making winning decisions in advance. Sasuke sighed, but did not say anything to his friend, who was clearly pleased with himself and went up to their balcony. But Tamari was already exuding anger, feeling insulted, having received victory in this way. Naruto understood her, this is not a victory, but a real defeat, where you were made a laughing stock, while being skillfully outwitted. However, the Echiha did not begin to lament too much, focusing with all his might on the duel between Sakura and Dosu. Uzumaki herself became interested in what a simple medic with good control could do against sound manipulation techniques. Kinyuta did not hesitate, sending a sound wave at Sakura, but the girl was able to dodge by launching several kunai, which were also easily discarded. Haruno frowned, dodging a series of sonic attacks, and once on one of the walls, she concentrated chakra in her feet to bounce off the stone surface. The jump was incredibly fast, giving her a second's advantage, but the sound was still faster, knocking Sakura to the side. The guy grinned, waiting for his technique to confuse her orientation, reaching the middle ear and vestibular apparatus, but Sakura, as if nothing had happened, rose to her feet, simultaneously healing her bruised shoulder with Shosen. Well, of course. Naruto exclaimed, understanding the girl's idea. A medic is a medic, she chuckled. Sakura was able to concentrate chakra at sensitive points in her ear so that the sound could not penetrate further. Wow, perfect control. Haruno created two copies, driving them in a circle, to launch and fire the weapon. The downside of the dosu technique is that it is a one-directional attack, but the genin was able to dodge most kunai and shuriken, receiving several shallow cuts. He was apparently tired of playing cat and mouse, so switching to close combat, dosu chased her into a tie, alternating with sound attacks. Sakura held on steadfastly, but missed several blows, giving the guy the opportunity to make a sound right in the chest the girl flew off to the wall, managed to group herself, but lost consciousness. Denma was about to announce the winner, but suddenly Kinyuta also fell dead, which caused surprise in the entire stadium. Shiranui had no choice but to declare a draw, recognizing both as losers. The Iranians wanted to take the girl to the first aid station, but Naruto, who was nearby, asked to treat the girl on the balcony so that she could watch her teammates fight. The doctors quickly revived Horno, who escaped with slight exhaustion and a dislocated shoulder, which was quickly set. Sleeping pills, Sakura answered sweetly smiling when asked about her opponent. All weapons are lubricated with sleeping pills, which acts at the slightest contact with the body. But I didn't calculate the duration of the hit, I didn't think I'd have time to pass out earlier she said upset, lowering her head. You showed yourself worthy, Naruto praised her. I even pulled it to a draw, the blonde noted, turning her attention to the arena where Gara and his mentor had just appeared. Sasuke, Sakura said timidly, be careful and good luck, the pink-haired girl wished. Thank you, the Echiha nodded, turning to leave. You did a great job, he added, causing the girl's face to turn an incredible shade of red. Naruto was playfully indignant about some guys beating around the bush with ladies in love. But quickly brought the weakened Haruno to her senses. The girls concentrated on the arena, like the entire stadium that had gathered today, it seemed, for one fight. The Uzumaki frowned, noticing that Gara looked intimidated, whispering something under his breath. The familiar aura of the one tail slowly spread around, causing the blonde to become even more worried. Tamari, Kankuro, what's wrong with him? Naruto asked, unable to bear it, but the brother and sister were so frightened that they could barely answer. He lost control again, Kuniochi squeezed out, turning her gaze to Uzumaki. After the second stage, Gara changed, he said that you helped him learn to control his power, but now he has become a monster again. Naruto swore muffledly, squeezing the handrails with trembling hands. The Echiha in the arena himself saw that something was wrong with Gara, dodging the sand that he was trying to grab into the vaunted sand coffin. 
the Sharingan and training with Kakashi made Sasuke fast, the San Genin could barely keep up with blocking the blows, becoming more and more irritated. At one moment, the brunette's fist reached its target, hitting him squarely in the face. Gara flew back, but the sand managed to catch him, anticipating the impact with the wall. The red-haired man growled, strangledly, forming seals, the obedient sand covered him completely, plunging Gara into a kind of spherical cocoon. Sasuke tried to hit the armor, but sharp spikes appeared at the same moment the Echiha touched the surface of absolute protection. He exhaled, calmly, and then jumped back to the far wall, taking out the sword his brother had given him from the seal. Waiting played into Sasuke's hands, he managed to concentrate on the technique, collecting chakra first in his palm, which sparkled with light, and then transferred to the blade, making a characteristic sound. Thousands of birds soared over the stadium, reflected in the blade of a thin sword. The Echiha accelerated well, holding his weapon tightly, and cut off most of the sand cocoon. The lightning struck Gara, wounding his shoulder, and the Jinchuriki, seeing his own blood, went completely berserk. Naruto was ready to go down to calm the One Tails, but Sakura suddenly grabbed her, releasing some chakra into her body. Naruto san, there is a Jinjutsu over the stadium the girl said, pointing to the stands, where civilians and shinobi were falling one after another. Gara is completely crazy, Haruno breathed, watching as Tamari and Kankuro grabbed their brother, who was painfully holding his wounded shoulder. Their commander remained in the arena, engaging in battle with Shiranui. I knew it, Uzumaki spat, instantly collecting her thoughts. Sakura follow me, she shouted, jumping down to Sasuke. Explosions were heard somewhere in the distance, and shinobi in ANBU masks appeared in the stadium, confronting other ninja without identification marks. A flaming barrier suddenly appeared on the roof of the Kage bed, which attracted Naruto in the first place Orochimaru began to act. Sakura, Sasuke, she turned her gaze to the Uzumaki teammates, you are after Gara, try to detain them. And you? Sasuke asked, clenching his fists. I need to help the Hokage, Naruto said, turning away. Hurry up before you lose track. The Genins, gritting their teeth, obeyed and went after the Sandpipers. Uzumaki, seeing Kakashi in the stands, who, together with Gai-sensei, were pushing back the sound shinobi, shouted loudly. Kakashi, Orochimaru, is on the roof. Hataki raised his head, watching as the blonde was surrounded by several opponents. The channels were still burning after the fight with Hyuga, but the girls zealously tried to escape from the encirclement. It even seemed that they were deliberately detaining her, knowing that she would be able to destroy the Sanin's barrier. Dodging the blow, Naruto made several seals, blowing two of the attackers towards the far wall, the third was taken by Kakashi, who arrived in time. Faster! Hataki commanded, giving the girl a chance to get onto the roof. Several ANBU looked helplessly at the barrier that surrounded Orochimaru and Haruzen. But what shocked them the most was the presence of the first and second Hokage. Uzumaki, one of the ANBU asked, can you remove the barrier? The blonde hesitated, recognizing one of the clan's techniques, the barrier of the four violet lights, which burned everyone who touched it. A huge advantage of the barrier is that those who imposed it ended up inside, so completely destroying the barrier is only possible if you eliminate one of the shinobi who was holding it. And she could do this by introducing dissonance into the barrier, these four were clearly not few and masters, just good students who had studied the carbon copy technique. Without even thinking about the nature and subtleties. If a ninja completely surrendered to the barrier, maintaining its strength with a constant infusion of chakra, then the cunning Uzumaki knew techniques on how to directly harm by supplying chakra to one of the corners of the barrier. I can, but I need a little time, she answered, approaching one of the bases of the barrier. Behind the translucent wall, stood a girl who stared in shock at the blonde, who made seals of concentration. Kurama slowly supplied poisonous chakra, and Naruto skillfully weaved it into the flow of the barrier, it turned out that the bright red chakra of the Kyubi crawled along the wall, corroding its channels. The girl behind the wall gritted her teeth, barely withstanding the pressure of demonic energy, but gave up, falling unconscious. The blonde grinned as she watched the barrier fall, 
but her face turned serious when she saw that the old Hokage had summoned Shinigami to the battlefield. She rushed forward, barely managing to warn the masked men so that they would not fall under the technique and would delay Orochimaru's minions, but froze, realizing that she was too late. The Shinigami cut off the flow of soul that stretched between Sarutobi and his student. Hokage-sama, Naruto ran closer, creating a clone that managed to catch Haruzen's body. Naruto, he croaked, burning from the pain of the famous seal on his chest and the laceration from Kusanagi's blade. I'm sorry that you, never became happy. I'm happy, she breathed, squeezing her old hand. And I will continue to be happy, Shinigami hovered over them, as if waiting for the girl, to say goodbye to her grandfather. Ajisama, Naruto smiled forcedly, now you can sleep peacefully. I will protect the village, she promised before her tired eyes closed forever. The Shinigami raised his scythe over the Hokage's body, cutting the threads of life. The spirit was silent, but Naruto imagined the smell of spices that were burned in memory of her ancestors, and her insides were enveloped in a familiar peace that overtook her only in the clan temple. The girl suddenly smiled, realizing one truth, she is Uzumaki, behind her is the Shinigami himself, who has guarded the red-haired demons throughout the ages. The spicy smell disappeared along with the spirit, and the clone still squeezed the old man's body, smiling forcefully. The original immediately rushed towards Orochimaru, hoping to use the last weapon. We should have finished you off in the forest, Orochimaru spat, watching as the ANBU tied up his accomplices. The old man sealed your hands, the girl saw dead limbs hanging lifelessly at her sides. You have nowhere to run, your invasion has failed. Are you enjoying your victory, Uzumaki? The Sanin chuckled. Why do you need to fight for this village? They made you into a weapon, forced you into marriage, and then took your husband away? What's keeping you here? He hoped to talk the blonde out, but her faith was unshakable. People, was all Naruto answered, folding the seals. The people I love give me strength. A raven burst out of her mouth, cawing piercingly, and flew up to Orochimaru, who screamed heart-trendingly, looking into the Sharingan just once. The raven, having completed its task, disappeared into the haze, and the Sanin fell, exhausted, fainting. What about him? The ANBU asked, coming closer. He'll wake up. It's better to take him into custody, but I don't think he'll harm anyone now, Uzumaki breathed. Turning to the clone who was still holding the body of the old Hokage in his hands. We need to take Hokage-sama's body. Is it possible to help him? The mask man specified. The girl shook her head negatively with regret, but the shinobi surprised her by approvingly touching the blonde's shoulder, removing his mask. You would make an excellent ANBU captain. Itachi's wife, the tips of his lips barely twitched, causing the girl to respond with a wide smile. She remained silent, letting out a strangled grunt, fatigue rolling in in waves, but she held on through Naruto's pure stubbornness. Somewhere far away, Sasuke and Sakura confronted Gara, which prompted the girl to move on. I'll leave them to you, she nodded towards Orochimaru and the four from sound, and she jumped down, where Kakashi ran up to her. Kakashi, Naruto said first, we need Pakan to track down Sasuke and Sakura. Hataki nodded, putting together the summoning seals, and a Ninken appeared in the haze and quickly picked up the Echiha's trail. The ANBU stayed behind to take care of the prisoners and the Hokage's body. What's wrong with Orochimaru? Sensei asked without slowing down. I used Shursui's eye to put a Jinjutsu on him, the blonde explained. Now he won't be able to harm Kanoha, no matter how much he wants to. Have you been planning this for a long time? The man even asserted more than asked. Not really, she admitted, frowning her light eyebrows. It was Itachi's idea. I can smell them getting closer, Pakin suddenly said, interrupting their conversation. There are a few more nearby, I don't know them. This is Gara and his brother and sister, Uzumaki guessed. Still far? No, they didn't have time to run far, the Ninken barked, accelerating. Naruto turned her gaze to the eastern wall, where a huge snake was raging, sweeping away entire buildings in its path, 
but suddenly a large toad fell on top of it and cut its throat. The blonde chuckled, noticing that the salmon was slightly late, but still came to the village. Packin jumped down from the branch, leading them to a small path where Gara lay exhausted, and Sakura leaned over him with a flaming shosun in her palms. Sister, Sasuke, breathed out with relief when he saw the blonde, everything is fine, Gara was able to come to his senses. Aren't you injured? Uzumaki asked, noticing clothes torn in some places. Sakura has already healed problematic wounds, but it's normal, the Uchiha waved his hand, continuing the story, we caught up with them, but Gara suddenly went berserk, throwing his brother and sister away. He attacked me, turning into something terrible, screaming that he wanted blood. I was able to cut off the sandy tail with my blade, but Gara managed to grab me. What happened to him? Naruto couldn't understand. I don't know, Haruno breathed. He suddenly calmed down and fell dead. I'm trying to cure him, but I can't figure out what exactly is wrong, the girl stubbornly moved Shosun over her body, trying to determine the cause of fainting. He's exhausted, but there's chakra, it feels like he's just fallen asleep. The boy sleeps under the influence of Shikaku. He must overcome the tailed one within himself. Sakura, that's enough, the blonde commanded softly. He needs time, and he will come to his senses. You did everything you could. Haruno obediently stopped, rising to her feet, but swayed from lack of strength. Sasuke managed to catch her, holding her by the forearm, which caused Sakura to blush again. However, the Echiha, tactfully not noticing this, turned to his sister again. His relatives wanted to escape, but Shikamaru and Shino stopped them, they are somewhere ahead, the brunette also said. Kakashi, will you go get them? Naruto asked, and Hitaki just nodded, following Pakan, who took a new trail. Let's go, we need to take him to the hospital, the blonde easily picked up Gara in her arms, and the Echiha sat Haruno on his shoulders, who barely squeaked. It had only been two days since the attack, but Kanoha was slowly coming back to life. Everywhere you could hear the rhythmic tapping of a hammer. The screams of workers and carpenters who were rebuilding damaged buildings. All the Jounin and Chunin were busy with work, the number of missions did not decrease, but the ranks of shinobi that could carry them out significantly thinned out. There were few dead, but there were a lot of injured, the hospital was buzzing like a hive, keeping up with treating everyone. Against this background, Sakura was not released from the tenacious clutches of the Iron Ean, and Kakashi disappeared on missions of higher ranks, so Sasuke could only help in the village, like all the genin. Outwardly, the village remained vulnerable, but the closest enemy, Suna, turned out to be no less battered. The Sand Village announced that Orochimaru had betrayed them too, killing the real Kazakage. And if Kanoha had the opportunity and power to prove who was right and who was wrong, then the matter would not be hushed up, just like that. In fact, the village leaders agreed on peace, giving up the San Jinchuriki, in exchange for a good ransom. Before this, of course, Naruto managed to meet with Gara, who was glaring in fear at the seventh team, absolutely not remembering the past few days. And indeed, the Iryanin found a huge amount of a powerful drug in the Genin's blood that caused madness, but Gara never remembered how it got into his body. However, when parting, he declared that he would become Kazakage, so that one day he could stand on par with Naruto at the Kage meeting. The Hokage's funeral passed calmly, the village said goodbye with dignity to one of the leaders who gave his life for the sake of its prosperity and, rolling up his sleeves, began to rebuild it from the ashes. Naruto was no less busy. Fortunately, her neighborhood was not damaged, but the hotels were full of people, the residents paid for the accommodation of workers who invited them from other villages. She did not hesitate to work there, helping in any way she could, often calling on a dozen clones to keep up with everything. Her second brainchild, the center, was also busy with work every day they distributed genin to work sites, calculated losses, drew up reports of damage, accepted requests for repairs, distributing urgent and what could wait a little. For two days, she ran around to her heart's content, only getting home in the evening to cook dinner and lie exhausted in bed. But the problems did not decrease. Kanoha could not exist without the Hokage 
and from Shikaku-san she heard that the elders see Jiraiya in this position, to which the blonde could hardly contain her laughter. The perverted hermit was the least suitable for this role, due to his instability. Just take the fact that for two days he never showed up in Uzumaki's sight to find out about Orochimaru. The snake Sanin had suddenly become the blonde's personal problem, refusing to talk to anyone other than the head of the Echiha clan. He was kept in the custody of ANBU led by Marino Abiki and the supervision of several doctors, the Sanin's condition turned out to be serious. Uzumaki, the man pronounced her last name with the special intonation of a hissing viper. Orochimaru-san, I thought that in two days you had already become accustomed to your future fate, Naruto sighed when she found herself in the Sanin's room on the third day after the attack. And what do you want from me now? He drawled displeasedly, sounding like an overgrown child, which brought a touching smile from the blonde. Stay in Kanoha, the girl shrugged. Only Tsunade-san can help you with your problem, and I heard out of the corner of my ear that Jiraiya wants to shift the Hokage's heavy burden onto her fragile shoulders. Tsunade will not return to Kanoha, for any price, the man objected. That's our concern, Naruto assured him. The Jinjutsu that has been imposed on you will prevent you from attacking Kanoha and harming its inhabitants in any way. The only way out is to stay here, Uzumaki began, becoming more and more serious with every word. Despite your forbidden techniques, some of your jutsu and medical developments could help Kanoha. If you agree to work for the benefit of the village, then I promise that I will agree with the Hokage to allocate you a research laboratory, Orochimaru was silent. Pondering the proposal. But only without experiments on living people if this threatens their life and health, she warned. Please think, the blonde added after a short silence, rising from her chair. It's better to work for us and do what you love than to resist a jinjutsu that will kill you over time. Why do you need it? A voice overtook her at the exit. The girl stopped, her hand on the doorknob. The fox's voice inside assured her that the cunning snake would never agree to work for the village, but would rather die. I already told you, Naruto said, turning her head to Orochimaru. I do everything to protect my village and the people that are dear to me. Sooner or later, the people you care about will die, the Sanand chuckled. If I do everything to protect them, then this won't happen, the blonde smiled. And if this happens, I will do everything to protect what they died for. This is my path, Naruto answered, leaving the room. The conversation with Orochimaru again reminded her of Itachi. Marino nodded respectfully to her on the way out, informing her that Master Jiraiya was looking for the young Uzumaki in the clan quarter. She thanked the Juanin, shaking off unnecessary thoughts and worries about her husband, after all, it was worth dealing with matters within the village first. Jiraiya probably wanted to take her with him to search for Tsunade to which the blonde would have willingly agreed, leaving the clan to Sasuke, who was gradually joining the affairs of the family. And indeed, the teacher was waiting for her at the threshold of the house, but there was no usual smile on his face, and his voice suddenly lost its enthusiasm and cheerfulness. He missed the greeting, asking permission to enter the house. Naruto perked up, opening the door, and seated the Sanin at the table, which even gave up his favorite tea and treats. First of all, I must give you this, he began, laying out an ordinary scroll on the table. What is this, old man? Uzumaki tried to put a smile on her face, but the unusually serious Jiraiya did not support her. This is complete information about Akatsuki for all the years of their existence, the master explained. Here is information about all participants, their abilities, and missions that they completed as part of the organization. So that's where you were, the blonde suddenly realized. I thought you were following Orochimaru. So it was, the man agreed, but I got on the trail of one of the mist's renegades. His name is Hashigate Kisame, and he is one of the two Akatsuki, not in this scroll. Are you saying that this scroll is from Itachi? Naruto asked. You saw him? No, he answered, frowning. This Kisame noticed me and told me that he and Itachi killed all the Akatsuki members. What? Uzumaki cried out, unable to bear it, jumping to her feet. Where is Itachi then? Please calm down, Naruto, 
the salmon touched the dark palms on which the girl leaned, hanging over the table. According to him, Itachi went to Hidden Rain, where the Akatsuki base is located. I immediately went there, and on the spot I saw that half of the village had been destroyed, the blonde fell back onto her chair, trying to restrain the trembling in her body. He killed the main one, who turned out to be one of my students. Three orphans from the rain became my first students, and after the end of the war I left them in the village. I couldn't imagine that they would become apostates. During the uprising against Hanzo Salamander, Yahiko died, and his friends began to avenge him by creating the Akatsuki organization. Itachi wrote everything down on a scroll. You still haven't answered where Itachi is? Naruto breathed, fixing her gaze on the Sanin. I'm late, Jiraiya admitted, unable to look at the student who could barely contain herself. The body went under the water, I couldn't pull it out. All that's left of my husband is a scroll? The girl asked, clutching the message in her hand. Yes, he confirmed, sincerely regretting. He fulfilled his mission and died with dignity. Are you sure he was dead? Naruto suddenly asked. If there is even the slightest chance that he is alive, I will raise all the ANBU and find him. Uzumaki was breathing heavily, biting her lip, and there were notes of hope in her voice. I'm sorry, Jiraiya really didn't want to kill the hope in the blue eyes, but it's better to accept the inevitable now than to suffer later. I couldn't reach the body, but in Sanin mode its chakra was not felt. Gamakichi and Gamatatsu tried to find him underwater, but the lake that surrounds the village is incredibly deep. Naruto stood with her back to him, her hands resting on the kitchen countertop. Is Itachi dead? A muffled voice came from behind, Sasuke entered the house at the wrong time. Sasuke, Naruto turned around, but the teenager trembled slightly, putting his hands to his eyes, bright red blood poured from the eye sockets, where the Manjiku Sharingan burned. Tsunade broke down. Tired of life and losses, fenced off with a huge wall, spending the same days in gaming houses and bars, trying to drown the wounds with alcohol. At times it helped, but her memory brought up memories about her younger brother who strived for her dream, about her loving fiancé who supported her, about her grandmother who loved her until her last day. About many whom she lost in the countless bustle of wars, victories, and defeats. All this sparkled in her hazel-brown eyes, smoldered dimly somewhere inside, flaring up more and more every year. Naruto looked at the tipsy woman in front of her, who was looking blankly at Jiraiya, and then at her. The thought rang convulsively in my head that it could turn into something like that, if only sadness and sorrow overpowered bright faith. Her companion, young Shizun, stared in disbelief at the toad hermit, who seriously offered the position of Hokage to the legendary loser. You've become completely insolent, she drawled, resting her head on her hand, you're dragging girls on official missions. This is my student, Uzumaki Naruto, he answered calmly, noticing the barely raised eyebrow. I see, Tsunade chuckled, pouring another glass. I refuse, she said, knocking over the bowl in one gulp. A familiar phrase, the man laughed. How many times have I asked you out on a date, but you still answered like that? And what is the reason, Tsunade-san? Naruto said, holding back her righteous anger. I don't need this, she shrugged. I don't want to throw my life down the drain, like the fourth and the third. My grandfather and the second wanted to bring peace to the country, but as a result they wasted their lives in vain and died without seeing the result of their labors, Senja said mockingly, trying to be impudent, but Uzumaki clearly saw that the woman was lying to herself. And you have changed, Jiraiya noted. Well, I'm already over fifty, the blonde breathed out, waving her palm. Age changes people. This also applies to Saratobi sensei An old man, he went to the front line. No wonder he died. The man could barely contain his anger, looking at Tsunade's condescending face, which she finished off with just one phrase. Funny job, Hokage. Only the last idiot would agree to this. Here Naruto could no longer restrain himself, jumping up from his seat to hover over the intoxicated woman. Her dark hands rested on the flimsy table, which creaked pitifully under her weight. She lowered her head, hiding her barely wet eyes. Anger had been accumulating in her for several days, 
mixing with bitterness, which made it very difficult for her to let go after the bad news about her husband. For days have passed since that Saturday morning. Uzumaki stood firm, not allowing herself to cry or be killed. She rejected rumors about her husband's death at the root, postponing it until better times, in order to announce him as a hero, and not an apostate. First of all, she was worried about Sasuke, who undoubtedly received a strong emotional shock from awakening the Manjikyu. The Iryanans were understandably silent, not pestering them with questions, but the boy did not come to his senses, suffering from phantom pains. Sakura did not leave his side, giving Naruto the opportunity to calmly leave the village for several days. No one knew the truth. But everyone noticed that the bright blue eyes had darkened, more reminiscent of the deep waters of the ocean than the cloudless sky. Yamada-san nodded understandingly, promising to look after the shopping district, and Shikaku Nara, having clearly learned something from Jiraiya, convinced the elders that she could also go in search of Tsunade. They meandered from one town to another, looking for traces of the legendary loser, who moved with enviable speed between gaming houses, collecting debts behind her back. Sanin was eager to talk about the loss, but Naruto quickly crossed the purely sincere impulse, asking for training instead of empty chatter. He began to teach her Raisingan, her father's technique, which, to her surprise, the blonde liked. The cunningly wise three stages forced me to use my brain, distracting me from my thoughts for a while. And yet, as she went to bed, the girl thought about her husband. How much did he love, dream and strive for peace and quiet, sacrificing himself for the good? What did you really want? Did you always know that such a day would come? When they first met, Naruto accepted his path, supported him, wanting the same thing, calm and peace at any cost, even her own life. Having fallen in love, it turned out that it is not so easy to accept his sacrifice for the benefit of everyone. Uzumaki was always ready to die, if only Itachi would live in a world without wars and conflicts. It is paradoxical that her husband wanted the same thing and did it for her sake. At first, life seemed to have no meaning anymore. She was unable to protect what she considered most valuable, but then she remembered the words that Orochimaru had once said. If I lose them, I will do everything to protect what they died for. The sadness receded again, giving way to a bright hope that his sacrifice would not be in vain. You shouldn't say that, Tsunade-san, Naruto said, looking up at her face. If the title of Hokage is a burden for you, then there are people in the world for whom it is a gift. Have the conscience not to neglect their aspirations. Very mature, huh? The woman chuckled, standing up behind her. She grew up quickly, but didn't notice the obvious? Where are your Hokage, huh? Where are their aspirations after the three great wars? They did everything to prevent them, and if this happened, they protected the others at the cost of their lives, the girl answered firmly. You can't protect everyone. The blonde shouted, easily getting excited by anger and rage at the stupid girl. I can't, Naruto agreed, clenching her fists. But I won't let their sacrifice be in vain. I won't let my dreams disappear so easily. Because I turned out to be too weak to live on, Uzumaki was no longer afraid to reproach the woman for weakness. Do you want to go out? Find out who is weak here? Tsunade's temperament was as legendary as the strength she strived to show. Okay, Naruto nodded, gesturing for her opponent to leave. Shizun jumped up after her, trying to reason with her mentor, looking pleadingly at Jiraiya, who seemed not to be surprised by this outcome. The two blondes stood opposite each other, preparing for a duel, but first Tsunade decided to ask one question that worried her. Why is the word Hokage, does it mean that much to you? My dream is to become Hokage, Naruto answered simply, feeling a sincere smile spread across her face for the first time in days. I promised this to one friend when I was four years old, that he was the first to believe in me, a light lit up in the solar plexus, and loud laughter rang out in the subconscious. Then I promised the guy that I would share the burden with him, protecting the village and its inhabitants. After all, I don't want my parents' sacrifice to be in vain, just like old man, threes. I want to become Hokage for the sake of everyone who is ready to protect the village next to me. The girl felt how emotions overwhelmed her, 
replenished in the voices of those who gave their lives for their dreams. Tsunade hesitated, which gave Naruto a chance to attack first, still to show off, in front of one of the Sanin, I wanted to finally bring her to her senses. Yes, and the Raisingan required publicity, although it was not yet fully ready, but then Uzumaki conceived a trick, hoping to play on the enormous passion of the legendary loser. The chakra formed in her hand with difficulty, it was difficult to concentrate all the power in a small volume, but here she was more likely to play than take the fight seriously nevertheless, Jiraiya managed to tell a lot about his fighting friend, and to figure out the plan for the brawl, the cunning Uzumaki managed to do it in advance. Senju was surprised to see the resemblance of a familiar technique, but quickly came to her senses, creating a huge crack in the ground with just her index finger, which completely broke her concentration. Jiraiya, why are you teaching her such techniques? Tsunade drawled. She still has time to grow and grow until she reaches the fourth. I'll prove it to you, Naruto began her little performance. I'll master the technique by tomorrow. Let's argue. This is where Senju got hooked, how good it is that she was not at all interested in the life of the village, not knowing either about the abilities or the life of the last of the Uzumaki. I'll give you until noon, and I'll put this necklace and my title on the line, she pointed to the pendant she wore on her ample chest. If you lose, I'll transfer part of my debts onto you, the woman summed up, not even listening to Shizen's lamentations. Deal with each other, Naruto agreed, holding out her dark palm. I don't go back on my words. Okay, girls, Jiraiya hugged the shoulders of two blondes who were making disgruntled pugs. Naruto, go with Shizen-chan, look for a place to stay, and Tsunade and I will drink a couple more glasses during the meeting, he patted the student on the shoulder approvingly. Winking discreetly, the plan was a success. Shizuna could only let her mentor go, hoping for the prudence of her old friend, and follow the determined Naruto, who had noticed a good hotel in the morning. Naruto chan, listen, the brown haired girl began hesitantly, mincing nearby, clutching a decorative pig in her hands, please give up the argument. I can't, Uzumaki nodded. I keep my word, and Kanoha needs a Hokage. But Tsunade-sama, put the necklace on the line. She's already a grown woman and has the right to decide for herself what to do, the blonde interrupted her. It shouldn't fall into your hands, Shizun insisted. It's cursed. The interlocutor shouted, stopping in front of the girl. Does not recognize any other master than Tsunade-sama. All its other owners, they, die, the brunette exhaled, lowering her head. I know, Naruto calmed down, touching her forearm. Jiraiya told me everything, Shizun peered into blue eyes that sparkled with warmth and light, but only in this way can we bring her to her senses. You also don't want Tsunade-san to wander around bars forever, and you to tag along with her? I don't want to, she breathed out after a pause. I have to tell you something else, Naruto, Shizun hesitated, squeezing the pig even tighter but Uzumaki didn't like the look, scared and indecisive. And what? The blonde insisted, feeling that a huge pitfall was about to emerge. Before meeting you, one of Orochimaru's students found us, the brunette decided. He offered Tsunade-sama a deal, she fell silent, gathering her thoughts, and Naruto did not rush her. She must cure Orochimaru, and in return, he will revive her uncle and her brother. The Uzumaki widened her blue eyes, trying to comprehend what had been said. The cunning plan was gradually falling apart, as soon as Tsunade succumbed to the memories of the past and agreed to the devil's deal. Orochimaru is in Kanoha, the blonde noted. Kabuto said that they were going to create a sabotage to free their teacher. Kabuto? The inconspicuous leaf genin turned out to be a double agent who was loyal to the snake Sanin. Most likely, Orochimaru managed to gather many henchmen during his exile, and they are now going to take revenge for the sensei, first of all, by taking the brilliant medic to their side. Thank you, Shizun-san. For telling me, Naruto bowed politely, walking around her interlocutor. Wait, an excited voice overtook her. What are you going to do? First of all, you need to learn the Raisingan, the blonde chuckled without turning around. Sasuke was seeing pictures of the past. Life flashed past him, Kachan's gentle voice echoed in his head, 
Toussaint's searching gaze touched something inside, but it paled in comparison with the memories of his brother. When he was very small, he sat on Onichan's shoulders, hugging his neck with thin childish arms. Everything seemed so ideal and naive, like the dreams that he never achieved. The light was leaving, leaving a bloody trail on the walls of the quarter, reflected in the hunched shoulders of the sister, who could not sleep, remembering her husband. He became stronger morally for her sake, hid his pain and worries, choosing a new aspiration for himself. I remembered that I knew how to smile, sincerely, but only to those who deserved it. He became part of a team that was barely similar to his family, Naruto replaced his older brother, Kakashi and Ai, a strict but loving father, and caring Sakura sometimes reminded him of the quiet mother who never left his crib. He felt that very soon he would become the Sasuke he was before the memorable night, and would finally be able to let go of the past, as he had promised his sister. The Echiha felt himself becoming stronger, and with strength comes responsibility for those you want to protect. And this list is no longer limited to just brother and sister. He felt new bonds that he had never had before, the sensible Shikamaru, Sakura, who was rapidly growing up, turning from a faded clownless girl into a strong kunoichi, even a noisy horde of genin took its place somewhere inside. All this kept him afloat, but the news of his brother's death crippled him. He woke up in the hospital, looking at the snow-white ceilings, and outside the window, Kanoha, which was slowly regaining its original appearance. One of the doctors entered the room, asking the obvious question about how he was feeling. Fine, said Sasuke. Is my sister here? He asked, impatiently. I don't know, Irony nodded his head, recording readings from the instruments. She hasn't come for several days. How long have I been here? Today is the fourth day, the medic answered, approaching the exit. It's too early for you to check out, he warned, stopping at the door. Your chakra is unstable, and the pressure in your eyes is higher than normal, so it's better for you to stay here, the man knew very well the customs of the genin, who considered themselves quite healthy. Wait, the Echiha shouted. Could you call Haruno? She works at the hospital, please, Sasuke asked, hoping that Sakura could call her sister. Okay, after thinking a little, Ironine said, leaving the room. The Uchiha exhaled, leaning back onto the pillows. The doctor was right, he still felt weak, and the channel seemed to be burning from tension, his head was buzzing, with a heaviness in his eyes that were watering. Thoughts swarmed in his head, not gathering in a heap, but the only thing he felt clearly was fear for his sister. Why doesn't he come? Fear rolled in, drowning out common sense, somewhere reveling in grief, unable to look at his face, which was painfully similar to her husband's face. Tired of the walls of their clan, where she found herself like a bird in a cage. Half her life, bears the yoke around her neck, that her brother so kindly left her. Fear gave way to the rage that was boiling inside him. He was angry, at himself for being too small, at his sister, for not resisting her husband at his brother, for weighing everything on someone else's shoulders. Sasuke didn't even notice how Sakura entered the room, holding a plate of apples in her hands. Sasuke Kuen, praise Kami, you've woken up, the girl smiled, sitting down next to the bed. Here, my mother gave me some apples to treat you to, she held out the slices, but the Uchiha roughly threw her hand away so that the plate ended up on the floor, crumbling into fragments. Sasuke Kuen, she breathed, pressing her hands to her chest. Where is Naruto? The Echiha interrupted her. She left the village, Haruno answered, looking at the evil guy in fear. I don't know where or why, but I asked to look after you. You don't need to look after me. Sasuke shouted, glaring from under his brows at his teammate. Gone? She abandoned me, just like her brother, he chuckled, barely clenching his fists. Don't say that, Sasuke Kuen, the pink-haired girl shook her head. Naruto-san would never leave you. Yes, what do you know? The brunette raised his tone. She's just like Itachi. They are both such geniuses, they look at me with condescension and mockery. Sasuke did not let up, spewing anger at the frightened girl. They betrayed me. Both. Never loved. Enough. 
Sakura couldn't restrain herself, lightly slapping Sasuke on the cheek. The Uchiha stared in shock at his teammate, who jumped up from her chair, clenching her fists. I don't recognize you, Sasuke Kuen. She didn't scream, but her voice was filled with tension. I don't know your brother, but I know Naruto san well. She always loved you more than anyone, protected you, and did so much for you. Do you dare to doubt this now? The girl shamed him, that the anger inside receded under the weight of conscience that he had snapped so childishly. In the forest of death, she fought for you to the last, not sparing herself, and you say that she doesn't love you because she left for several days on undoubtedly important business, and is not sitting here next to you. Sakura was burning with anger, no worse than Sasuke himself the day before, for the first time she was so angry with the brunette. She perfectly remembered Naruto-san's tired face as she brought her unconscious brother to the hospital. She remembered how the girl asked to take care of Sasuke while she was not in the village, as if they were again in the forest of death, where Sakura did not sleep all night while Naruto fought with Orochimaru. Sorry, the Echiha breathed out after several minutes of silence. I'm sorry you heard all this. Nothing, Haruno smiled weakly, sitting back on the chair. You needed to speak out, and it's better for me than Naruto-san, Sasuke hid his eyes behind his long bangs, and Sakura, after thinking a little, added, it's hard for her too, she lost her loved one, but she's trying to be strong, no matter what. You have to be strong for her too, but if you want to cry or scream, then call me, okay? The girl looked at the silent Echiha for the last time and rose from her chair. I'll leave you for a while. Thank you, she heard as she left, but Sakura did not turn around, closing the door of the room. Tears flowed naturally, and my legs gave way. Sakura slid down the wall next to her, burying her face and her arms crossed on her knees. This is what it means to be strong in the eyes of a man. Naruto returned to the hotel late in the evening, wincing funny. His palms burned from the burns, caused by pure chakra, but it was worth it, the Raisin succumbed to it. Hey, liar! Came from above. Get up here! Uzumaki looked up and saw Tsunade, whose drunken head was sticking out of the window of the hotel room. The girl laughed, waving her hand, and obediently climbed up the wall, jumping into the room, through the window. A liar? Naruto asked, sitting down on the floor near the low table. Yeah, the woman muttered, pouring a glass. If I had known, I would not have agreed to the argument. Jiraiya told you everything, didn't he? The girl nodded understandingly. He never knew how to drink, Tsunade shrugged, barely wincing from the taste of alcohol. And what? Do you want to see me in the Hokage chair? I already see, Uzumaki chuckled, forming a raisin gan in her palm. I always lose, Senju breathed, looking with displeasure at her dark palms, where the blue ball had just been. Yes, and you, Tsunade san, have already come to terms with this, even before my victory, the girl began. They would agree to Kabuto's proposal very stupidly, they can't be brought back to life. I would like to see them, the woman admitted, lowering her gaze. I would like to hug you, and say that I love you. They won't be happy about it after they know the price you paid for this meeting, Naruto countered softly. They died with honor and to disturb their souls, by calling them back to this world is, at a minimum, to show disrespect. Would you like to see your husband? Senju asked, raising her tear-stained eyes. I wanted to, Uzumaki nodded after a short silence. When I live a long life, make all our dreams come true and die in peace, among loved ones, I will definitely see him. Shinigami promised me a place nearby, the girl barely smiled, calmly looking at the surprised Tsunade. You look like her, she said, and noticing the misunderstanding, she added, like Grandma Mito. She's also an Uzumaki, Senju explained, closing her eyes. Told me about Shinigami, and took me to the clan temple, Naruto smiled wider, nodding understandingly. When my parents died, Mito raised my brother and me, replacing our entire family. And she said almost the same thing, we need to appreciate their sacrifice and protect their dreams. It's probably in the blood of all Uzumaki, Naruto easily took the woman's hand, looking into her eyes. You don't need to think about what you lost, think about what to do with what you have left. 
And all I have left is the village, Tsunade chuckled, exhaling heavily. And no one else is around. Same as Shizun, the girl suggested, she's very worried about you. She also has nothing to lose, so she follows me, Sentu smiled, sadly. He's keeping an eye on him. I feel sorry for her, she will remain the same old maid next to me. She will find a good groom in Kanoha, the Echiha laughed, and then added, Yes, we'll find one for you too, Tsunade rolled her eyes, waving her palm. This is without me, she objected. I'm only old enough to be a grandmother, the feminine woman chuckled, grabbing the girl by the end of her blonde braid. I can even pass for your grandmother. I don't mind, Uzumaki laughed, glad that the blonde's face brightened with a reciprocal smile. I missed granny, even in general, a woman's hand, the light eyebrows stretched slightly in regret, but Tsunade ran her hand warmly over the wheat-colored crown of her head. I'm a bad advisor, an even worse housewife, and I've already wasted my youth, but I'll help you, she said, laughing briefly. Consider yourself a godmother, Tsunade poured the remaining alcohol into two bowls. But you promise me you'll get well drunk after the inauguration, Senju scolded with her finger, her hazel brown eyes sparkling slyly. Do you really agree? Naruto drawled, accepting a bowl of sake. I don't break my word either, Tsunade said importantly, clinking glasses with her interlocutor. Naruto drank it in one gulp, feeling the burning liquid burn her esophagus, and winced. Eh, you don't know how to drink, Senja clicked her tongue. I'm only thirteen. Uzumaki was indignant, stretching her whole body. Even though I look like I'm seventeen. And also the Heim of the Great Clan, Tsunade muttered, taking a sip from her glass, but without taking her eyes off the flushed girl, who laughed loudly. What are we going to do with Kabuto? Naruto asked, calming down. You can't just leave him like that. Wait, the Hokage stopped her, he said that Orochimaru is under lock and key in Kanoha. How were you even able to stop him? Senju was surprised. Kabuto doesn't know one small detail, Uzumaki shrugged, smiling slyly. Orochimaru is under Jinjutsu, the blonde's eyes widened as soon as her interlocutor said this. And I think that I should tell everything first so as not to miss something important. The plan to capture Kabuto failed miserably when Orochimaru's student brought more accomplices with him. The gray-haired man clearly foresaw that Tsunade would refuse to voluntarily treat the snake Sanin, so he brought several dozen sound shinobi to take the woman by force. Jiraiya and Shizun took over most of the ninja, leaving Senju and Uzumaki Kabuto, who turned out to be an excellent physician and most importantly, knew about Lady Hokage's hemophobia. Why do you need Orochimaru? Naruto shouted, covering the woman who was trembling with fear, looking at her bloody palms. He won't be able to resist the Jinjutsu. Otherwise it will kill him. I do not care. Kabuto replied, laughing. Then I will become an even better master than Orochimaru. He lacked composure, he loved to play with the victim, watch him. I won't hesitate, I'd rather you die here than cause me problems in the future. Kurama internally grumbled something about a shinobi whose priorities change very quickly, but he honestly shared his chakra, covering Naruto in the cover of the bijou. Yakushi was the worst opponent of all possible, he deftly dodged, adopting resourcefulness from his teacher, and when hit, he instantly healed him. The girl created several Raisingans, but the enemy managed to dodge all the attacks, simply wasting the blonde's chakra. Having touched her shoulder with a chakra scalpel, he moved to Tsunade, who was unable to overcome her fear, about to hit her, but her fist slammed into the Uzumaki Satayata. Don't you dare touch the Godame Hokage, Naruto hissed, placing her palm under the enemy's kunai, to firmly grab his palm. You can't dodge, Yubaka, she formed a Raisingan, this time hitting Kabuto squarely in the chest. And this time he managed to concentrate chakra at the point of impact, but spent all the chakra. Yakushi spat out a clot of blood onto the grass, breathing heavily, looking from under his brows at the determined Uzumaki, who was using her last strength to finish off the spy. This is not our last meeting, Naruto-chan, he hissed, calling off his minions. The girl tried to chase them, but Tsunade, who was clutching the hem of her blouse, stopped her. We're not in the best shape to continue the fight, she nodded. 
Thank you, Naruto. Forgive me for my weakness, the woman lowered her head guiltily, voicing her fear, and Uzumaki did not have time to answer anything, Shizun screamed heart-trendingly nearby, bending over Jiraiya's body. The blondes took off, running up to one of the Sanin, who was barely breathing due to deep wounds in his chest. I can't cure this, Tsunade-sama, what should I do, the brunette sobbed, looking at the frightened mentor. One of the shinobi. Modified genome or something. Pierced with bones, Shizun whispered incoherently. Tsunade, Naruto put aside the formalities, grabbing the medic by the shoulders, only you can help him. Stop shaking. Uzumaki called for calm. Don't let him die, do you hear? The Senju extended her trembling palms, activating Shosen, but Naruto saw that this was not helping. You'll lose him just like Dana or Nawaki, or you'll get together and heal him. The girl shouted, grabbing her tear-stained face in her hands. The woman cried, staring into the determined blue eyes that looked at her exactly like her beloved Dan and her native Nawaki. She remembered what she went through after losing them, how much she cried, hiding her face in Jiraiya's arms. How much effort the old pervert put in to help her with her loss. The one who was always on her side, never turned away and loved her no less. She could lose another person, which she definitely couldn't allow. Tsunade pulled away from Naruto's grip, turning her gaze to the wounds on her strong body. After first scanning, the medic made sure that the organs were not damaged, and then released Chakra from Byakugo, summoning a small part of Katsuyu's healing slug. Shizun, there wasn't an iota of weakness in the voice, only precise commands to the student, follow the rhythm and maintain the pressure. Katsuyu, pour in the Chakra, and I will direct it. Naruto involuntarily crawled back so as not to disturb the two women who were concentrating on healing. The girl exhaled tiredly, leaning back on the grass, to look up at the sky. There is no need to worry about the teacher, Tsunade will not let him die. You did everything you could, the fox, praised her. Now everything is in her hands. But this is not the end, Naruto drawled in her subconscious. There are still so many problems in the world. You shouldn't burden yourself with troubles that don't stand in front of you, Kurama said, closing his eyes. You will create more problems if you solve them alone. I can't leave everything to others. Naruto shouted in the heat of the moment, staring at the beast. Impatient, the fox breathed, opening his eyes. You criticize your husband for not accepting help, but you want to do the same. Naruto remained silent, burying herself in thick fur. Kanoha met them in almost the same form as it was before the attack. It only took a little more than a week, but the shopping arcades were restored, children's laughter was again heard on the streets, and the workers could finally rest, enjoying their labors. Residents greeted Tsunade, approvingly clapping for the new Hokage, who had already forgotten what her native village looked like. The day before, Uzumaki made a promise to get her younger brother back on his feet, so she and Tsunade immediately went to the hospital, sending Jiraiya to the elders. The hospital greeted the Senju with reverent glances, as if they had seen Rakuto himself, and behind her there was an enthusiastic whisper, finally, the hospital would be reborn again. Sasuke was awake, and next to him was Sakura, who jumped up when she saw Naruto-san and an unfamiliar woman. So, sir, Tsunade said, extending her palm to her pale forehead, are you the same Sasuke? Naruto has eaten my brains out with stories about his little brother, the woman chuckled, leading Shosen out. My eyes are fine, but I advise you not to overexert yourself for a week, gradually starting training. Thank you, Tsunade-san, Uzumaki bowed respectfully, looking worriedly at the aloof Uchiha. What are you? Senju was surprised. We agreed on you, the Hokage waved her palm, looking nostalgically around the ward. I haven't been here for a long time. Sakura, Naruto said, maybe you can show Lady Hokage the hospital? Haruno raised her head, catching the expressive gaze of her teammate and assessing her chances of asking to become a student. The pink-haired girl responded enthusiastically to the request, casting one last glance at the upset Sasuke. When they left the office, Uzumaki sat down in Sakura's place, smiling. No need, the brunette suddenly said. You don't need to be strong around me, 
the Uchiha asked. Cry if you want. Naruto smiled even more, holding back a sudden fit of laughter. Sasuke raised his eyebrows in surprise, looking at his cheerful sister with incomprehension. I'm sorry, Sasuke, the blonde calmed down, awkwardly playing with the tip of her blonde braid. There are no more tears left, she shrugged. You're angry? No, my brother objected, looking at her smile. Not at you, the Uchiha lowered his gaze, remembering his recent breakdown in front of Sakura. On Itachi, Naruto chuckled, nodding understandingly. I'm not angry, Sasuke replied. Kakashi told me everything. I can't be angry, I just don't understand him. Itachi is difficult to understand, Uzumaki breathed, throwing her head back. But his actions are always justified by one thing, he really wants peace. He strives for peace, ready to give his life, and all we can do is accept it. You once said that it doesn't matter when a shinobi died, the Uchiha began, after a short silence, it's important what he fought for. This justifies Itachi's action, but, Sasuke clenched his fists, looking up at his sister, who was looking attentively at the guy, why did he leave you, what then, what now? Why do you love him? Naruto sighed once again, closing her eyes tightly, trying to get rid of the lump that had suddenly risen in her throat. She smiled, and tears flowed down her cheeks in large beads. There is no explanation for love, the girl answered, still smiling. You just feel it when you meet a person who is ready to share your problems and fears. You see yourself in his words, actions, and views, you divide everything you have into two but you lead the greatest pain for yourself. Some people see love in a kiss, others in children, and our love is in his desire to protect. It just so happened that we were born with certain responsibilities, life turned out in such a way that for the habitual love didn't have enough time, but that doesn't change our feelings, Naruto wiped the wet trails of tears from her dark cheeks. Approaching her brother's bed. One day you will love just as much, maybe then Itachi will become more understandable, the girl gently leaned her brother against her, burying her head in his shoulder. Sasuke remained silent, running his hand through his blonde hair. She did it again. She calmed his anger, replacing it with bright hope. She justified all her actions, hers, and that of her unlucky husband. She drew strength from an ephemeral feeling that Sasuke had not yet comprehended. Naruto's amazing older sister. Hello, Itachi. Three years have passed, and I can finally let you go. The journey with Jiraiya comes to an end, and today we return to the village. I confess that I shamefully ran away three years ago under the pretext of a reconnaissance mission, asking to see the master. But I couldn't live any longer in Kanoha. I became afraid to enter our house, knowing that you would never again shout to Daima, lie down next to me, or drink your favorite tea in the garden. Hope gave me strength to live, work and study, I was waiting for you to come home someday. Knowing that you are gone, it is very difficult to find strength in yourself, but I honestly try. Granny advised me to clear my head, see the world, live for myself, but, nevertheless, I always keep in touch with the village. Sasuke's notes are as laconic as yours. He grew up. I have completely matured, taking over the responsibilities of the head, so I am not at all worried about the clan. Focused on training, busy with the village council, achieved the rank of Jonin at 15 painfully reminds you, but still, he is different. And he loves differently, Sakura, of course, does not share all the details, but there is something between them. I hope they can fall in love as much as we do. Kakashi and I, I had a hard time with the news about his former friend that was listed in your scroll. Sasuke said that he began to visit the memorial, to the victims more often. He considers himself guilty, he could not save his friend, then his girlfriend, and then his sensei. I've lost too much in my life to be able to let go so easily. I understand him, sometimes I feel the same way. Tsunade was hinting that Shizun was interested in our older brother. I don't know, we'll see how everything works out. After all, life goes on. His and mind with or without you. With Tsunade coming to power, a lot has changed, both people and things. Especially Orochimaru, who became the head of the hospital and the development center. 
Behind the closed door of the room, she healed his hands and talked for a long time about something. I was never able to find out what the Hokage said, but the Sanin became a diligent resident of Kanoha. Even Sakura forgot about old grievances and instantly signed up for practice, studying with two Sanins at once. But the main thing is that we were able to restore your good name. Orochimaru's testimony about Danzo's dark deeds brought to light many hidden intrigues that remained in the bins of the residents and the root. On the day it was announced that the clan massacre was a forced measure ordered by Danzo, he fled. The worst thing everyone saw was Shursue's left eye in its socket. Then you became a hero for the village. Unfortunately, posthumously. I know that you don't care about titles and titles. You didn't strive for this content with the fact that everything was safe. Thanks to you, it is so. Our time has passed. The faces on the chessboard have changed, where they are already playing according to the rules, without hiding extra pawns in their sleeves. We have faded into the background, now the fate of the world is in the hands of my grown-up horde of Jenin, who have grown up to be wonderful shinobi, and many other people who share our views. The enemies have not disappeared, somewhere Kabuto is hatching his plans, somewhere Danzo is gathering minions. But we will be ready to protect what was dear to you and has not depreciated for me. You will always be in my memory, you will remain in the wedding photo, your quiet laughter will echo the ringing of the furin on the veranda where we could sit for hours. You will be with me in the smell of baked apples and the bitterness of green tea. In the black feather of a crow that I once received, and in tiny notes that I carefully keep. In the eyes of Sasuke, who supports me and, I hope, in the words and thoughts of your future nephews, who will follow in your footsteps. You will be everywhere, because where I am, there you are. Farewell, maybe in the next life. Naruto glanced at the letter, which still held the warmth of her hands. Dark fingers squeezed a leaf, which then migrated to the wall. The Uzumaki disappeared into the Shunshin, leaving the room in Soraku empty. Only the wind lovingly touched the thin woven strands tied to the eye of the kunai that secured the letter to the wall. Naruto returned to Kanoha along the usual path under the henge. The house was empty, there was no trace anywhere that the owner had been absent for three years. A colorful apron tightly wrapped around the tall figure, and hands rushed to the usual cooking. I wanted apples. The front door slammed loudly, and a voice came from the corridor. Tadaima. The girl went out into the corridor, to immediately smile broadly, hiding her tear-stained face in the collar of a man's shirt. Everything was new to Naruto, the unusual silence at the table, which was not disturbed even by the knock of dishes on the wooden table, polite smiles, behind which entire phrases were hidden, and even more so words an intricately woven string of words that often had three more rows of meanings. In the clan's territory, Naruto considered herself a black sheep. Some perceived her that way, the heirs calling Raven. The only chance of the great clan to have the right to vote in the village, since it was their mon that glowed in all directions on the back of the Jinchuriki. Naruto tactfully did not notice these glances, they didn't bother her, Saturday dinners at the head's house were enough, which, as it turned out, was a tradition of the Echiha clan. There she definitely stood out at first outwardly as the complete opposite of the darkness of their appearance, and then the former Uzumaki gave a voice sharp and ringing, which resonated with the quiet murmur of women's voices, still striving to stand next to the low base of men who were not used to this. The elders made comments to Itachi, if the wife does not know how to behave appropriately, then she needs to be taught. Itachi was politely silent, stoically holding the mask on his face, trying to immerse himself in his own jinjutsu, where Naruto in their house was indecently loud, indecently cheerful, indecently alive for their dead clan. He caught the sly glances of Shursue, who was sitting opposite, and was willing to bet that his cousin was internally amused, imagining the politely submissive Uzumaki. Courtesy is not in their blood, it is not for them to play, they cannot restrain themselves. Uzumaki are probably the only ones in the world who were born free inside. But Naruto was still polite. In my understanding, of course. She never smiled out of politeness only out of sincere desire, but there was more truth in her smile than in the entire clan. 
The worst thing from Naruto was silence, since in life she had only two options, tell the truth or remain silent. Therefore, often her silence became the most cruel reproach, but it only fell to strangers. Itachi loved her for her lack of silence. Where the husband would have disappeared behind an invisible boundary, the wife destroyed the boundary with one word, encouraging conversation. Maybe my father lacked this too, although he could not say. Parents were not used to showing their feelings for each other, and Itachi echoed them, allowing himself more than a glance only in private. His happiness was born in the silence of the room, lulled in the twilight and quiet conversation. Husband and wife, but still children, for whom love is something higher than carnal desire. Unity of spirit, timidly strong touch, weightless innocent kiss on the corner of the lips. One promise for two, to preserve your own happiness. Naruto loved Itachi, casually rejecting everything else, last name, title, rank and other labels. Her freedom was not limited by the gray walls of the clan, her spirit was not huddled in a cage. She breathed deeply where everyone else was suffocating. She could not love the Echiha, she could not hate them, even pacifying the wrath of the ancient demon. All she cared about was the happiness of her husband, little Sasuke, instructive Kakashi and Ai, and her own village, which, despite everything, was her home. Naruto had her own family, noisy Jounin who raised her in their own way, as best they could. My own mother-in-law, cussed mixed feelings. She loved, like all Echihas, she was obediently silent, like all the women of the clan. Naruto feared her more than anyone, especially her eyes, there was something in the world much stronger than the vaunted dojitsu. It seemed that Makoto saw everything much better than others, she knew very well, which rock the indignation of her clanmates, would fall on. She saw, but did not try to do anything, humbly awaiting her own fate, with only regret in her dark eyes she asked Naruto for forgiveness for being drawn into the grief of someone else's family. This infuriated her until her knees trembled, but then Uzumaki let go of her anger, not everyone is destined to be born free. She managed to understand this, standing out colorfully in the wedding photograph. I managed to understand while watching the first sunset in quiet solitude. I managed to understand, symbolically leaving a cup of green tea on the veranda. That's the end of the story.